was a California August in 82 When my mother gave birth to the Spam Tech crew 13 years later had me looking at Linux Programming made me stronger like Papa the Spinach Now, people know that a DG carry weapons But if that weapon is a nest you step in We finish Contra with only one life Finish Metal Gear 2 using only a knife Right People might think that we're fronting Then they see all the news online that I'm putting My rhymes flow just like my code Even though my source is owned by Sco What about my Indian? I keep it low See me on Gunbound, call me pro I'm a certified legend, but I'm still your bro This is a PSA, boy, the more you know, no. I'm a legend everywhere that I go Every distro, every Craigslist hole Pump in they fist, yo Can't get enough of Waddy Crackers jams And they can't get enough of Waddy Crackers spam I'm a legend everywhere that I go Every distro, every Craigslist hole Pump in they fist, yo Can't get enough of Waddy Crackers jams And they can't get enough of Waddy Crackers spam I my heart's wide Wide open goatsy, and my windows men like Hochi. I'm just another nerd, but I rap about it. Shit talk on the net, then I laugh about it. I've been caught slipping like the Star Wars kid when I'm on eBay sniping a bid. Catch me on a webcam like Numa Numa. See me at the club, and I'm rocking Puma. Another net legend if you see me yodel. Spit a little something that's anecdotal. Tell me about the time the E-bombs world Stole your chop like I stole your girl Catch me on Gen May, not something awful Low tax would ban me, rawful, rawful I'm a certified legend, but I'm still your bro This is a PSA, boy, the more you know I'm no. a legend everywhere that I go Every distro, every Craigslist hole Pump and they fist, yo Can't get enough of Waddy Crackers jams And they can't get enough of Waddy Crackers spam I'm a legend everywhere that I go Every distro, every Craigslist hole Pump and they fist, yo Can't get enough of Waddy Crackers jams And they can't get enough of Waddy Crackers spams yeah. I'm a legend everywhere Everywhere that I go, every distro, every Craigslist hole pump and they fist, yo. Can't get enough of Waddy Crackers jams, and they can't get enough of Waddy Crackers spam. I'm a legend everywhere that I go, every distro, every Craigslist hole pump and they fist, yo. Can't get enough of Waddy Crackers jams, and they can't get enough of Waddy Crackers spams, yeah. What's up, me bags? It's the often imitated, never duplicated Tony TGD, and I am joined once again by the vampire that we all know and love, none other than TJ Laser. What up, TJ? Welcome, everyone. I made it big. I made yeah. it big, guys. He did. Look at this. Suit yourself. Made the 3D animation of TJ Laser, the vampire himself. Imagine that. Did you see it? I'm in the pantheon of Dick Masterson and Beetle. I'm one of the biggest detractors. <laughs> uh, and we're going to go over so much, so much today. Uh, because, I mean, Eric July personally didn't do a lot of things. And we got to go over the Alpha Core teaser trailer. We got to go over that clip of Eric talking about his biggest uh, criticism. Uh, but then we're going to go over some Reddit post. We're going to go over some renowned zero stuff. Um, somebody who we know and love, one of our members, Big Larry, uh, decided to uh, run his mouth about myself and people on the panel and friends of the channel. So, you know, we, we got to get that. Uh, Extra Hero got no. Oh, there it is. There's the avatar. Uh, Aaron's <laughs> gifting 10 memberships as promised. Uh, that's what happens when you lose a bet. Uh, but man of his word. Uh, so thank you, Aaron. Uh, who's the lucky people that won this? Let's see. Uh, we got uh, Indrid. Welcome to the club. Here in the steadfast Paul Og. Uh, 187. Luke Blanche. Berserker. Jason Schnabel. K. 
Kanye Yidis in uh, rusty trousers. Congratulations. Uh, no extra hero. He didn't get he didn't get the uh, membership. Uh, and on top Carlos of that, been trying to make you a member extra hero. What's going on? <laughs> I don't know. On top of that, uh, we got a five dollar five dollar foot long uh, from none other than Isom Knox himself. Look at that. From beyond the grave, he's reaching out and letting us know. He said, sorry about my great-grandson being a little bitch. Well, Halloween's over, so it can't be a ghost. Must be an angel. Must be. Yeah. And you know what that means. We're, we're ready. We just barely started this show. Just barely. And we get 30 seconds already. Of Extra Hero's favorite, favorite thing. In the whole wide world. I don't think we're doing that anymore. <laughs> We're never gonna stop doing it. Never, never gonna stop. Uh, I, I promise. Gotta, you. It's because it's it's part of the it's part of the beginning now. No, no we're still doing it. Every, every five dollars, uh, and I promise you, we are getting that mint salad one. Uh, she was a little bit busy this week, but we're getting it. It's working on it, uh, and we're also working on a couple of other things. Uh, a possible collaboration between myself and a certain warehouse taping uh, individual. Interesting. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, but thank you for that $5 super chat, Mr. Isom Knox. As you can see, we are up to $407 of owning our enemies. $407. Uh, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Uh, so where should we start? Uh, we just watch the trailer, I guess. Start there. Sure. <laughs> you guys are so uh, enthusiastic today. So So happy to be here. Come on. It's so I, I didn't I didn't hear the, the intro part, so I literally don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, we gotta watch the Alpha Core number one teaser trailer, not even the full trailer, just the teaser trailer. Oh wow. Don't tease me. Now you know why we aren't so enthused. <laughs> <laughs> Super enthused, look at that. So here it is, Alpha Core number one animated teaser trailer, Ripperverse Studios 11 6 2023. As you can see, welcome to Floors Park. Uh, I don't know what this is. See, this is this is what I'm talking about. Like, even in the animation trailer, zero seconds in, right? And you got this. I don't know what the hell is this writing? Because this is obviously Floors Park. This is grass. That's a, that's a sun. It's a second sun. So there's two suns in Floors Park, apparently. And some sort of weird writing. Also, the cop car has nothing on it. Uh, the taxi has nothing on it. Uh, <laughs> you guys have to help me because I'm not a resident of the U.S. Okay. Okay, this is supposed to be Texas, right? Yes. Why does this look like San Francisco? <laughs> <laughs> good question. This is Florida's Very Park, Texas. Uh, they, they took San Francisco <laughs> Texas, and they yeah, moved they it. Probably did. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Well, look, look, there's a desert or something over here because this is yellow, right? Which is not concrete. Uh, I guess there's a beach right next to this water. Uh, I, I don't fucking know. What what the hell is this? War is this was a building? About, the war was about Texas stealing uh, big cities' landmarks, like their bridges and buildings and stuff. <laughs> like the super buildings? <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. Look, look at this. Okay, so these buildings, and again, zero seconds in. I haven't even started. Yeah, the and these buildings look like New York. <laughs> but the buildings they, all go. They stole all the flat. Twin Towers. That's the new lore. <laughs> yeah. They're all, they're all flat, right? But this, Never whatever forget. this is, is this going across the water? Or is this just a really weird angled building? Is this a net? What the fuck is this? Anybody? No, I didn't think so. Uh, and again, taxi does not have any writing on it. Uh, cop car, no writing. And the, the, the lights aren't even colored in. Million dollar animation, folks. Million dollar animation. Well, uh, I, 
AA art, Texas scrambled. Yeah, that's that's probably what it is. I can't wait till you get to the fishing. Oh, the fisting. This this fisting? Oh, what the hell? It's set in Free Space City. Yeah. That's why I'm, <laughs> if Eric would have just said it in a fictional universe like DC, you know it's the real world, but they have new names, right? So Gotham City is Boston, but it's not Boston, so it could be its own thing. You know what I'm saying? Bloodhaven is New Jersey. It's not really New Jersey. I think he's allergic from having text on his beginning pages or his beginnings. Yeah. Well, let, let's get to it. Let's see. Uh, you know, if you need me to stop, let me know. Also, I'm guessing this is supposed to be a... Um, like, what the fuck is this? Even this is stupid. Because I was going to say it's a... Um, you know, the shit, the contrail from a plane, right? But it wouldn't just start there. It should go be going across the whole thing. Like, the plane didn't just take off right there, right? Come on, Eric. Because it's not even moving. So this is all static. This is just... This is an image. This is not even animated. Hold on. We, we got a better picture of the... Yeah, see, this is nothing. <laughs> and this is two sons. So Flores Park officially has two sons. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fucking set. What's the desert point? It's Tatooine. It's set on Tatooine. That's why I'm confused. It's not a <laughs> and I Alpha think Thor created to... a new son. Yeah. Yeah. To... Defeat pollution. To, there you go. Yeah. Well, <laughs> at least because they're, they're, to be they're from Krypton, birds? right? Yeah. All your sons. Are these supposed to be birds or just snow? Like everything involving Eric July, everything has to be paused every second. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a nice little pigeon. That's what we need. Straight out of Animaniacs. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> It looked forward. It looked weird as fuck. Hold on. Hell is that? It's like one of them Simpsons. Like when the Simpsons are looking forward, like the fucking face. Uh, why is this even in the trailer? You've wasted 10 seconds. It's a 40 second teaser. 10 seconds. I think they, they get paid it's just by like the second, comic man. book panels. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Flores Park. Yeah, it is. Eric is the embodiment of waste. Oof. Could you imagine that? You paid. If if I paid for a trailer, like, hey, make me a trailer for Alpha Core, and here's, like, the details, right? And they came back with this, and be like, why, why did I paying you for fucking a pigeon in, in the middle of a city? Like, how does this have anything to do with the book I said? Right? Again, guys, like the, like Pastor Hostage suggested, or Hostage Prime as he goes by, watch Mighty Raccoon. <laughs> Mm. He makes good stuff, and superhero stuff, all in 3D. Mm. And he would have done this for free. <laughs> Probably. Way better. All right, so this is completely stupid. Let me explain to you why. This this floating fortress of whatever it is right here, it's not a building. Uh, you would imagine it would be hundreds, you know, thousands of feet in the air. So this pigeon is just going to go... There's nothing around, right? There's no buildings now. So why the fuck is this pigeon just wandering way up in the air? Do pigeons do that? I don't think pigeons do that on the regular. It's delivering a message. Because right? it's not like airplanes are ever really hitting pigeons. They'll hit like geese and ducks and, you know, birds that are flying, like uh, migrating. But I don't think like fucking pigeons are like getting chopped up in helicopters and shit, right? And I would imagine this is far, far above that. Because like, there's no, again, there's no buildings. So you have to imagine the tallest building is like, say, what, 50, 60 stories? What it look like from, from the little uh, skyline they drew? So this is way above that, right? Whatever. Oh, yeah, I made the point. It's an XF pigeon. There you go. <laughs> it's an XF pigeon. <laughs> yeah, pigeon fly at 20,000 feet. <laughs> it's a super pigeon. Yeah. Uh, there's no sound. I, I don't know why uh, they, they chose this music. It's not really conveying like excitement. Now, airplanes fly at, at above uh, 30,000, so you'd be above that. Yeah, 
That's what I'm saying. Like it couldn't even be in the zone where airplanes fly, because this I'm assuming it's supposed to be like a hidden base, right? It's not just out there where like people are like there it is. Look on your left, uh, you know you're taking your plane out of we're leaving Flores Park, and on your left uh, you'll see Alpha Core headquarters because those dumbasses are flying right in our path. Fucking stupid. Uh, the bird flew around that fortress fast as hell. Maybe it is. Maybe we were right. It is a super pigeon. Also, it had guns. Was it? Why is there guns on the super fortress? Right. Yeah. Why would they need them? But why would why would anyone allow that? I'm I'm the Texas government. We're a free uh, society. We just broke away from the U.S. Right. And now, of well, course, like I want, I want to put a big, fucking uh, UFO that floats above the city and has guns on it, right? Well, canonically, um, Grand Solari is like the biggest deal in the universe, right? And, but could you imagine Superman's they, Fortress of Solitude work, doesn't have guns? And they work with the government. It's like I'm pretty sure it's like implied that they have a contract with them. Yeah, but still, so they, got again, a, like, they got a good government contract. Uh, you ever go to like a uh, general's house? He doesn't have he a fucking, a, you know, a government uh, chain job. gun just sitting outside his front lawn, like in case people come to bother him, right? He's got fucking cannons attached to his trailer park. No, like, yeah, they work for the government. They still don't let you have fucking floating fortresses with laser guns on it, right? In Florida, he's never been in Florida's park. Yeah. <laughs> and right, if he is Superman, right? Like, if he's like the most powerful, he stopped the war by himself, right? Why does he even need that shit? That's what I've been saying, yeah. I'm guessing because the other members of Alpha Corps aren't as powerful. But they can't wake him up? Like one's just, they both just can like fly. a good detective. Yeah, yeah, but still, you live with Superman, and you'd be like, "Super, why is there a gun outside our house, Superman? He's like, well, in case intruders, but you're Superman. Oh, but I'm a deep sleeper, so you're fucked if I'm asleep, Batman. Yeah, oh. but think about this. Uh, they just ended a war with the United States, so this is meant to go up against the the might of the United States. So it should be even more over the top, if you ask me. Well, it should be pointing forward. They're like pointing down, like they're going to shoot at the city. <laughs> 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 at least I'm pointing forward. They're hel- they're holding all Texas hostage. <laughs> <laughs> 56 cases targeting rogue pigeons. If a pigeon gets too close, they don't like any pigeon shit on, 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 on the watchtower. <laughs> I haven't seen this trailer, so that's part of why I'm stopping because I didn't actually watch it until right now. Also, look at this shit. What the hell is this? What kind of cloud is this? It was just like, like half the cloud is missing. And you just kind of get the bottom. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Is this, a, is this generated by AI? I have a feeling these clouds are. Also, uh, we see this building is this is a building, this fortress, and I'm waving my hands. I don't know why I do this shit. Like I'm waving my hands, but you guys can't see me, so I feel like a retard. But um, it's floating, right? We didn't actually see it moving. The pigeon moved, but this should be like bobbing up and down. I think it's. I think it might be sitting at the top of a very tall tower. You think? It doesn't look. Maybe. But it has these. What, what are these? These these imply that it's floating. Like the, these are like yeah, thrusters. These imply like energy. Yeah, thrusters. Or yeah. like hover hoverers or whatever you want to call it. Right. So it should be like doing a little bob with the air and the fact that it's like hovering to kind of give you a sense of what's happening. But there's nothing. I mean, I'm sure he only had a hundred thousand dollars to spend on this. Maybe. So. A hell frog, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is supposed to be one of the hell monkeys. It's on fire, right? It's a pretty decent design, although the blue, I don't know why. When I seen this orange with this like dark red and blue, I, like my first thought was Fred Flintstone. I guess the only thing we can be sure of is that whatever appears in the actual comic won't look anything like this. It's look uglier than this, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, frogs have real have hands in real life too. Yeah. Oh wait, Alpha Core is not using Cliff Richards, right? They're using Joe Bennett. Yeah, they're using Joe Bennett. Oh, so that means the art can be good for once. 
Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I do wonder how much of this trailer is going to... Because remember, the trailer for Isom 2, some of the stuff that was shown in the trailer, some of the things that were said were either said by other characters or not shown at all, right? So I wonder how much of this is actually in the book. Plus, there's going to be a longer version of the trailer. The fight with Chadram was misleading. Like, there was barely any fight to begin with. So that trailer was kind of false. Well, even the cover for Chadron was misleading. Yeah. Yeah. This looks totally different than, than the, the version in the comic. Yeah, it yeah. does. It looks like the Batman uh, show. Yeah, I don't remember him having these like little like uh, Ra's al Ghul. Fucking, uh, yeah, he has the Ra's al Ghul uh, goatee. Beard. Yeah. I'm assuming Chuck had permission to, to change the design slightly. Well, I, this isn't Chuck. Chuck didn't animate this. This is whoever the, the studio is. But I'm wondering if, if they're working off of Chuck's design. Uh, what's going on back here? Is that blue light shining on his neck? Yeah, well, because there's, there's a line. So either the blue light is shining on his neck or his neck. Because it, this, it, it almost looks like this should be his neck, this line here. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think pretty, it's blue light shining on his neck, yeah. It's That's pretty blue-ass light. Yeah. yeah, otherwise the beard would be weird. Or, I, I, you know, until you said beard, I just saw these. I thought <laughs> this was shadow, and I was like, "Oh, his neck is in shadow because like this is in shadow." But like that is his beard. It just you looks like he has he's got a neck jaws. beard. He literally oh. has a neck beard. Now he has a neck beard. Look at that. <laughs> Fucking shit. Here we go. The hell monkeys. Have you seen the the Twitter? Uh, I posted the behind the scenes one where I'm in the picture. Bam! Hits her. I don't remember that in the comic, but those windows broke. That's kind of a nice transition. Kind of. Yeah. And then that's it. What is Brian Solari going to do against her slightly icy powers? <laughs> Well, there's an image where, like, the ice is coming out of her boots. It's like blue energy. It's not even ice. It's like cold. It's coming space. out of her pores, by the way. I keep, uh, I keep yeah. reminding people. Yeah. <laughs> the lore says it comes out of her pores. Also, she got a big old pointy boob. It's like a... It's a weird... I didn't mean to do that. Like... Yeah, you can tell it's the same animation studio he used the first time. Well, he said, according to a tweet from Eric July, he pilfered or plundered, pillaged, stole one of those uh, animators from other studios. Big time animators. So. I mean. And that was it. So. It's a 40 second video, but it's really like a 25 second trailer. So 25 second trailer, 10 seconds of it had nothing to do with anything. So it's really like a 15 second teaser. Yep. And why not why not show even one new thing? <laughs> well they did. They did show one new thing. Whatever this is. Whatever, Mr. Um That's Lava true. Did. I guess I guess I'm expecting too much. <laughs> but what's stupid is uh what does this have to do with anything? Hold on. This right here. Why is this in the Alpha Core trailer? True. Is this just leftover junk from the last trailer that they didn't finish in time? Maybe, because you would think no, you this is know, supposed actually. to be in the Isom 2 trailer, right? Because uh, even if, like, if they showed the, the, the fight scene with the Isom and Yaira and Alpha Core, that would make sense at least because it is connected to Alpha Core. But this like has nothing to do with Alpha Core. Blood Ruth, Isom fighting Hell Monkeys. None of this connects to Alpha Core <laughs> at all. Right? I would have showed like Alpha Core like fighting tanks, like the United States government, like a like a flashback scene of that. Because we know what happened and it was implied. So give us a little, well, at least animated, right? 
You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the the biggest hail monkey was was basically reused, like like the biggest hail monkey we see in Isom Two, especially that orange creature you just showed us. You think that so? was just that was like a beta design of it. Uh, Luster Dog says uh, Yai wrote those nineteen sixties torpedo boobs. Yeah. <laughs> Fire Pokemon plus human body equals new character. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron says the trailer should have been the pigeon only. Just the pigeon, baby. Uh, the biggest hell monkey is going to be Riley. <laughs> uh, Luster Dog says, in other words, we won't see the Great War of Separation. Uh, we never think, will. And again, I'm... I, I don't want Eric July to like fail and go away. It's fun to make fun of them, right? I admit it. It is fun to make fun of them. But I do, I do want the comic to go do well, right? I do hope in my heart of hearts that it is a good comic. It's, unfortunately, it's not, but I hoped it would be. So I would I would have thought with Alpha Core 1, uh, you know Brian Solari played a role in the Great Separation War, right? This would be a perfect opportunity to take a flashback and go, actually, Alpha Core number 1 happens before ISOM. It's a flashback, and we're going to show you, you know, Brian Solari fighting the war, getting Alpha Core together, doing all that stuff, right? And sort of more world building. You're saying only retcons can save this. It's not even a retcon because we know what happened. So just show us what happened. Like, give us more detail as to what happened. More like a prequel. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, we know that in, in Isom 2, it says that Brian fought Yaira in the past at some point, right? Well, you could give us that fight in Alpha Core. Yeah. You could give us the War of Separation in Alpha Core. Fuck, I don't know. I would hope for a good comic, but bad ones produce far more content. <laughs> yeah. True. Uh, the pigeon is important if you see his I don't art. hope that it succeeds. Uh, on his Twitter account, there's, there's Art of the Pigeon. Tell me that's a lie. Tell me Eric doesn't have a bunch of pigeon art. <laughs> Straight out of Animaniacs. <laughs> like awesome. you, you have to sign up. Uh, w WB animation. Way too much. So so yeah. just so you know, in, in case you were getting the um, big um, you know, Ultra Mac memberships or one of the other memberships for the early access, if you don't sign up, by 11 5 2023 at 5 p.m. And you don't get early access. So it's not even a you know uh, a whole day. It's 5 p.m. is the cutoff for the early access. I guess his employees are working nine to five, I guess. Oh yeah, there is there is animation. What's up with what the fuck's up with that pigeon at the beginning of the animated teaser? My God. Is the pigeon fucking important? Eric July literally has a picture of him in the pigeon. Uh, I got, I got a. He always cares about the dumbest shit. Yeah, like the warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now the pigeon is his new obsession. Look at this. <laughs> See, what the fuck's up with that pigeon at the beginning of the animated teaser? Talk about being a shithead. Oh, it might actually mean something. <laughs> oh, don't tell me the merch now is going to be pigeon plushies. <laughs> uh, don't forget Ultra Mac memberships. See, look at this is Brian Solari. This is, uh, damn it, that's not what I wanted to do. Son of a bitch. looks nothing like Eric July, by the way, in the drawing. <laughs> yeah. But this this is Brian, right? This is uh, Brian in the official art. Okay? This does not look like the art that was shown in the animated trailer. Uh, he's He's got the, the, the isom disease where he looks different in every panel. There's, there's yeah. literally no fucking um, goatee. There's no beard. Uh, he got more of a Vince McMahon looking face and the other one, he had more of a Batman, uh, like a chubby Batman face. How is this possible, Eric? How is it Aaron possible? Aaron Taylor brought a good point. Uh, he probably watched a lot of John Woo. 
<laughs> with the pigeons. Oh, look at this. Remember, guys, guys. Remember, I was an asshole for saying Alpha Core is just a uh, what, what's it called? Zod in them, right? He literally has the Superman picture of of Alpha Core, <laughs> a fucking, and it's his. It's from Ripperverse Comics, so it's not even like a fan art. This is literally his art of Brian Solari with almost a spit curl, like Superman and her, like fucking Supergirl. Ingrid Valdez. Ingrid Valdez, yeah. Now, don't the forget. same Bruce Tim type of art that WW, uh, WB likes using. I thought you were going to say WWF. <laughs> WWE. Because <laughs> you brought up Vince McMahon. <laughs> so, that's what's going on on uh, Eric's timeline. Besides uh, retweeting everybody who's excited about the trailer. See, look at This is fucking him. There's no goatee. This haircut is different. The face is fucking different. Why? Why? Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm an asshole. I'm an asshole for pointing it out, right? Like, dude, you're, you're fucking trading. Well, this is, is completely different. This is, uh, this is a, it's a multiverse. So we were looking at two different ones. Yeah, it's a multiverse variant. <laughs> <laughs> There's no multiverses, remember? <laughs> It, the multiverse is too powerful to be stopped by a uh, code of ethics. Thing new we got this anger from inside out. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are these weirdos up to? I have no idea. Pigeon the Thanos of the Ripperverse? No, you know what the pigeon's going to be? I'm calling it right now. I'm going out on a limb. The pigeon's like Dokuma. Pigeon's Okamon. The pigeon is the guy oh. keeping track of everybody. That's how it's able to because it's a pigeon and no one pays attention to the pigeon as it flies around the city documenting everything. Document. Buy the cards today. Maybe some uh, new shaman type character who turns into a pigeon. Pigeon man is real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it, it's fucking, it's going to be Document. Dokuman. How the fuck you say that shit? Only so you could say, I don't really know about these characters, not really. I have the lore, but I don't really know much about the lore. <laughs> <laughs> what we know about these characters, they fly faster than a pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a normal pigeon? <laughs> All right, so something uh, very interesting happened today. This character never leaves out bread. <laughs> You know, uh, I got my little, I don't know if you guys are aware of this. I actually bought the comic, right? Uh, I bought that uh, ISOM number one, ISOM number two. And when you buy the comic, you get uh, signed up for the little mailing list, right? So I got stuff in the mail, in my little email, about uh, the Ripperverse, right? Nice. And I noticed something. Something <coughs> caught my eye. Right? Something kind of caught my eye. Do you know what that was, fellas? Caught my eye? Uh, presumably an advertisement for the new uh, subscription. No, not an advertisement. Yeah, uh, It was... In fact, something that was supposed to be a secret. Secret. Go on. Oh, did, did they have the address on there? Yes. Oh. <laughs> you know, this super secret mother. address? Good God. <laughs> well, you know, that super secret, don't tell anybody that where we live address? Yeah. That was there. It was literally on the announcement. Of course. It's all just bullshit. <laughs> bullshit all the way down. It's the weirdest thing. Like, why would you put that on there? I think, uh, and because, you know, I always get told that I'm a liar, right? So I'm going to do something that I rarely ever do. But since it is a business address where they presumably do business, I'm going to go ahead and uh, break you off a little something. 
As you see here, this is, uh, I popped out the email, so it's by itself. Uh, from Ripperverse. See that? From Ripperverse. Hey, is know, that Dakumon? That's Dakumon. He's, he's at the, the hey, you know, all the letters. That's the pigeon. Oh, that's the pigeon. Uh, so there's that, right? And we keep scrolling down. Be great. Andrew, creative director, editor, social media manager, asshole who flagged me on Twitter for the DMCA. Uh, oh, yes. Ripperverse <laughs> Publishing, <laughs> LLC, 1900 Preston Road, STE 269. Number 99, Plano, Texas. Huh. Yeah. But I thought this was like, you didn't put this address anywhere, Eric. This address don't go anywhere. This is the super secret Riley must have doxed you address. Right? It's weird. Usually when you give people your address, you want them to use it. Huh. Weird. Hmm. It was offering tours of the warehouse. Uh, there like you that, go. that scene in The Simpsons where they visit the box factory? Oh, yeah. Like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest fucking thing. Uh, so yeah, so th that whole idea that you know there was a secret address and no one knew about it. And, uh, if yeah. it's like Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory, our kids, our kids like sneaking Ripperverse merch, <laughs> like <laughs> sneaking sneaking peeks at at hats and stuff. <laughs> Pigeon plushies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they get disqualified. <laughs> so, so I just got this uh, right now. They literally just dinged me over there on the uh, secret hater Discord. They said, "Tony, you have to play this for your audience." So this is from Ripa's strongest hater. What it is is it is what it is. I have a huge announcement for you guys today. So sadly, all the former members of the Mac Club, including the Ultra Max, have all been liquidated. But it ain't actually bad news. What it is, is it is what it is. But what it is, is <laughs> into brand new, most of the same, but rebranded memberships to my comic book club. I know what you're thinking. This sounds amazing <laughs> already. You're an incredible man with absolutely amazing <laughs> business acumen. How can I give you money to make myself more like you? Well, it's really easy. Just take out a credit card, go to my website, make sure you get all the numbers from the card punched into our state-of-the-art proprietary payment processing software, then sit back and relax because you're about to get to the absolute best club on the web. You're going to get wallpapers for your phone. And <laughs> there you are. Those are the exclusive best club on the web. You're going to get wallpapers. Look at that. Look at that ice and hat. That's wonderful. <laughs> Ripping the silverback. <laughs> for your phone and your. Look at that. And your desktop. You get these nice ice and wallpapers. <laughs> desktop computer. You're going to get a week free of crazy frog ringtone download. <laughs> a week free of crazy frog. <laughs> You're going to get a phone card that you can load with minutes yourself. You're going to get free shipping on orders under $15 and 10% off merchandise, but you're going to pay full price for the comic books. Wow. Every time I say it out loud, I just can't stop thinking about how good a deal that really is. Check out our new book, Apple Core. And if you're a paying member, you can even have early access to the book. That's right. You can have up to 30 whole minutes to shop the campaign before it opens. Man, I am fucking impressed with my business acumen. Oh, yeah. Chuck wrote the book. It's about super soldier cops who live in the Big Apple and get a little hands on and also get their hands dirty. Go to my website. I have a Fantastic. Oh. This is why we love uh, the haters. They live in the Big Apple, and it's called Apple Core. <laughs> yeah, That's crazy why we thought it was like back. a different city. <laughs> uh, oh my! Iro says the the business acumen resides in the shoulder hair. We all laugh, but our smooth shoulders are why we have day jobs. I can't I can't wait to get my my Alpha Core ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> Now that we have 110 of you, and since this is my time to hawk my merchandise, seeing as we are businessmen who do good business and have good business acumen, almost as much as Eric July, uh, my shoulder hair is growing in as we speak. Uh, but thanks to our buddy here, uh, none other than TJ Laser, 
We got brand new items in the shop. The shop has completely been wiped out. We wiped out all the old items, got rid of them. They were no good. We got these brand new In Good Faith Frog items. You can get a In Good Faith pullover hoodie. It's available in blue, black, plum, uh, red, and like a pink if you're a woman. Uh, we got a In Good Faith unisex t-shirt. Again, black, red, uh, like a dark green, a plum, and a blue. In Good Faith mug. Look at that. It's on both sides. So if you drink it left-handed or right-handed, you'll see in good faith as you put that sweet beverage into your mouth. That's impressive. Additionally, uh, for $2.50, you can get an in good faith sticker. Or for $2.50, you can get no 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 text, but you get a six-pack. They're all on one thing. So you can cut them up yourself. You know, just cut along the lines that are not there. You know, put the lines in your mind and just cut them up. You got six small stickers. Look at that. That's a deal for $2.50. I really don't make any profit on any of these items. I think I make like 50 cents on the stickers, a uh, dollar 50 or something on, on the mug, uh, two bucks on the hoodie. So uh, I didn't try to gouge you. I could have put saying you're non profit. No, I, I'm profit, but small profit. <laughs> I was like, how cheap can I get it where it's a good price, but I still make a little bit of money? Uh, so there you go. $18 Is it for true a shirt. That you don't actually take a salary. I don't take a salary uh, here at the Geek Getaway. <laughs> We reinvest. See, what you don't understand is we, what it is is we reinvest all the money that we make. So, uh, good 56K enough. warning. He got the old mug with the old design. It's a rare limited item. Only he has it. We're not bringing it back. Never coming back. So, 56K warning. Congratulations. You got a one-of-a-kind mug. Uh, and if you want to own these items right before Christmas, right? Christmas is right around the corner. Uh, people don't even need to know that you watch the show, right? They could just think that you're like some religious dude. Uh, yeah. Now we're all for good, that. Good for any patrons of the International School of Ministry as well, if, yeah. you're, if you're watching. So if you're in good faith, if you do things in good faith, you might want to get one of these. Uh, we're going to have new items uh, probably every week. We'll probably try to add something to the store. In good faith, you get yeah. to be blessed by Father Hostage himself as well. That's pretty good. Prime time, right? It is a in good faith deal. We lost nine people just just hawking merchandise. <laughs> uh, I can't well, see they, too well. They is that left a frog to go with... buy the. They've left to go buy the merch. Yeah, he says I can't see too well right now. Is that a frog with angel wings? It is, and a halo. Uh, so there you go. Pray our hands. <laughs> in good faith. And that'll be the only time that we hawk the merchandise on tonight's stream. Although it is in the chat, the link, uh, it'll pop up randomly. So you too can get some in good faith merchandise. All right. Now that that's settled, uh, where do you want to go to next? You want to go to some haters? Uh, th there is the link. Or do you want to hear Eric July explain to us why? You know, his best criticism. Well, let's start with Eric July. <laughs> yeah. Right. We're a bit late on that, yeah. I think this is the clip that drove me crazy. All right. What is the yeah. best criticism you've gotten from Isom? Three-minute clip. Uh, I don't know who Blaine Pardo or the Watcher are, but they're sitting there asking Eric July questions. Open it up and we'll see what other, some of the folks who are on the live chat have. But uh, what's the best criticism you've gotten from ISOM 1 and how did you apply it, if, if any, to you know your ongoing work? Yeah, uh, I think the one that uh, got me. Just and watch I, Blaine throughout this whole thing. Just keep watching <laughs> Blaine. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm going to blame Chuck for this. It's Chuck fault. He said some shit out of pocket. I took it out of his paper. But it's all right. It is what it is. Chuck learned his lesson, not not to question me anymore. But what he said was, you know, there are certain <laughs> things, and Chuck Dixon, that is, because uh, and, and the first bit I got of this is actually coming out of, out of another story, and then applying that to kind of uh, to ISOM one. This is coming out of another story. What other fucking story did you write, Eric? <laughs> Nothing. There's no other story. What? So what Chuck fan, Dixon, what fan fiction did you write? Yeah. So presumably. <laughs> Eric wrote some other story that Chuck Dixon then read and went, Eric, this is what's wrong with it. And then he applied that to ISOM number one. <laughs> Anyone believe that? Anyone? I don't. I have a feeling he writes random ideas on his mobile phone and says, these are stories now. 
yeah. thinking that he's being creative. Right. It's he possible just tells that he lies. Wrote, it's possible that he wrote a, um, a prototype version of the Alpha Core story. I, I don't think so. Uh, it is what it is. That's what I'm saying. I think Eric July is just full of shit. And uh, we'll see. Because, you know, if you ask me a question, I can give you a clear, precise answer. When you're when you start rambling and you're like you're trying to think of something, it's a clear indication that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Especially somebody who's supposed to be media trained, media savvy, who has done this for a long time, right? Yep. Years and years, the man has been on camera. This is not like he doesn't understand how this works, right? You know, yeah. he wasn't caught off guard. Like, oh shit, criticism. I don't get criticism. Shit, I better make something up. And this literally is not the the first time he's ever been asked this. He's always asked this. And he still doesn't have a good answer. Well, let's see what he has to say. But, you know, the way he approaches storytelling is like, yeah, you can have this layout and, you know, draft or whatever, you know, you kind of where that you want to take the story. You but even that? if it's right. such a... Or whatever. I mean, wherever you want to take the story. Small, rather, even if it seems kind of insignificant thing. Um, that that needs to be either number one expanded on or completely swapped out. There's no like sacrifice there. You don't just kind of run with it. It's like, Hey, okay, here's this thing here. I can't make this make sense. Let's try to make it make sense. Make so what he's saying is Chuck Dixon looked at his story, said, Eric, this is stupid as fuck. Make this make sense to me. Make this. Blaine, make sense. Blaine is going to be thinking the same thing. I can't make this make sense. <laughs> Just give it, it time. Just change out. It could be something as, as minor as a, a, a simple motivation for for a particular character. Uh, None of your characters had any motivation other than disrespect. Yep. Yeah. And I'm not saying minor like motivations minor. I'm saying like a, a, a minor like okay, this character you could get to that that you know who he tells a story like. He tells stories like fucking lofty, where you can tell that he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> he's just making shit up. Hey, Starts firing at lofty pixels. He thought he was safe here. He not. <laughs> We're gonna watch. We, I have a video all queued up because Lo lofty, he, he a fucking dumbass. Uh, I, I tried to get him space. on the show so he could explain to us what a good party is. Uh, fuck. End game, right? Of what this this is how the characters acting out on that motivation, right? But it is very important on that middle part and like how they're getting that, that vehicle. What the hell is out there beating people up? It's all that noise. I think extra heroes fighting cockroaches. <laughs> uh, I guess it could have been me. You sound like you slamming like. Yeah, it's like you grabbed your shoe and <laughs> started hitting something. <laughs> Stop trying to hit the screen just because Eric's on it. All right, extra hero countdown. So <laughs> like he won't get off my screen. <laughs> Uh, if you will. So if there was one thing that I would have changed uh, Again, this isn't what would you have changed. This isn't, hey Eric, what would you have made the story different? This is what exact criticism, the best criticism that you've gotten from ISM 1. Yeah, Probably. Uh, not necessarily changed, but I probably would have added to the page count. ISM 2 was 112 pages. ISM 1, it easily could have been that. It was that conflict that happened uh, between Alpha Core uh and, and and yaira uh I, what i what i would have done was probably added a couple of more pages to have that yeah we're picking up where we left off at some point that's not criticism that. that's not criticism no one's criticism was you you didn't have enough pages <laughs> you should have put more pages eric what you needed in the story it was good but you could have used a couple more pages you could have done better with less pages <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> with that story but i think i saw one could have used just a tad bit more more perspective for those characters especially with with them being the next book it is that we're we're kind of coming out with what i would i some one to see this is how stupid he fucking is this is what drives me literally fucking insane alpha core was not the next book coming out after i some one i some two was the next book so if this is criticism from Isom 1, the fight that happened, presumably they would have said, hey, you probably could have expanded on that fight, right? So then when Isom 2 came out, why did the, the scene uh, with Alpha Core was even stupider, was even less important to the story, had nothing 
of any substance. <laughs> it's like if this is your best criticism, you didn't even take it and apply it to ISOM two. Yeah, would have done if changed if, uh, if any was you had that that conflict that they had with Yaira. I would have spelled that out maybe a little bit more. But we don't hold your hand here, so we didn't do that. Uh, with well, with he, her he used not ISOM two to spell out the what happened in ISOM one for Alpacore. Yeah. When you could have did that yeah, in the book where it happened. To spell out what happened in ISOM 2. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Eric doesn't know what criticism means. <laughs> he does the same thing with the, with his animated trailers that he puts out. He just shows what you already know. <laughs> Y'all think ISOM uh, just knocking into Yara midair could have been done better? No, it shouldn't have been done at all. It made no fucking sense. <laughs> But yes, it's bumped into each other on accident. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the very least, if if they would have just showed uh, that they were fighting outside the club, like there they are fighting, or like someone went, "Hey, what's that commotion outside?" And then he looked on the monitors, and then you seen them fighting with Yaira at the same time that San Juan was fighting with fucking Isom, right? Or when he was throwing them out of the club or whatever. But it was just too coincidental. He just threw him, presumably. Uh, and again, what made no sense, how the fuck are the streets designed in, in Flores Park, right? Because presumably, the door is not on the corner, right? The door wasn't, like, aimed at the corner. The door was on the side of the building. So he should have threw him into the buildings across the street, right? So how did he fly and end up hitting Yaira? Because where was she flying from? Yeah, that's a good point. She she uh, she also should have been done with whatever she was dealing with. It's it's like just this one area was super wide open where they could just fly into each other. And presumably he, he got thrown in such an angle and she got thrown in such an angle. I don't know. So, no, I, I can't make sense of it. I, I would have never even had that happen at all. I would have spelled that out maybe a little bit more uh, with with her getting knocked down the block, right? That way it's more easily explained uh, because she runs in the ice on the of that. Uh, so I would have probably shown that. I would have probably shown that if I added pages. Uh, but I also would have had to, I would have loved to have some, uh, another kind of interaction there uh, when Brian tells her, hey, you know, you, you were told not to return. So it, it's more adding addition to that it's more adding addition adding addition <laughs> yeah we I, eric i think we understand that if if she's fighting alpha if alpha core is fighting her that she's not supposed to be there <laughs> we already get that you don't need to add more pages for something that stupid not only that but literally at the fucking beginning of the book you take like three or four pages <laughs> to tell us that someone showed up into flores park that shouldn't be there remember that that whole exactly fucking scene yeah. So I could kind of give perspective. It doesn't need much. It does. I wouldn't have had to need, need like five, ten pages. Even a couple, I think, would have given a little bit more perspective. But that's the thing about. I can't even believe you would have said not five, ten pages, as if implying four pages was enough. Right? Like, <laughs> like if it was like not even one or two, but I could have just needed like an extra panel or so, right? <laughs> And he wasted we six pages many, on Larry we saw Shungai. How many pages he needed to introduce that wrestler. <laughs> yep. But that was that was Isom too. Isom one had some wasted pages, but it wasn't the wrestler shit. It was some other bullshit. Like the whole police officer thing could have been cut down. Oh, yes. Yeah. About this industry is that you're trying. You don't want to have fluff, right? So that you don't want to have fluff, guys. Pages, uh, panels, and panels of the truck just driving. No words. Yeah, you wouldn't panels want that and to... panels of, of people just standing around. You wouldn't. He's saying you wouldn't want that. So, <laughs> but you got that. You paid for it. <laughs> that was one of the things that I was always afraid of. I was like, hey, with the first book, like, okay, I don't want to spend too much time doing this. Uh, I, I need to get kind of get kind of to the point. So, we never got to the point though. The whole first book never got to the point. It's that balance of you don't want to give too much, but you also don't want to give uh, too little. So if there was anything, I don't want to say change, I don't necessarily regret it. And yeah, we could pick up where we where we left off. But 
just to give more perspective on that conflict between the Alpha Core and Yaira, definitely setting up the next books. I would have would have added just a couple of more pages uh, there for sure. Cool, <laughs> cool. What was the criticism? Any, anyone, anyone know what the criticism was? You just heard that three minute, thirty six second rant from Eric. No idea. I have added more pages with the IRA, apparently. I'm pretty sure Chuck Dixon didn't. <laughs> I'm Eric pretty sure no one told him to add more pages about that. He was. It was more like he was justifying, never, never taking any criticism ever. <laughs> I saw one had too many splash pages showing nothing important. Yeah, there's all that. Uh, Eric also says, you want to at least give one complete story in the first book. Just one. This one, I'd rather read Beta Core. No, nothing in the first book was fleshed out. Nothing in the first book had a complete story. Too many coincidences. Too much <laughs> bullshit. Too much fluff. But somehow... He didn't get any criticism. His best criticism was no criticism and just, hey, I should add more pages. <laughs> and he didn't even say, listen, to if you if you rewatch it, right? Uh, he didn't even say, Chuck said, I should have put this, or the criticism was that I didn't uh, do this, right? He just said, well, um, you know, the best criticism is, you know, well, Chuck's seen this other story and he's, you know, he writes stories a certain way. And when looking at the book, I would have, you know, wanted to flesh this out a little bit better, but he didn't actually say Chuck told me blah, blah, blah. The criticism was blah, blah, blah. Right. It's like he can never be seen to have taken any criticism. Well, there is no criticism. He's like, man, there's no, no one criticism. We talk criticism. The book was perfect. What do you mean? Ain't no one says shit about it. Oh, you know what? Maybe because he sees all criticism as hating, so he can't. He literally can't recognize it. Oh, you mean it's detractors? Like what, what, was the, what was the best detractor? That's what you mean, right? You're right. <laughs> so what it is is all them detractors. Ah, <laughs> oh, someone, no, don't, don't, guys, guys. I can't show this on YouTube. Someone just tagged me in the thing with Eric talking, and then like. Uh, Talking about gay ops and then like literal gay porn playing in the corner of it. Come on, guys. Come on. I can't, I can't do that. I can't show that. Yeah, we should avoid that. <laughs> uh, Michael says criticism equals uh, detractor to Eric. It does. And he just rambled around the question on an author's YouTube channel. Yeah. That would have been disrespectful to Taser, Taser face if you would have showed that. Yeah. Uh, Eric says the cover shows Isom in costume fighting people that never happened in the coming. Uh, lots of stuff <laughs> never happens that are on the covers. Uh, Michael says uh, the guy he's talking to, Blaine, is a sci fi author. He probably regretted inviting Eric out after this one. Probably. Could you imagine? It just got to be so frustrating, right? So frustrating. That you you sit out there and you put out your books and you do all this. You went to school. You get educated. You learn how to write professionally. You, you, you poured your heart and soul into these stories, and you don't really get anywhere. And then some asshole then some who can barely ass. speak English, right? <laughs> it's just like it is what it is. And see, so, you know, my best criticism is the fact that my hair is, is is on my shoulder is too hairy. So what it is is this fight with Alpha Core was was a little too short. So that Darren Fontaine, uh, I would have probably extended. Uh, the size of his gun. So what it is, is the gun was too small, is what I'm saying. That was my best criticism. Yeah, what it is was, I didn't make it clear that two characters that were fighting uh, were antagonistic towards each other. <laughs> I should have probably put more pages explaining yeah. that Eltona is Avery's sister, because I don't know if you got that from the first book. Or, so I probably would put like two or three more pages to let you know. Like my audience is like really, really dumb. Because so like, I said they were brother and sister, but I didn't say they had the same parents. So I probably would have like had the parents show up so you know that yeah. the mother and the father is the same. Coming from the same man he, who said he didn't want to handhold Dick Masterson, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> now, Sam Man says they didn't even go over the super chats because they got so many bunnies. I, I heard that they took out the uh, comments too. Like the comment section's gone. Uh, 
I love an Isom too when he's fighting Chadron, who speaks Pig Latin. That scene just ends without us finding out how Isom got away from him after he bodied Isom prior to that. Yeah, we don't even oh, find uh, out if Tons of actually speak Latin. No, it's just some gibberish. It's not even anything. Oh, right. Because Ian Aldridge just pointed out that Yaira is a Hispanic name. Yeah. And I looked it up. It means to illuminate or enlighten. So the name of her power has, the name of the character has nothing to do with her power, which is freezing. Ah, fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. But, but here's the thing. Like, could you imagine if you're sitting, you're sitting down with Superman, right? And he retired and you're like, hey, Superman, why'd you retire? He's like, well... You know, I was fighting this guy, this real powerful guy. I thought I was the best. I'm Superman. I fought this guy, and he whipped my ass and killed a bunch of people, and I retired. Wouldn't the next question be, well, what happened to that guy you fought, Superman? You know, the guy that made you retire, the guy that you couldn't stop, did you tell somebody about him? Did, did somebody stop him? Is he still out there? Right. Is this guy out there crushing white girl skulls? Someone did the Alpha Core like, take over? Like, yeah. Walk home that day? <laughs> Eric says Yara is Eric's third cousin remove. That's where they get it. It is what it is. What I'm saying. Get back in your truck. <laughs> it, it makes no sense. Like the characters like live in this world and like no one's like, wait a minute. Like what happened to Chadron? Oh, he just did he crushed a girl's skull and just disappeared. <laughs> like, fuck. Girl's skull and then saw saw Avery was was still there and was like, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> I did what I was supposed to do. I'm gonna Avery go. just walked off. He, just, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't retaliate at all after Chandram did what he did. He's like, I'm, I'm going to see get myself out. Okay, fine. You win. I'm done. I'm out of here. Uh, which I'm way was the exit? Uh, Eric says, well, what the fuck is that video on your page, Tony? Holy shit. That's funny. Which page? Like, where, where are we looking? On my YouTube channel? Uh I, I love when people ask me questions like that. Like I'm like, oh, what are you talking about? Uh, get over it. I Eric Ison just just leaving. It's just like, well, that I'm, oh, I'm getting a call. I gotta go. It <laughs> is what it my, is. My niece. My niece. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go pick up my niece. Literally. <laughs> Oh, on Twitter, the reply just talked about, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy. Uh, if, if you don't have a sensitive stomach, it, it's so fucking crazy. It's, I think it's Lemon Party that they put in the fucking corner as Eric's talking about all the gay ops. Uh, all right, but uh, we, we had some other people. And this is why Eric July's fans are not the smartest people, right? Uh, so this video is titled, Ethan Van Skyver is on his rocker. Goodness gracious. Even the title you can't get right. On, he's on his rocker, guys. Uh, and apparently he's got scanned pages uh, for some reason of um, ISO number two, which is illegal. This is illegal, sir. Eric, you're taking advantage of people who are irredeemably dumb. Says Ethan Van Skyver is on his rocker. I'm done with Ethan Van Skyver. Let's find out why. Why is this guy done? I think it's my fault. Let's find out. What's going on, everybody? I am sorry. I I am not keeping up with my videos, and it, it's it's been awful. Uh, also, uh, a, li a little tip uh, for all the YouTubers. You know, if you're under ten thousand. Viewers, if you're under 10,000 subs, right? No one's missing you. Okay. I hate, I hate watching people's videos when they're like, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, you know, I took a couple of days off, uh, but I'm better now. I was like, dude, <laughs> no one missed you. You have like it's, 10 it's, subscribers, right? Like, <laughs> it's weird when it's like, it's like, it hasn't really even been that long. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, what, what do you think we were checking for you every day? Like, what's going on? This guy has 52 subs. And again, I don't have that many. Even me, it would feel weird if I made a video like, hey, I, I'm sorry I wasn't here uh, the last week, right? People were like, we really weren't looking for you, right? Like, fuck are you? No, you're different because you, you actually stream almost every night. So that that would have been a, a noticeable loss. But I'm guessing this guy doesn't. Uh, what the fuck is that? No, this is not Scythe Jackal. Uh, don't, don't even say that. Scythe, this is not Scythe. This is Weapon X 10. 
Um, I am sick once again. Um, but um, I figured I owed this video to you guys. Uh, and I just wanted to uh, talk about Ethan Van Skyver and his... I don't know what he's been doing, but he has... He's been giving a lot of backlash to the Ripiverse and uh, Eric July, and um, <clears throat> he sent out this whole like mess. Uh... Now we know why this guy only has fifty-two subscribers. Yep. Have you ever wonder why EVS has been giving Eric July backlash? By the way, and Tony, you just read my mind. I was like, can you speed this shit up? Yeah, <laughs> speed. Look at that truck, though. That's a beautiful truck. I don't even know what it was. Just this whole mass uh, message from like on from text or something. I don't really know. And they basically say he basically was like, "Yeah, we need to talk." And he's like, and Eric just responded, "Yes, we do." But then he posts. So he skipped. So he goes. EVS put some message out and um, said we need to talk. And Eric's like, "Yeah, we do." Uh, did you skip the whole beginning part where Eric's basically threatened him not to uh, criticize Eric anymore? You just no, no. Hey, it feels like they. Away. It feels like whenever Eric does something weird, like they don't, they actually don't see it at all. So they're always just like, wow, are these people hating on him. Like, <laughs> like he's just the responding agency. <laughs> you know, he's just acting accordingly. Why yeah, exactly. Are these exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand why these people are hating on Eric. Eric's just the receiving agency. Yeah, I made it very clear. <laughs> He told these people if uh, they didn't act accordingly, there was going to be uh, consequences and repercussions. And uh, yeah. Eric's just giving it to them. I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> uh, said it publicly on Twitter, and I, I find that quite disrespectful. Um, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, so this uh, Ethan Van Skyver was bringing, or he brought this up, this uh, this this uh, sketch from. Uh, excuse me, Isom 2, and he was talking about how horrible this drawing was. And I'm thinking... Yes, a professional yes. artist was telling you how horrible this is. Multiple professional artists weighed in and said oh, this was a horrible fucking image. And they went through the reasons why. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, this guy knows better. What is wrong with this drawing? Do you guys see anything wrong with this drawing? Because um, I personally... Do we see anything wrong with this drawing, guys? Uh, bad perspective it's, on this. It's famously this, a lot wrong with it. <laughs> beer steins. Uh, this tree is retarded. The truck's nice. Totally don't. I, I don't find tree. anything wrong with. The doors are wrong. Yeah. See, th this is this is the exact when they make fun of the guys and like, oh, the drawbridge uh, is fucked up. Just consume media, right, and get excited for the this next. Is them, yes. Yeah, this is the draw this. distance is fucked up. <laughs> In the words of Eric July himself, they consume like pigs. This is yeah. what they're doing. I mean, all of you guys who are in the chat right now, you're all comic book readers, right? You you all recognize what good art is. I, I assume. Does this look like good art <laughs> to you? <laughs> is anything exciting about this? Four million dollars. Uh, Sundan says Ethan is fine with Eric. He clarified tonight they are separate, and he won't go against Eric's enemy list if Ethan likes them. No, I mean uh, Eric made it very clear: if Ethan doesn't fall in line, uh, there will be consequences and repercussions. There will be reciprocation. Yeah. Uh, the tree, yeah, the tree's fucked up. Uh, we went through this uh, when we did it ourselves, uh, but if you look, there's branches that are literally not touching. Like, if you really zoom in on this, some of these branches are just hanging in the air. They're not actually touching each other. It's like the weirdest thing. Like, right here, like, there's, you can see this cut in this branch. This little part of it is just sticking out for some reason. You're not supposed like, to see any of this. Like this? Like, why is there a cut here? Like, it's just weird. It's just weird. Yeah, there's little bits of branch hanging out it whatsoever um you know and he he uh he uh, said how he did a close thing wrong with it whatsoever um you know and he see there you go look, look at the, the close-up 
you got this what what the hell is all this like yeah and even then like okay let's presume what's her name blood ruth has her own pocket dimension in the middle of texas <laughs> and that's where the castle is at add some character add more things not just one tree and look at it this is like again you have to look at it right if you're just flipping pages and not actually reading you're just flipping pages and scrolling through sure there's nothing wrong with it right but if you're actually looking at the art and paying attention and enjoying the book actually engaging with the book tons of shit are wrong he uh he said how is okay so first of all some guy i, I hate this guy this some guy change some guy. my name <laughs> they never give you credit yeah he hates this guy though so some guy i hate this guy i'm just some guy but he also hates me uh, weird Dude, Tony TGD. I don't even know what his name is. He, I think he's a he. He is a, Tony TGD. You, I don't even know what his name is. It's literally after in you the say it perfectly. <laughs> yeah, it's right there in the thumbnail. You just said it. Yeah, I don't know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> Tony TGD, Frog King, who sees all. Oh, come on, it's not that hard. You lie within the same sentence. Complete <laughs> and just total jerk on on. Uh, on YouTube, and he just he hates every single smidget of the Ripperverse. Everything. I'm a total jerk who hates every single smidget. I think he means smidgen, but we'll allow it. About it, he hates everything. He has nothing good to say about the Ripperverse whatsoever. Am I supposed to? That's what I don't understand. They're like, you have nothing good to say. Well, there's nothing good to talk about, right? When there's something good, I'll talk about it. I'm sorry if I have not seen any of the good. He did. You do what Eric values the most, which is gave him money. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's like if I handed you a you don't owe him anything else if I gave you a shit sandwich and you're like this is shit I'm like why don't you have anything good to say about my sandwich because <laughs> you gave me shit I don't want shit you want a whopper <laughs> you want one of those mainstream sandwiches <laughs> now Pyro says I'm more from the funny side of comics which is more lenient with art details but isn't superhero comic art supposed to be way more accurate in detailing Especially with big budgets, it is. Yes, because Very exciting keep in, too. Keep in mind, this is after he was already a millionaire. Yeah. So, so part of the problem is one, it is supposed to be realistic. It's not supposed to be abstract art. This is not like, um, who am I? Who am I thinking? Not like Dilbert or something, where like characters can be floating and you don't really need to see the bottoms and you know. You don't have to add details. It could just be a box, and you assume that's a window, and there's a, a world outside the window, right? Whereas I would superhero love art, Adams to review this comic. <laughs> well, well, you see, the thing is, uh, oh Eric. Oh, oh. No, don't. Do <laughs> but uh, yeah, so like you know, it, when it comes to certain things, there's there's an understanding of how the world is supposed to work and how the art is supposed to be. When it comes to superhero art, especially when you put big names like Cliff Richards on your art, right? It should be good. Uh, depends on the style also. Yeah, well, that's true. But this is supposed to be more real realistic style. Uh, Michael says, Eric deserves to be crapped on daily. He constantly craps on the mainstream. Now he knows how it feels. Well, he also craps on uh, some uh, small screens too, you know? He was out there fighting with Naomi and them instead of just ignoring people. But anyway, let's get back to this. Um, but he says that he wasted that Ison 2 was uh, wasted an entire page of goofy looking castle and a truck. Um, so then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I said. But it is a it, goofy looking castle. Well, the truck is not really goofy looking, Eric. We see. Uh, did uh, Avery steal <laughs> that truck? <laughs> Ethan responds and says, How is this Eric's fault? Uh, oh, none of the hours PBS. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Why am I on his rocker? <laughs> what is, what is this? <laughs> uh, I think he went <laughs> off your rocker because um, you apparently went against Eric. He didn't like that. What up, BBS? Uh, is the art bad or is it just lazy? Could be both. Why not both? Oh, shit. Uh, what's up, Ethan? Yo, what's going on here? What did I do? Uh, apparently, this is a couple weeks old, but uh, he was very upset with when you criticized the art in uh, Isom number two. Who? Uh, some guy named Weapon X Ten. Some, some nobody guy. He's got like oh, fifty-two well, subscribers. Oh yeah. Oh, he made a video about it. Oh yeah. no. 
Also, in the video, spoiler alert, he says he's no longer going to buy any of your products. Stung oh, what, what the hell? That's not good. Ouch. Well, I, I guess you're going to apologize now. Yeah, listen, I don't want to lose any customers over this. So it's very important to me that I maintain customers. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's it's terrible. So what is he saying? What did I say that was wrong? Let me see. How is this Eric's fault? Look, look at me, like diverting blame from Eric. A uh, splash page of an exotic setting or a new character uh, introduction is perfectly appropriate. That's a great reason to have a splash page. Uh, this shot of the castle should have been all striking. Castle should have been huge on the page, imposing and foreboding. Instead, it looks like the pics I snap out of my car to remember where I parked at the baseball stadium. That's true. Uh, yeah. I agree that it isn't good, but this is 100% the artist, Gaff. Yeah, like... um. I don't understand is why is he blaming you for this when clearly this is uh, your employee at All Caps Comics? Uh, oh, yeah, that's not me. That's, uh, you know, uh, somebody from All Caps Comics. Obviously, that's uh, Mikey or Brighton at the warehouse. He's got very smart, <laughs> acute art critics, uh, you know, very smart fellows. I I, I don't know. Um, they sit under your learning tree every day, so that's, that's probably where they get it. How? How? He's not going to buy my stuff anymore because of this? Yeah. Okay, so what is he saying? I'm off my rocker. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. Oh, also, it's pronounced Vimeo, not Vimeo, sir. Oh, um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. It is Vimeo. a... Um, like video, but Vimeo. Yeah. Okay. It's an alternate platform. It's like a YouTube alt uh, alternative, but it's really old. And ISOM, the uh, International School, of, yeah, the International School of Ministry, uh, appreciates all the hard work that I've done, and they like the videos and the discussions that we've had about uh, Eric July. So they put it on their Vimeo channel, so their entire congregation of schools uh, can watch that video and learn what's going on. Well, I mean, if they do that, they're great big hypocrites because you know I'm fluent in profanity and uh, occasionally use, use the Lord's name in vain, which is something yeah. that they. I, you know, made it clear that they do not want to, uh, uh, they don't want to put up with. So, yeah, but, but you're not, I'm, I'm sure much. they cut those parts out. They didn't. I watched it. I found the, uh, the channel. I watched all that stuff. It's just me saying, fuck this. <laughs> fuck that motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, when I'm, don't care then. <laughs> yeah, when I'm imitating their founder, I'm lisping and you know putting on a, a weird little uh, mincing voice. It's you okay. Know, You're I'm, not a minister yet. They'll they'll teach well, they'll teach you how to avoid that. All right. My my suspicion is uh, they just cut those and put it on that page so they could direct their lawyers to it. Like here, uh, take a look at these videos. Here's what somebody thinks. Yeah, I I, I actually did. I said this guy's like a vampire gangster or something like that. Like. <laughs> It, I wasn't nice. You know, I'm clearly, you know, uh, supporting Eric July. I'm on his side uh, in this lawsuit, of course. You know, I support the indie comics and uh, all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, like, uh, still, I got to give my honest assessment of um, that lawsuit. And I think it's, uh, I think they have a good case. You know, it's just how I feel. Uh, Michael says those warehouse employees are also big Beatles fans, just like Ethan. They love the Beatles, you know. Also, I mean, it could just be my wife who's I like everybody uses that account. So uh, maybe she's a Beatles fan. She never said anything like that. But well, know. technically, uh, Ethan can tell them what to, to type as long as Ethan's not typing it out. It's, it's technically in the rules. Well, they've done that before. They'll quote me and I'll put a dash. I mean, they'll put a dash EVS after a quote like this is something that Ethan Van Skyver said, you know. Uh, and uh, that's a, that's how you know those are, those words are coming from me. I'm being quoted by my employees, uh, which is perfectly reasonable. Yeah, well, they, they probably follow all ca all caps comics on Twitter. Oh, they do. They do. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, Baron himself follows all caps comics on Twitter. Right. Yeah, and I made I made a mistake, so I do got to correct it. Uh, Baron's account does not follow Eric July's arm hair. Uh, I mistakenly when I, when you click on it, it for I some reason. Joy's arm hair. What the, yeah. the fuck is going on? Uh, for some <laughs> reason, when, when Twitter, when you go to to, to the followers, uh -huh. uh, Twitter now has this page where it says "people you know," and so it goes to that first. So people I know follow Baron, including Eric July's arm hair, but he doesn't follow them. He follows me. He follows Finbar. He follows Ethan's uh, employee, All Caps Comics. Oh boy. 
Hmm. All right. So what did I do? Why am I crazy? Like I'm off my rocker now. I'm a, I'm loop de loo. What did oh, I? We do? said you're on your rocker. You're on your rocker, so you're yeah. good. Oh, that means I'm, yeah. <laughs> you're <actually> making sense. <laughs> He's complimenting you. You're firmly on your rocker, like you're supposed to be. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> New character uh, introduction is perfectly appropriate. <clears throat> this shot of the castle should have been uh, should have been awe striking. Now I, I understand where Ethan's coming from. In a whole, there was nothing wrong with the, with the drawing that was placed in, in the comic to introduce uh, Blood Ruth. Uh, as we can see, the drawbridge is at a weird angle. Uh, these beer steins are bad. The castle just looks stupid. Yeah, like what? Like how? I mean, you say there's nothing wrong with it, but yeah, you know, you can do better. You know, again, uh, Shad Brooks uh, is spending his time tonight. Talking about declaring himself an artist because he's using AI. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, I remember that. Generate images. He's like, I am an artist, and uh, it's interesting. Uh, Dick Masterson, who is someone who obviously, you know, uh, this guy's a troll and a hater, but he said, uh, "Artist is not self-applied," uh, and he called him. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, Eric July is here. Uh, welcome, Eric July. I have a huge announcement for you guys today. So sadly, all the former members of the Mac Club, including the Ultra Max, have all been liquidated. But it ain't actually bad news. What it is, is it is what it is. But what it is, is we roll the Mac Club into brand new, mostly the same, but rebranded memberships to my comic book club. I know what you're thinking. This sounds amazing already. You hey, hey, Eric, Eric, man. we really heard Absolutely this. Absolutely amazing. Uh, we, we heard this story, Eric. Yeah, we, is he on an airplane? He sounds funny. Just take out a credit card. He just keeps talking. I muted him and he just kept going. <laughs> From the card, punched in. Yeah, it's weird. Payment process and software, then sit back and relax because you're about to get into the absolute. Eric, this is tortoise interference. To Please. Clearly tortoise interference. You know, if he's promoting his stuff, uh, can I just ask everybody to go over? And uh, I lost a fan tonight uh, with this guy who says I'm on my rocker. Go over and back Cyberfrog 3, Red Extermination, or Cyberfrog Dark Harvest on Indiegogo. Please help me replace this uh, customer that I've lost. Yeah. You know, also on my eBay store, uh, we have a flash sale tonight on the uh, Ghost Edition. Uh, of Ultimate Cyberfrog Blood Honey, that's Cyberfrog number one. Mark down to fifteen dollars tonight. We'll send you one. So uh, go get one. And thank you. And, uh, <laughs> Ghost. Yeah, it looks like uh, it, it looks like it's carved out of ivory. It's really a beautiful comic book. You'll like it. Fifteen bucks down from twenty five. Five dollars tomorrow. We're liquid. Everything must go. <laughs> Everything. Put, put in the code uh, Ribbit and uh, five dollars. <laughs> I don't think they have codes on uh, eBay, do they? No, they should though. No. So when, when are the, the deliveries for uh, Cyberfrog Three? When's that happening? Uh, next year. It's gonna be a while. Got to make the books. Got to make all the stuff. All right. You know, if you if you want to send me the the rest of my order early, you know that's that's always good. What well, what is your order? What did you order? Uh, I ordered uh, the first book. Uh, physical the second because I only got that PDF he sent me and then the third book. So oh cool. Yeah, okay. Is uh only hold on. Is it on the Dark Harvest campaign? You backed on the Dark Harvest campaign? Yeah, I believe so. I'm gonna look up Tony. I'm gonna find out your real name. I'm gonna dox your ass uh, and I'm gonna send people <laughs> over to your warehouse. <laughs> send them. <laughs> Hopefully they put money. Uh, so, Eric, you're, you're back. You finished your little spiel. Uh, what, what's going on? Yeah, shit. I don't know what speed dating type of shit that he thinks this is going to turn into, but why in the fuck would I ever? And it's like that with a lot of these cats, bro. These fucking fruits, man, will sit here and they... We, Eric, we can't have that kind of language uh, on the show. We can't. I mean, the ministry certainly can't. This, I mean, this is, is bad a, enough. I found <laughs> you. I found your order. I found it. Good. His name is Tony Geek. <laughs> yes. All right. Yeah, I found you. All right. Cool. Oh. You know, if uh, a couple of cyber frog figures or something happened to fall into my order box, it fell off a truck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take, I take broken truck. ones. It don't matter. 
Yeah. Well, Tony, uh, Ethan needs one of those things like uh, the new Riververse subscription where you can get to the top of the queue. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have something like that kind of um, for Cyberfrog 3. I have, uh, I think for like $20, you can do expedited shipping. So I'm going to do those first. Uh, it was a fan's idea. Like it wasn't something I wanted to do, but they said you should do expedited shipping for those of us who want to cut the line. And yeah. uh, I said, twenty bucks is twenty bucks. Let's go. Yeah. So, what do you think about those uh, new memberships to the Ripperverse? Uh, I don't fully understand them, so I can't really comment on them. I don't really get what it is. I don't, you know. Well, for twelve hundred dollars a year, you can hang out with Eric and ask questions. Uh, you can hang out so, with some of the staff. You can Sold. play video games with Eric. You get one free comic. Uh, not a year, just one free comic. You get a free uh, comic? Yeah, you get a ISOM number one, a special creator's edition cover. You get that included, or do you have to you you're able to pay for it? You're able to buy one. It, it says free. Uh, oh. I mean, you're already spending a hundred bucks, so okay. You get 30% off all merchandise, not including the comics. Not all merchandise, almost all merchandise. Yeah, almost right. all merchandise. So. Not including the comics. And then um, you get early access to the campaign. So when the campaign goes up on the 6th, you get 30 minutes before everyone else to shop. To do what? Why? So you can get your order first. Are they going to run out? Um, you know what? You think you just uh, made me think of something really good. Because what's the point of getting early access if you already get early shipping? It shouldn't matter when you order because you're going to get pushed ahead anyway. Well, I mean, what I would say, um, not that Eric July ever listens to me, he doesn't, but I would say a good idea, but like there should be a book, um, an, a version of Alpha Core, and this wouldn't cost very much to do, a special variant cover of Alpha Core that only members can get. And then you're talking, okay? Because then what you're doing is you're, you're effectively charging $100 for that cover, which is something Eric's already done. He did that with Shane Davis's foil cover, but he's created exclusivity. You have to join the club in order to be able to buy uh, this. Don't charge any more for it. It's 25, 35 bucks, whatever you normally do. But only people who are club members can purchase that cover. Boom. You got their hundred bucks. Boom. You got their 35 bucks. Boom. You've created an item uh, that is going to be print to order and that will have a collectability and value. Well, to be uh, clear, you got their hundred bucks and their thirty-five bucks monthly. So you, well, you got their hundred bucks monthly, and then you can offer them something like that. Here's the thing: you offer them something like that every month. Every month, there's a different variant cover. It doesn't cost very much. There has to that be an they can buy. Yeah. You know, they still have. They don't get it for free, but they're able to buy it for thirty-five dollars every month if they maintain their membership. Well, and I mean, that's that makes a little bit more sense to me because. Then you've got these comic books that only a few people have that have resale value for people who don't want to fucking subscribe. Uh, uh, I hate to break your well, heart, Ethan. Eric. I hate to break your heart, Ethan, because 11 yes. hours ago, someone asked about that very thing. And Eric July said, there won't be any early access covers, so you'll be good. Oh, that's a huge mistake. Mm. You want to create, You want to create special products for... Uh, for your fans, for the people who are paying more, uh, they, you know, you want to create things that they have that they can resell, you know. So What's we up, did. Morb? Oh, hi, Morb. Hey, guys, and and Ethan, no, I'm a huge fan. No I shilling, want... Morb. Morb, you start shilling your book, I'm gonna kick you. Mercenary Guild by really? Morb three five five seven three five seven three five seven. Three Go five back seven. it over on Indiegogo. Or That's a nice loophole. It's it's Shatter it's Shattermere Comics. It's uh. Right now, we, we don't. We're getting, we're getting close to. Right we're getting close to shilling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, guys, but it, but you but Ethan is talking about something that that we are actually doing. And can I can I yeah, explain? Go ahead. So yeah. if you sign up for our mailing list, which costs you nothing, you get a free trading card when you do back it uh, of an additional character that Luke Aglietta and I think uh, Ethan has talked to him a few times just recently. For an unboxing uh death metal hero i think love that guy show. He, he's my artist he's my pencil and anchor 
for a mercenary guild. He's he's really and, a super uh, guy. I've known him for like decades. He is a really good fellow. Yeah, he he's knocking it out of the park, dude. You're gonna love this book. And anyways, so if you sign up for the mailing list and then this you back showing. it, yeah, you get fine. this. Okay. <laughs> But, but if you just back it, you know, wait, 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 whatever. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, I'm showing. I was just on peace. You can at least give me a super chat and be like, I will read a super chat if you want to show that way. Jesus. I know. I just wanted to meet Ethan. I'm just, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I, hey, I thanks, have man. I, I, I have, uh, I love Cyber Frog and he's a great book. And, uh, hey, do you think Ethan is off his rocker? Uh, at times, of course. Uh, <laughs> you, know, that that he, you know, I'm a bit older than Ethan, but I still consider him Uncle E. Oh, um, thanks, my friend. I appreciate you know, that uh, because he has such a gentle misdemeanor. Gentle misdemeanor, uh, yes. not misdemeanor, but demeanor. <laughs> oh. uh, kind of. you, you sound like an Australian uh, kid. Like you're all like like a, a young fangirl at a Justin Bieber concert. You're like, oh my god! Ethan. Yeah, well, I just wanted to meet him, and I I appreciate you guys having me on. Well, you could meet him. You guys want to talk about like Eric July's uh, new thing? I can definitely talk about that. And uh, you're like Ms. Marvel. Holy yeah. night! Is that a grift? For the um, memberships, you think that was there a grift? Holy shit! Like, what do you get? Like, I paid ten bucks a month, and I get a fucking wallpaper Tony, and the chance to vote on things. Is this the real Tim Sheridan? To prevent HIV stigma. Okay, no. I mean, <laughs> holy night. It's like I get a wallpaper. I can just scan the fucking book at work and get any wallpaper I want. So, like, what What do I get for 10 bucks a month? You try that and you will get a DMCA. You, no, you I'm serious. I mean, bring, bring up it, bring up his stuff, and it's like maybe you get to play a game with us, or I mean, it, it's no. like it's like it's like paying for your friends or being a part of a community. And it's like the Friday Night Tight guys, like they will not read a fucking super chat that doesn't have a fifty attached to it. Period. Woo. They won't. I know that for a fact. If you have a twenty dollars super chat. You get that in this super chat square up, which nobody watches. <laughs> so, so, so it, it, it's like I'm paying to be part of a community, and it's kind of sick, you know. Whereas, like what Ethan's got going on, and what we it's like just more, more buy our comic, buy our comic, and watch our shit. Or if you don't, don't. Right, yeah, Ethan. Come down, like, come bring it down. I agree more. For nine ninety nine, I mean, you look only at get what the you, vote. Look, what the vote. fuck do you get for this shit? What yeah, but I have, a, I have a subscribe star. To be fair, Here's I have a subscribe star where people pay me $5 a month just to be nice to me. Uh, and I, I do uh, I do uh, free giveaway trading cards. Not all And those though. trading cards sell for like 50 bucks a pop on eBay. I mean, well, there's value true. in that. That's true. But, but I, you know, in, 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 I don't have to do that. You know, people want to give me $5 a month so that, you know, uh, it pays for one of my warehouses rents. It's really nice. Um, but I mean, that's, that's just, uh, people supporting me and saying, keep doing yeah, what but you're if, doing. If I go to your air warehouse, am I going to get shot? I mean, isn't there like section nine no. in the penal code? No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't. That whole thing was that whole thing was odd. I mean, in general, like you know, people are people. I, I don't believe that even my real like people who don't like me. I think if they met me, they would. So you know, actually, we had a uh, Riley come to the warehouse. Yeah, that was, I said that was funny. That was yeah, funny. Said, well, you know what? That's part of why you're on this guy's video. As a matter of fact. Oh shit! Well, I mean, I just said, uh, look, um, you know, if somebody comes to my warehouse, then I'm going to probably invite them in and and say, hold, unless unless they have a gun or a knife, I'm probably going to invite them in and say, what's up, man? How you doing? Shake their hands. If they want an autograph, they can have one and turn somebody who thought they were a hater into a fan. That's that's how you do yeah. that. Like somebody's like, I met Ethan. He's not a dick. He's really nice, and I'm going to buy Cyber Frog now. Yeah. So that's what I did when Ryan came over. He and uh. Uh, mint salad were the nicest people. They were great. We talked <laughs> about comics. We had a great did, did, time. Did uh, Riley smell like shit, like literal shit? I didn't smell him. I don't know why. You know, I don't. When you're outside in the open air, I don't know how you smell someone smelling <laughs> unwashed. I don't really get that. So I can't say yes or no. But he he just kind of looked. He was just a regular guy. He didn't smell overtly terrible at all. Uh, and he was, you know, I don't know. Well, There's a lot of he, 
he learned something from the Eric experience to wash, wash his ass. And, and, no, yeah, uh, just... Riley did not smell. Uh, Eric was just saying it because Eric was trying to put Riley down. Uh, but, no, but uh, it, I, 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 hold, hold on, more, charming, more. He's a charming guy. He more, really more. is. Shut, shut up. Uh, so, uh, Ethan, are you worried about Eric July pulling up on you at uh, C2E2 next year? No. Because I'm going to pull up on you next year. Oh, cool. Come on over and meet me. Yeah, I'm not worried about any of that. I think, well, listen, to be honest with you, there's always going to be a little bit of worry about somebody who's legitly, like, legitimately unhinged uh, pulling up on me. But there's a difference between a performance artist like Riley or Alex Stein, and you can recognize what they're doing, and somebody who's, like, shaking and quivering and they have a weapon and, you know, they're like, fuck you and Trump. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a little scared of that because I have a family, but, uh, you know. Uh, for the most part, no. I mean, I, you know, even my like the haters on the internet, I'd love to meet them. Uh, Beefy got what? a question for you. He says, uh, "If I wanted to read Cyberfrog from the beginning, where would he start?" Um, uh, Blood Honey. So, uh, you know, as I said, um, on my, uh, if you go right now to uh, uh, to eBay and search for Ultimate Cyberfrog Blood Honey, and then just write Ghost, uh, you're gonna get our you're going to find our eBay store. Okay. One of the first result will probably be ours. We have it on sale right now for $15. That's the lowest it's ever been. And that's because a new version of blood honey is coming in with a new chromium cover. So we don't mind clearing out the, uh, the ivory covers a little bit. This is the lowest price you're going to be able to get 80 page story. It is cyber frog. Number one, $15. We'll ship it to you tomorrow. Uh, so uh, go over there to our eBay store, pick it up. That is where to start. And then Wrecked Planet is two, is number two. Wrecked Planet is really good. Someone's selling it for $22. Yeah. Oh, I should see. That makes me feel bad because I've undercut and somebody. The, the action figures are unbelievable how good they are. Yeah, now, now for the ghost covers, those would look really cool with an autograph on them. Yeah. Yeah. We had, really look at, see, out. there's a golden one. There's a silver one as well. But we have the, uh, the ghost. You're not finding me though. You're finding other people selling for more than me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like that. Yeah. Uh, what, Look what for Cyberfrog Frog Nine. That's the name of our store, Cyberfrog Nine. And we've got all of the gear. We've got hats, T-shirts. We've got some toys. We got a bunch of stuff up there. Actual yeah. good merch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, our stuff is good. I, I think. Um, yeah, I mean that that would be worth a monthly membership to get the action figures at a reduced rate and the hats and tees and all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, do we know if Alpha Core is going to have multiple covers? Pro I don't know. Yeah, we, don't nothing's know. been revealed yet. We haven't really seen anything. I, I yeah. gotta assume yes, right? You I think it comes out this month, right? Is, I think it comes out this month, right? Campaign. Um, Alpha Core? Uh, campaign comes out within, on like the 6th, I believe. Yeah, we same. watched the trailer. Have you seen the trailer, Ethan? I saw um, like a trailer preview. Yeah, it was a teaser for the trailer. There we are. Look at that. Cyberfrog 9. That's us. 100% positive feedback. Everyone, like if your book comes damaged, we'll replace it. You know, we'll we'll help you out. We got look, man. We got talented writers, right? Well, my oh boy. Hey, what Ethan, what's right. the best place to buy action figures? Because I have one, and I don't want to take it out of the package, but I want to buy another one. Is it Big Bad Toy Store or? Yeah, go ahead and buy them from them. But we have it for the same price. We have Electric Blue Cyber Frog variants, and that's uh, on... that's available now. That's yeah, that's live on Indiegogo, so okay, you can go over there. We'll show. Okay, you Indiegogo. Too. Okay. Is, is that your hand right there, Ethan? Hold on to comment. Yeah, that's my toe thumb. <laughs> Just like Megan Fox. Yeah, I didn't know I had toe thumbs until I became a YouTuber and people let me know. I was like, shit. So here's what you can get right now. Look at that. You got comic skate shirts for 40 bucks. My shirts are a lot cheaper. Are they mm -hmm. really? Okay. Mine are 18. Yeah, ours are really good. Tony, like we get like Calvin Klein uh, quality t shirts. I know that. Uh, people don't pay much attention to that. A lot of people just use like Hanes beefy tees and they feel like a burlap sack. Ours are soft. They're really, really good fabric that you'll enjoy wearing. They're very comfortable. That's funny you say that because we use burlap sacks that feel like Hanes tees. So. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah we, we, staple, we staple the logo to it. <laughs> <laughs> 
we've got great hats. Our baseball caps are great. I Our love the hat. Great. I love that red and black. Red and black yeah. hat. The, the all caps comics hat and a comic skate hat. If you're comic skate, wear that. Like wear that to a convention and see what happens to you. You know, will we'll it get probably, beat up? No, I think people will some people will give you dirty looks and other people will come up to you and go, Hey, you're comic skate. Cool, me too. You'll make friends real quick. Uh, is there a handshake? I just want to make sure that you know someone goes, Hey, you comic skate, and then no, they try to a... give me the secret handshake and I don't know it. <laughs> no, no, no. But you'll uh, there's no secret handshake, but you will uh, okay. you'll make friends. It's one of the reasons I came on the stream just to learn the secret handshake from Ethan. But okay, <laughs> Ethan sad. says there's no secret handshake, but there really is. Okay, <laughs> it's like Scientology. We're not in the the high enough level of comic skate to learn. Can I can I answer Ruby King? Ruby King says, "Yes, I have a question about Cyberfrog." She says it's a very important question. Uh, why does Chelson um, not give Salamandroid any weapons? Um, well, Salamandroid does have weapons. We haven't revealed them yet. Um, but Chelsea just hasn't connected. She she doesn't share an internet connection uh, with uh, Salamandroid, uh, nor did Amixon, um share one with uh, Scorpion, um, because her focus is on Cyberfrog. Cyberfrog has Cyberfrog is the one. Oh, you're a he. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I couldn't tell because of the name. But uh, <laughs> your Cyberfrog is the one or that both. has or both. has the ability to. Uh, uh, to turn back the invasion. He doesn't know how yet, but he has the ability. So it's important that she's connected to him uh, and Salamandroid is meant is meant to watch his back. And that's kind of it. See, uh, CW says the secret handshake is a spank on the ass. That could happen. No, but Ethan, I really wanted to say that how much I loved, how much you paid off. You set up a lot of things in, in Blood Honey and you really paid a lot of it off in the second book. And that really, that hooked me. The first book, you know, I, I thought it was cool. Obviously, the art is rocking. I wasn't that attached to the character. And then the second book, you just hooked me. I mean, you paid off, you know, Chekhov's gun or whatever. You, like, you really paid off a lot of stuff you set up. And, and I just wanted to compliment you on that. Uh, I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm in. I'm in. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, the the third book is going to really make you happy. Uh, also, Dark Harvest is. Uh, I've already backed it. I've already yeah, backed it. Yeah, Dark Harvest is kind of the next book, even though it's a short installment. It it really has a lot more info there. It pays a lot more stuff off. It's cool. I know there's no need to. We're we're watching. I came in here to say figure out why I'm off my rocker with Eric July and all this stuff. <laughs> I, I really enjoy this discussion. I didn't know about this video. This so. this Eric July stuff is like what he's doing. It, it could have a backlash on him if somebody who's a detractor decides, okay, I'm going to sign up. I'm going to sign up for the premium model, and I'm going to track everything I get or don't get and what I've spent. And then six months from now, they reveal. Yeah, I don't think any detractor is paying six hundred bucks to do that. Well, <laughs> well, you might. I mean. <laughs> Tony, that might be spend, spend, spend more. <laughs> you know, it, it it just like I don't have to. I just will just ask somebody it, and they'll just tell but, me like always. Yeah, it's like what did you get for fifty wow. bucks a month? Fifty bucks a month. It's you can go to a but you guys are gym. answering you your go own to questions a gym. Because, you can work out yeah. you can go to a gym for less than that. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but you guys are answering your own questions because, you know, you, you say that people are only you know, a lot of Eric's detractors. I love the way that, like, the word detractor gets picked up by everybody. <laughs> like, they can't call them haters or they detractors. Well, that was and then everybody follows along. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's like uh, Eric's detractors say that, you know, people are buying ISOM just to support him. Right. And support him again, fighting the culture war. So, uh, you know, my thing is. What difference does it make? Give him right. like if he wants a hundred dollars a month, great, give it to him. You know, like well, that's if you can it. get the if you can get the money, get it. Sure, you know if people want to support yeah, you for Ethan's whatever saying, reason financially. Ethan's saying, don't, I just think there don't could make be a him have to send you a book if you if your only purpose is to, to support him. You can just mm -hmm. give him money like that. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Then you won't have to be tempted to to read it. Ever. Read, yeah. You don't have to read yeah. Iceland. I give him thirty five dollars. He just doesn't give me a book. I'd, I'd rather like spend fifty bucks going to a gym or a martial arts studio or something like. 
instead of trying to be his friend, instead of trying to be his friend or uh, Friday Night Tight, uh, you know, yeah. Geeks and Gamers, uh, Mario Kart once once every quarter. Spin it out more. Spin it out. Uh, mm. Look, you know, while we were busy spending money, it's clear that you were busy studying the blade more. We get that. We understand. You'd rather do that <laughs> shit. But hey, some people just want to give Eric money. What I want to know, EBS. Yeah, if you can get it. Oh, get uh, it. more, more. What I want to know, EBS, because you often have your guys on there to show their Indiegogos or their Kickstarters or whatever, right? Yeah. How much money do you, when you have somebody on and you promote their Kickstarter, how much money does it usually generate for that campaign? Oh, I mean, it, it really depends. Like, uh, uh, if somebody wants to open up their campaign on my show, then it can it can bring in tens of thousands. I've um, seen I've seen wow. Ethan do fi- a five thousand in one night. It, yeah, I mean, break into sweat. We had Liam Gray on, whose campaign Dino King on Indiegogo had stalled out at under five thousand, uh, and we brought him on the show and just had a nice conversation with him. I it was just me and him. I just talked to him about you know what was going on. And he uh, he got another like nineteen backers or something like that. I think his where uh, he made over a thousand dollars in an hour, uh, which was really great for his campaign. I don't know where it is now. Let me just pull it up real quick and see. Yeah, he's at sixty one hundred and sixty five dollars now. So um, that was a tremendous boost for him. Uh, you know, on a you know compared to where he was. Uh, I, 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 to me, like, I just want to see these guys get their books made. I, I don't guarantee that the books are going to be good. I, I don't know if they are or not, but if they look like they might be good, uh, or I think the creator is somebody who should be supported so that he can, uh, get better at his craft, you know, I'll definitely, uh, ask people to, um, stay home from the movies and give 25 bucks to that creator instead, you know. Yeah. Beefy says, is there a collection of Cyberfrog stuff from the 90s? That's a what, blood, uh, Cyberfrog words and all, right? W- words and yeah. All. Yeah, there's a nice trade paperback of that. I think it's $30, 329 pages that is available on the eBay store. And then there's a, a super nice hardcover version of it with a bonus hardcover, like exclusive uh, extra features thing that is $120. It's got a slip cover and everything. You can get one of those uh, if you prefer. But the, the soft cover is great. Yeah. Also, speaking of money, don't forget, you guys, we can own our enemies if you just give me some money. If you are a fan of Comic Skate, if you want to support Comic Skate and own all the Heather Antos of the world, then give me some money. And if you are a fan of Sam Mags and you want to own these chuds in Comic Skate, well, just give me some money. Now, whoever we want to own, we're going to own them. Just if you're a man money. and you use the word chud, you're a homosexual. <laughs> and we can own you. <laughs> and we can own you if you give me some money. Yeah, like chud <laughs> is something a woman should call like. Uh, like that guy's a dumb racist, like <laughs> meathead. Like he's a real chud. When I see other men calling other men chuds, I'm like, you are definitely a homosexual. Definitely. And, uh, <laughs> Andy, yeah, I don't know who came up with that phrase. It's so odd. Ethan, as, I think uh, was as, as my book gets uh, more finished, we, we will send you a copy, and and I think you'll like it, and you want to promote. Again, Luke is the artist, and uh, Eric Weathers is on board for letters. So nice. I th- I think uh, I think you'll enjoy it and definitely would like to promote it uh, with you. I I remember when Ethan had this seventeen year old kid on who uh, did his own comics and uh, you know it was so sweet you know and the kid was like you know he was all struck of Ethan and all that kind of like Ethan you are kind right of now. toned him down but but I bought it I bought his books because of that and I also bought a lot of Mandy Summers. Uh, books because he showed the artwork of Peter Gilmore, which was just knock you out type of art. I mean, just oh, thanks. I I really I don't think people in the audience want to hear me be uh, praised. I think we want to be watching this video. I think though, they want to hear I me. Mean, be no praised. offense. Well, well, why, yeah. why do people always okay. come on the show and then others praise the people? My guests. No one ever says oh, nice I... things about me. Goddamn. Yeah. I, hey, I like you, Tony. I love Mexicans. <laughs> That's where it begins love, and ends. I love <laughs> Mexicans, man. I'd love I lived in Spanish Harlem in San Jose. Fuck. <laughs> that makes one of us. Let's, let's I know. see what's going on here. All right, let's hear this it. Castle. I find it very unique. Yes, it's very simple. There's nothing in awe about it. You can't say it's simple and unique, right? Um, I think you kind of can. Also unique. No, because simple unique implies in an odd that it's way, not, probably. <laughs> unique implies that it's special and it's 
different. Simple implies well, okay, that it's, like it's a, a horse, standard uh, castle. A horseshoe is simple, but if you turn it upside down, it's unique. Or yeah, I'm fucking high. I don't. You're know. coming. <laughs> But it's very it's different from other castles. It's not your average castle. I, I had I think a good can... thought in my head. It just my filter just didn't get it. Sorry. Yeah, fine. I'll agree on that. This is not your average looking castle. Um, it's it's very different. Um, but anyways, uh, Ethan has just been on his wall lately. I don't I don't understand. But anyways, what's up, funny metal? You... God, this is funny. This is good. George, I swear to God, George, if you start shilling when I let you on, I'm going to. Whip somebody's ass. <laughs> what? Come on. It's like that's not that's not like me. <laughs> yeah, that's not like me at all. Mexicans can fight. They can fight real good. <laughs> you guys know this guy, uh young Clippa, the guy that um went to Eric July's warehouse. Um, but apparently they're friends now, Ethan and this this guy. So, would you would you consider Riley a friend now, Ethan? Are they friends though? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so this is this is basically generally what happened. What's up, funny Italian? It's me, ASC Riley, the king of the Clipperverse, Young Clipper Six Nine, and I'm here to totally vandalize Ethan Van Skyver's warehouse with money, with bunny money. Look at that! <laughs> Look at what we're doing, and there's nobody who can stop us. There's no. Oh shit! Fuck you guys doing? I didn't think you were gonna be here. Um, how come I only get two bucks, asshole? You gave the other guy forty-one. You said you gonna call the cops. We're gonna go. Nice pants. Anyways, um, <laughs> that, nice that, pants, that, that, Ethan. What are you fucking? I'm Desert in there working. Storm? I, I, <laughs> I'm wearing I like, sweatpants. I'm in there I working like and putting, putting boxes together. And like when, when he that, says that, that, you, you gave the other guy forty-one, it, it yeah. implies that that there's like this this whole reputation, well-known reputation, like like he's a Batman villain, and this is one of the things that he does. Yeah, he should have given <laughs> Ethan more. I mean, Ethan's like started this whole shit. He should give him more money. <laughs> Dude, um, right? Riley, I mean, Ethan's no, a legend. No, no, hold, hold on, more. Um, as much as you love Ethan, I think Riley spent like a thousand dollars on Cyberfrog merch or something. He like bought that. a ton of toys. See, see Did he drive there? Stuff. Did he? Because he's California, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Where is he? Yeah, he is. No, he no, he works no. for the Dick Show, and they're uh, in okay, Hollywood. Okay, more, more. When I say no, that means I know the answer. I'm not speculate. I said oh, no. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. So he does not live in California. Uh, now Eric July grows one shoulder hair for every criticism he gets. Oh, shit. He's going to be super hairy at the end of this. Uh, thank you, Ian, for the $5. Now we're going to add that to the fund. Uh, we're going to own everybody. Everybody's getting owned. Once we get $1,000, uh, we can retire from well, YouTube. Where, where, did, where did he come from to go here? Uh, uh, he's yeah. in the Midwest. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to like dox Riley. No, no, of course not. Of course not. Okay, so it wasn't that huge of a drive. Then. No. Yeah. Uh, that's why when he was driving to the Dick Show meetup, that's why he passed through Texas. Oh, okay, so he went there on his way. Yeah. Okay. You know, that the, the, that, that's why when people were talking shit and like, oh, why did he drive across the country to blah, blah. No, he was going to the meetup for the Dick Show. And that just happened to be on the way. You know what's funny is that these same people, like they defended Kyle Rittenhouse because he crossed state lines. But then as soon as this guy crosses state lines, they they use that. Like, like what the up. fuck is that? Like, They're the SJWs they hate. Yeah. I've been saying it's, this. It's all like, time. who gives a shit? Yeah, you can't joke crossing state lines. So I can't cross state lines to put money on your door. Or... <laughs> I, I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. So let me ask this for Sandman. How did you guys plan this? Uh, no plans. I was in there working. Riley showed up. I kind of thought he was going to show up because uh, he said he was going to. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, no, I, I'm in there putting action figure crates together. Uh, and so uh, yeah, it was nice. I let him come in. We walked around, had a little chat with him about stuff, talked about comics. Uh, and then I threw a, my baseball bat at his car as he drove away. Uh, drove away. <laughs> Fuck! Don't come yeah, back I heard here there again. Were lots of outtakes yeah. uh, cut off. Was yeah. that true? Like, that I think I think it's hilarious that Ethan dresses in his own gear. I, think I was about awesome. to say, you know, you just happen yeah. to be wearing comic skate gear. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Ooh, that, you know, no, but it rocks. Run. It's good looking well, clothes, have, man. You have to show that the 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 trademark is in use. Yeah, of course, <laughs> it's always it's always being used. <laughs> How does this prove I'm off my rocker? What did I do? This guy is You're not. You're friends being with the guy who attacked Air July's warehouse. No, I'm friendly with everybody. I want to be. I don't want to be. I don't want to be but at Riley's odds with a anybody. Psychopath Riley literally drove to Texas and put money. Oh, by the way, Ethan, did you yeah. happen to see the Ripperverse? Uh, their their latest email actually has the address to the warehouse attached to it. Oh, You're okay. fucking kidding me. No, I'm not. <laughs> it's yeah, literally like, uh, signed by Andrew. So it doesn't which... have like the three gates in the Minotaur's riddle that you have to solve to get <laughs> to the front door? <laughs> the Minotaur's base. <laughs> that, that because enough. doesn't it have these like three gates, but then it has this other gate, and then it has the <laughs> road that leads to the gate, but then the Minotaur is there, and then you have to solve his riddle, and then you can get to the front door. It, it, that's how I read it. I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah. if you buy, it, you just tell it, them you're part it, of the that, According to Texas law, that makes it private property. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 100%. And so if I get on there and I spit on the sidewalk, according to Title IX of the Penal Code, I he can rip out his rocket launcher <laughs> and blow my shit to fucking hell. Well, I, I don't know what, spitting I don't know on a sidewalk from. because of Section 9 of the Texas Penal Code. Well, right? Here's the thing, Morb. I don't know where you're from, but here in my, Chicago... That's actually against the city ordinance to spit on the sidewalk. And make an I'm from California, so we can't even like have guns here. Well, so, you can just like, shit on the, on the sidewalk in California, and they don't say shit to you. Yeah, I can. I can literally take a shit outside your business, and and I can actually steal nine hundred and fifty dollars worth of merchandise, and nobody's <laughs> gonna do anything about it. That's a hell of a day you're having. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the video because we got to find out why Ethan's maybe steal some. Tissue or a gym membership. So he he's good friends with this guy now, and it appears to me that good friends. Because so you took a picture with him. Wait, 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 who's this guy? Who's that chick? That's Fuck that guy. Who's that chick? Wait, hold a second. Who's this guy who's narrating the, the video? Uh, Weapon mm. X10. And he's doing guilt by association. Yes. Yep. Mm. What, what bag? Well, you know what my attitude was about this? <clears throat> First of all, Riley put on that face. He was smiling. He has this little <laughs> chipmunk smile. The whole time, he, we were really having a good time, and he was kind of fanboying out, asking me about Green Lantern and stuff. And then the minute I said, let's get a selfie, uh, he pulled that face like, mmm, I'm Riley with the scissors. I, was, I just laughed. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> um, but I, the reason why I did this wasn't like uh, – to troll anyone, uh, there were people, mobs and mobs of people, calling for Riley's death, uh, and um, I'm I'm not going to stand for that. He's a troll. I like trolls. I think people who pull pranks are funny. I like Borat. Uh, I like <laughs> Riley. I like Alex Stein. I like these guys. I think they're funny and they need to be humored. Or by the way, uh, if you don't humor them, uh, it's going to get worse, right? Yeah. So uh, one thing that I didn't like is I, I just didn't like people being like, the guy should be shot. If he shows up again, I'm going to fucking kill him. You can't have your fans saying things like that. So I wanted yeah. to kind of humanize him a little bit and say, look, he's a nice guy, and he's, he definitely doesn't deserve to be murdered. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know what this means. I, I guess that means I'm crazy or <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, I don't, I don't get it. Okay. I, I heard that um... – uh, Uncle Ethan over there was was hitting on mint salad. Is that true? Oh, it's not true. I'm a happily married man. I would never betray my wife. I would never embarrass or disgrace her in any way. Mint salad's it, very nice. I did give her a nice hug though. It's great to meet her. Uh, so since I, I got think, you here, Ethan, hold on. And, and uh, yeah, but we, like, we've been looking. Oh, so everyone, shut the fuck up. God damn it! Since I got Ethan here, uh, we've been looking for new emojis. So would you sign off on us putting a comic skate or cyber frog emoji for our members? Yeah, if you want to, sure. There you go. TJ, get on that. All right. All right, go ahead. Now, now say whatever bullshit is you guys want to say. Like, nothing. You got nothing. Oh, it's a, Okay, it's just... <laughs>
like he could say. We were all going to talk they about wanted, emojis. They wanted to air this guy out based on some Texas law, and it's like – they escalated it to a point where it didn't need to be. And it's just like, <laughs> so I could rip out my rocket launcher and just blow this guy to shit because he came yeah, on my virtual signal. It, you, you don't know. You, 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 I mean, I, I'm not somebody who wants uh, everybody to take responsibility for their fans. They, they can't like I, if somebody's crazy and they don't, they want to do something because I said, I don't like X-Men right now. And they, that's, I'm sorry about that. But when you're when you're literally like saying, you know, I could kill this guy uh, and your fans, you've got like, you know, maybe a million fans like you don't know, like, you know, a, a tiny little minuscule percentage of your fandom could be unhinged and could want to make you happy by hurting somebody in your name. Hey, you can't do that. You, know, you got to watch what you're saying. A bit. There, there's ways to handle things like an adult. And, uh, you know, if you feel unsafe you get the police involved. I live in a state where the police don't get involved. Uh, but he's lucky that he lives in a state where the police could get involved. And if, if there is a problem and his employees do feel uh, threatened then then we'll see what happens. But uh, Aaron, a guy, you know, <laughs> killing him like that, that. I mean, I don't want like Biggie Smalls and Tupac to enter <laughs> comics. Kate. I mean, that's just, that's <laughs> fucked up. You know, it's it, you know, and the thing is, those of us who followed hip hop saw this coming when Tupac and and all this Ooh. stuff happened, and and you had Vibe magazine and all these things egging it on, and then as soon as somebody got killed, they're like, "Oh, we need to increase the peace," and it's like, "Well, fuck you." You know, you were the yeah, ones you, part of this whole East Coast already, West Coast shit. We already lost the geniuses. Now you gotta, yeah. It, it, <laughs> So let's not get to that point. I don't want to see guys aired out over fucking comic books. I do. I want to see all you aired out. It'd be funny as fuck. Riley's mm. willing to die for the cause. I think you're right about that. I don't. I don't think Ethan is. I don't think I am. I don't. I don't think Eric. I don't is. want anybody hurt at all. I don't. None, I don't. None of these people who might buy my comics. Who might enjoy my YouTube? I don't want any of them hurt. I don't want did anybody you, hurt. Did you notice really. what Ethan said? Anyone? I don't. Who might I don't want his see, comic. If you don't, don't like his comic, you can get cards. hurt. Yeah, if you don't like my comic and you never will, you can go to hell. But I mean, if <laughs> if there's a the slightest chance that I could talk you into becoming a customer or a fan, I don't want you hurt. And well, you need I think more that's animations. Everybody. You need more trailers. Oh. Hmm. Let me see that trailer. I didn't. I I got a, a glimpse of it. I didn't see the whole thing. Oh, you didn't see the trailer? It's gonna After blow this, your mind. Uh, we'll watch the trailer. Because honestly, if Eric like rocket launchers this guy's ass, he's the next Tupac. I mean, really? <laughs> Is that what you want? Uh oh, figure drawings here. I think he wants to yell at Ethan. I'm not sure. Is it the real figure drawing, or is it somebody else? Um, I can't unmute him, so. Riveting, riveting this fucking. Well, I'm gonna play the video until finger drawing decides to talk. They're on good terms, and I just, I don't understand what Ethan is doing. And I, I, I honestly, I haven't even gotten that far into Cyberfrog, and I was already enjoying it. But if I'm gonna be completely honest, I have lost all respect for Ethan. Well, that's not really him. Yeah. <laughs> he lost all respect for you, Ethan. You lost this man's respect. What? Mm -hmm. In what way or how? Let me let me explain more. Real simple. He liked Eric. Ethan, no, be friend with Eric detractor. <laughs> Ethan, bad now. No, like Ethan. Simple. So, like all of Ethan's work, like in doesn't matter. Greenland Ethan was friendly I mean, with the detractor of so Eric. That's it. That's all that matters. That? That's right. You got it. Um, I, I don't know what he's doing right now, and I, I'm seriously, I'm just done with him. And so, and it's stupid because I have an, I have another comic on uh, that's uh, from one of his campaigns that I'm waiting for, and I'm not excited to read it anymore. So I think until until Ethan apologizes to Eric, or you know, he is that ever going to happen? The fuck, does he have to apologize for? I don't know, Ethan. Do you think you have anything to apologize for? No, 
I don't. I don't think I have anything to apologize for. I haven't done anything wrong. I, I'm I'm stating clearly what my motivation is for what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm trying to explain uh, that I, I recognize what the internet is. The internet is for people to have a good time, and there are trolls. And those trolls, some of them, by the way, uh, are going to be kind of mean. They're going to hurt your feelings. Go ahead and block them and ignore them. You don't want to give them oxygen. But some of them are, are trying to be kind of funny, like Alex Stein types here. And they're performative yeah. and they're amusing True. and you can see what they're up to. And, uh, you know, they don't deserve to be overreacted to uh, or like oh, they do deserve to. You want to overreact well, to Alex well, Stein and these guys, but you shouldn't be telling your fans that they, they they deserve to die. Like you shouldn't be doing that. But well, there's an and overreaction. Some of the, some of the, oh, sorry, Tony, go ahead. There's an overreaction that's funny. You could do a funny overreaction, but the overreaction in the direction of I want to kill you and I hope you die, that's the wrong direction to take it, right? Yeah, you want to like be like, oh, that Alex Stein, look what he fucking did. You want like AOC to like, uh, you know, denounce him on the on the floor of, uh, you know, Congress. Congress. Like that's yeah. funny. But uh, yeah, like to to be like, I don't know. Uh, or like you said, if just, he came out there with no, like but- shaving cream on his shoulders, was like, where you at? Where you at, Riley? Some some of the <laughs> trolls want to cause dissent between uh, groups, so they want to say, "Well, this, you know, Gary said this, or this person said this about you, or blah blah blah," and and they want to cause dissent among certain communities. But it, but it won't it won't happen. Like like I have got no, it has know. happened. But, but I here, mean, he was more, canceled more, from the more, FNT guys, more, and they won't more, even go on Flashcast unless. Okay, fuck know that he's listen, not going to be on it. Listen to me. Man. <laughs> listen Is to that me. true? Mm. Hold, hold, hold on. I have guys, right? And if anybody came to me and said, hey, Finbar was talking shit about you, I wouldn't just believe them. I would say, hey, Finbar, this guy's making these accusations. And he'd be like, no, I, I didn't say that. I'd be like, okay. That's it. If you actually respect and like the person, you just ask them and they'll tell you the truth. Right? It's like oh, come I'm, on, man. That's not how we're spurred. And that there's some work. people out there that'll cancel you in a heartbeat. Then those I mean, people were never your friends. They were just looking exactly for a reason right. to cancel you to begin with. And and that's yep. you know you were you were just a convenient ally. That's all yep. it was. They will cancel you in a heartbeat, and that's how I don't want to talk for Ethan, but like he apologized, like he's you know, he apologized publicly for what he said about the the whole zeros comment and they don't forgive him and i'm thinking gary you're in fucking recovery and it's step nine dude like you have <laughs> to you know you're not even going to step nine dude wow. like you know you won't he's not really, a zero damn it if you know step nine of the big book uh then you know that gary is not really working this program very well uh, when it came to Ethan, and you know, I, once I hear from George, let George, and, speak. I, and of course, I don't yeah, want to speak for Ethan, but that that was just bold to me. That was when I was just off the FNT guys when Ethan apologized, and he can't apologize more. He publicly apologized for the whole zeros comment. If I'm but not, it was wrong. true. Am I right, Ethan? What? Uh, yeah, I did because uh, yeah. my fans were upset and, with and, me, <laughs> and and that should be the end of it. That should be the end of it. But it wasn't enough. Right. It wasn't enough. It's never, it's yeah. never enough. That's why you never apologize because it's never going to be enough. Yep. You never give them the power. I, I and really uh, again, care, guys. I'll, I'll give you. A, hold on, more. I'll give you a perfect example. I said something that upset Saggy Melons. Saggy Melons yeah. made a whole stream. She so, brought me on. And you she made said, Saggy. Apologize? Yeah. Why, man? She's a, she's a she's a friend. She is, and she goes, "You're going to apologize?" I said, "No," because what I said is what I said, and I'm not sorry for what I said. I'm sorry you felt bad for what I said, but I'm not sorry for what I said because I thought it was funny, and that's it. Now yeah. Ethan said a thing because he believed it at the time, right? Well, he was he was high as fuck, right? I mean, like that's no excuse. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> it kind of is. No, it is. <laughs> but he was right. He was I, right. I mean, a lot of the FNT guys. Why is this are, a thing? Who cares? Uh, you two. Uh, more, more brought it up for feelings. some reason. Who gives a shit? That yeah, doesn't matter. These are people who pretend that they're really angry with Kathleen Kennedy every day. They're not angry. <laughs> they're happy with her. They love Kathleen. Because when the Marvels comes out, they're going to be there first day. <laughs> they don't front, have real front feelings. Row. They have fake feelings. And they have fake friendships and alliances. And I don't. That's not who I am. So 
Exactly. I don't really yeah. care. Let's just move dude, forward. Dude, they love Kathleen Kennedy. If she ever got fired, they'd be out of jobs. They want her to stay. <laughs> yeah. Complaining yeah. about Kathleen Kennedy is their job. Mm-hmm. All right, let's watch some real feelings. This guy actually right. is upset with me here. Yeah. This is genuine. Okay. He straightens things up. I'm I'm done. He's just he's completely lost it. And yep. for him to for him to I assumed that they messaged each other, these two guys messaged each other and decided, hey, let's get together. And I, I don't understand why Ethan would want to even contact a, a maniac like this guy. He's he's not funny. He's not funny. <laughs> he's a maniac. <laughs> He's not a maniac. He's hilarious. I think he is funny. I think he is I, talented. He's I pretending. Can't, I can't stand people who pretend like they don't get that something is a joke or a piece of entertainment. Dude, dude, Riley literally took a picture at like a Chuck E. Cheese with like one of those old laser guns. He's like, I'm going to bring my laser gun to the warehouse. And they're like, oh, my God, this guy's crazy. Like, dude, kid, are you retarded? Hmm. <laughs> funny. And I, I, I don't I find him funny at all. Back to Eric. I think it's the way that Eric Eric des- describes his detractors to his fans that makes them think it's a, a bigger deal than it actually is. Like, and he says that he's a comedian. He's not. He's not funny at all. There's nothing funny about his videos, his um, his remarks, and you know he and he all he does is just it's hate canons. on the Ripperverse yeah. all the time. And Disagree. even his. Um, He's, he's just a maniac. He's, he's a psychopath. You can All sense the- his pathology in his voice. Well, I did speed it up. So things that he says, like his comebacks and his, like everything that he does, it's not funny. And when he tries to make something offensive, it isn't even offensive. I just, I just confused. Where it's he's not funny at because he's, he's fucking. He's, he's, he's Buffalo Bill. You, your hero. He's so, Buffalo so Bill. So this guy's the arbitrator of funny on the internet. Well, here's the Ethan, other thing. Ethan puts the lotion on his skin <laughs> before he gets the hose again. All right, so so well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I hear yeah. this a lot. You're not a comedian because you're not funny. It's not about whether you think I'm funny or other people think I'm funny. If I am attempting comedy, that makes me a comedian, right? If I'm attempting to be an actor and I'm going out there and auditions and I, maybe my part is little, I'm in a fucking Viagra commercial. I'm still an actor. Right? Just because you don't recognize it or just because you don't accept it doesn't make it not true. You are not the arbiter of reality. In fact, right. that, that renowned, that guy who uh, uh, loves Eric July so much, that renowned channel, yeah. He, he's, yeah, he's like, well, in order for it to be parody, it has to be funny. You're not funny. It's like, uh, no, parody is, he's trying to talk about IP law, which... I'm not a lawyer, but I work in the legal system, and I've had several semesters of IP law. And you don't Lennox have to actually be funny. You just have – I'm a paralegal. So you don't have to actually be funny. You just have to be working to be funny and whether or not – but this guy's like, well, it's not funny, so it's not parody, so you're ripping him off. And it's just like, God, well, I, I yeah. watch this guy's videos, and you really – he should not have a camera or a no. microphone. No. It's actually painful. He's actually hurting Eric July in some ways because it's just... Which is why we love him. Which is why we yeah. love him. But here, here's what I will say right now. We have 127 people watching. This is the highest amount of people ever watching a live stream on this well, channel. It's he, yeah, it's Ethan. No, it's not because of Ethan. It's because of me. Right? Ethan's yeah, just a byproduct too. of me. Uh, so thank fraud. you, guys. Make, make sure fraud. you guys... Uh, Tony, you know video, that's not how it works. Like the video. <laughs> We got we to finish this. Come on, guys. All right. I'm just going to go on and on about it. But anyways, you guys, I'm done with Ethan Ben Skyver. He's he, – I, I only knew him – I only started following him about two years ago. And I only have a handful of comics uh, from him, so I don't – I don't know. Uh, be stern, be great, be the better man. We'll talk to you guys later. Two, Are you upset with you, Ethan? He's loved you for two years, bought your merchandise. Yeah. But now he's done with you because you you took a picture with an an, an influencer. Well, I mean that's was playing that, a uh, prank. Yeah, see that's yeah. that's the whole thing. Like uh, you know, in all seriousness, that's why it was so terrifying to uh, to expose Eric July's text to me because I knew that would be the consequence. Like I don't blame that guy. That guy's like, wait a second, you're not like on our side. Like this is important to him. So uh, you know that sucks. It really sucks. Yeah, you know what's, 
There's well, so many people who want to be a part of something and they're so tribalistic and it's, it doesn't matter what true. side of the fence you are. And it's, it's actually sad at this point. They're all lonely. People they just want, want to be a part of yeah, because like I'm I'm comics gate. I'm putting out a comic, and I know some of you guys might be detractors. Some of you guys might think I'm a I suck because I actually supported Eric July. I bought his comics. I bought T-shirts. Um, I didn't care for his comics as much as I would have liked. I'm sorry to say that. I feel guilty about that. But me saying that, there's going to be people who are going to probably kick me in the nuts, saying that. You know that you didn't. I'm like done with comics. Him. I'm done with him. Um, yeah, me too. I just, um, I, I just, I, I don't think they're very good. Even I've seen Cliff Richards and uh, Gabe El Taib do much better artwork. So this seems very rushed. There's a very blue gray, blue green hue to this thing that just get, makes me feel like I'm in prison. Yeah. And. And I don't, I don't like it. I want to like it. I really do. I support. I bought. Complain about W. About, uh, I don't DC like movies. it. I just don't like it. I don't. I read them. I don't like them. I don't like. I. I like Blood Ruth. Blood. The only character I give a shit about is Blood Ruth. I don't give a shit about Alpha Core. They're just basically recycled Zod and his his crew. And right. these people okay. don't understand that you can buy something. And still have critiques about it. Yeah. Uh, well, well here, here's what I don't understand. This is the trailer they put out, Ethan. You're an artist, right? Yeah. Uh, so first off, how does grass have shadows? Uh, grass has shadows. Words. Over here is this green grass. You can see there's shadows on the lake, and then it turns into the grass, and what? there's shadows. Boy, you're really picking nits on this. That's not picking nits. <laughs> Like you have this taxi, uh, you clearly can see the license plate not finished. So the, the sun is actually above us, like right in front of us, above us, right? Well, I, well, well this where's is the, the light shadow, source? right? Here's the shadow here, but also here's the shadow here, and here's the shadow here. Oh, this so looks point, great. Point and they're the buildings source. that are they're buildings that are casting shadows on each other. It's a, it's okay. It's fine. I think it looks good. Also, you're, you got, you're picking you nits. Two suns in Florida Park. <laughs> Maybe there are. I don't. Yeah, it's Tatooine. Yeah. Well, here's the trailer. I put this on, right. so you can uh, anytime you want me to stop it, just let me know. No, I don't. I don't have a problem with that. Not so. you. <laughs> let me see there. I love you, Tony. Hi, Tony. <laughs> You're an asshole, vision. but I love you. Oh, that looks great. He flies away. That's a, a lot of a lot of time spent on that pigeon. Well, uh, Eric July tweeted out that the pigeon is important. Oh. I think my, my uh, assumption is that the pigeon is going to be revealed to be that Dakuman character that's like tracking all the accepts. Oh, sure. Rewind it just a second because what happened there. Now, I want you to watch the pigeon go into that, what you would think is like an enormous structure, right? Yeah. Okay, so if the uh, structure is enormous, the pigeon should take a long time to get. Look at that! Boom! <laughs> that structure is about Look. the size of a gumball machine, according to the pigeon. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very fast pigeon. Yeah, super fast. Wait, back it up just so you see the pigeon go right behind it, so you can see for scale how big that pigeon is. Oh my God! You see what I'm saying? Well, apparently he poached some really high talent artists. Yeah, he did. Oh, look, see that? Oh, they just disappeared. It just got sucked in. Yeah. Well, maybe it did. Maybe there's like a little vacuum right it's there. It's a tractor beam. It's the Death Star. Right there. So that you can see how big that thing is. It's not very Oops. big. Yeah, yeah the pitch is dive bombing it. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, the, right. the bird was supposed to get a lot smaller. Yeah. So this, uh, this drawing of this character here, yeah, is completely different from every other promotional art for the character. What? Yeah, he has this beard. This, this, uh, it's in none of the promotional art does he have this beard? That's a beard. That's a yeah, beard. Cool. I thought he just had like a three chins. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. It can't be oh, done. Oh, that looks cool. You can't deny that. It, 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 it does, but uh, like I said, I it looks different. The original yeah. design of the guy. The, the guy's design is completely different. That's why it's like, why would you sign off on that? That looks like, like 90s DC animation. Yeah. 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 I said this oh. is an Alpha Core thing, right? Why is why are they showing this? This has nothing to do with Oh, Ethan, you're very familiar with this with this scene. Yeah, that's uh that's the cave scene. Uh that's uh Isom number two. That's great. So he got he got to I wonder what all this means. Like I wonder if he says just animate this little thing, this little clip from the comic. That's good to see that. All right, let it, let it play. Okay. That's it. 25 seconds. Teaser. Full trailer comes out on the 6th. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm nailed to my seat. Well, it's good that we spent so much time on the bird. Yeah, yeah the like... bird really took up a lot of time. It was nice and cinematic, but you know what? Like, not when yeah. it was half of the trailer. You know? Well, to be fair, it's a teaser of a trailer. The full trailer right. comes out on right. the 6th. Yeah. So let me know. let me ask Ethan, what's your favorite character in the ISOM universe so far? <laughs> like who who do you who do you care about the most? Or I care about them all equally, you know. He's managed to make me care about all these characters exactly the same. Okay. And, uh, Which is a great quality. I get it. I get yeah. it. Ethan Van Scabber is for equality, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, so what else are we gonna go over? He cares just as much about blood roof as he cares about Ison's niece. See, well, that's yeah, that's true. Uh, would would you ever sign off on one of your employees arguing with fans on a Reddit? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll pay him extra uh, to go after uh, <laughs> go after my detractors all day long. Go after IG hey, Mars. These ain't even detractors. These are uh, fans. It says what you. Who's your favorite villain so far? So the image is. Hmm. Um, so I get it. Oh, look at yeah. that. Uh, it's from the official Ripperverse comics. Villains help not only drive a story forward, but also help mold their respective heroes through trial and fire. Which Ripperverse baddies have piqued your interest so far? And what sort are you looking forward to seeing in the future? Let us know below. So you can see you got Chadron, you got Santuan. Santuan looks way bigger. Yeah, they're it's doing the Fist of the North Star thing where they're. So here's yeah. the thing that uh, what we have to ask ourselves. Let's get serious about this for a minute. Okay. So this is this is the thing. What Eric July has done, and it's very interesting, is he's revealed that the name Isom came from his great great grandfather. Right. Great 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 great. Right. <laughs> Couldn't be any great. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just had to throw that in. I'm so sorry. his name is Isom Knox, and if you read. If you read his tombstone, it, it reveals why Isom wears a cross uh, on his belt. His tombstone says he died the way he lived, the Christian. So that is why I, I posit that this is Eric July's thinking. The reason why he wears a cross on his belt is because he doesn't wear it around his neck. He's a Christian, and he died the way that he lived. So my question is, who is Shadron? Who, what is Shadron? Like, who is that? That's a family name, or that's the real, that's the name of somebody who hurt his father or his great 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 grand, grandfather, whatever. Uh, all of this is uh, about Eric's family. So, what do these names mean? Who is Santuan? Who are these people? Maybe and that's what is the Eric slave trying master. to say? Uh, you know, the Eric's uh, the, the whole thing about why did uh, oh God, why did Isom quit? You know, um, because of uh, a girl that got hurt or killed or something like that on his watch. Isn't that kind of based on some reality in Eric's life? Yeah, we already yep. went over that. The nightclub where his so friend. All of this, well, all of this is analogous in some way to people in Eric's life or his family history. So, who was Santuan? Who was Chadron? Um, is Chadron one of the guys at the uh, that was involved in that scenario in that situation? Possibly, I believe so. All right, so th this is the question that was posited. So these are the answers that came in. Let's go with uh, old. All right, so uh, anybody do, do research and find out. 
and and by the way, I have no idea who my great 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 grandfather is. <laughs> and if you go to when I release my comic, if you go to his grave and find we'll give out, us five bucks, we'll you're, get a discount. You're, you're, you're more than you. Know, he might enjoy the shit, and if you want to put pleasures <laughs> on it, he he might actually enjoy the technology and plushies because they probably didn't have them back then. I really don't give a shit about my family tree, and none of it came from my family tree of my comics. So I'm just letting you know. If you want to like stick piss on my grandfather's grave, go right the fuck ahead. I don't give a fuck because I'm never going back to Minnesota. Period. Well, here's a question. Here's a serious question. Where do you get your names from, if not plagiarized from your family? Well, like my name, my main character's name is Bane, B-A-I-N, and that is Gaelic for pale. And his last name is Spectre, which is Ghost. And then there's Malchus, and his original name was Morb. And there's that. These are role-playing characters I came up with from playing uh, AOL Play by whoa, post whoa, whoa. games and we're, we're, we're getting close to shilling again. Come on. <laughs> yeah, so these are these are characters I came up with and names I came up with. And uh the first so shilling is free, it's five ninety nine after the second shilling. Right. So they're all they're all so you can you know whatever. Wait till I'm dead and then piss on my grave and, and have plushies uh you know, all you, right. No one's pissing on anyone's graves. Uh, we got, we got. Lots I of mean, the, the, God, who gives it? I, I have no fucking idea about my family history, and I really don't give a shit. So, I, I don't understand this pearl clutching of. <laughs> well, he does. He does care more. So he's making it clear that that is important to him. That's it's different than how you feel. That's okay. Okay, okay, and I appreciate. It. I respect that. I respect that. But I well, don't. Well, he didn't get, get you to agree from. to anything, Kenny. <laughs> what you 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 were gung ho like oh this doesn't matter no Ethan I goes, respect Ethan you, goes, but well, the fact well, of the he, matter he he, he, he kind of cares like, oh you know what Ethan, no, well the fact of the matter right. is is that the guy didn't desecrate his I mean people are talking about like he did something terrible he just took a picture there with some plushies I mean yeah, come we on know that. we went we went over that like two weeks ago come on you're yeah me. so you're let's you're let's not get too like. Been out of shape here. He didn't dig the guy up, or oh my god, come on! Yeah. All right, can we just let's let's go on let's with go this? Ahead, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, a dude in process says Santuan gives me anti-hero or anti-villain. What the hell's an anti-villain? Never heard this term before. I've never heard that either. Uh, Vine, <laughs> in my in my opinion, although he was on Darren Fontaine's side, he an anti-villain is just a hero. Yeah, <laughs> he wasn't actually he wasn't acting like an actual villain. He was just there do, doing his job and was only being an antagonist or obstacle in Isom's way. And he checked Darren Fontaine when he tried to go beyond the agreement contract. So yeah, on the photo, Sant. Wow, does anyone know how to use punctuation? No, Santuan is the one that caught my attention because I feel that texting is there. ruining our lives. Now to the characters that are definitely villains to me. The Hellions sound more interesting than Chadron. And Darren Fontaine, I think we may learn more about this universe and then the different realms and factions starting with them. Uh, different realms are like different universes, but not really, so it's okay, I guess. Uh, I want to see a villain character that is bad, but he's also deep and not superficial character through his acts. We can learn some aspects of life similar to anime villains. And I also want to see a villain that starts as a joke, but later he grows up to be a real menace. If he doesn't get dealt with ASAP, he might cause serious damages. Wow. And Eric's uh, fans Yaira are... Yeah, kind of like Darth Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, uh, I, I I read both books and I was not interested mm -hmm. in any of the villains. Even the Hellions were just like, oh, they're just generic hell monkeys. Like, who cares? There's nothing interesting about that. I, and again, I think this is from the fact that I've read way too many comics, watched way too many movies, played too many games, right? Uh, a lot of other people, this is their first experience in the comics, so maybe it's yeah. interesting to them because they yes. know. Why didn't that guy have Darren there? Why did he have Santa? <laughs> I, I don't know. That's like what the Darren's Riververse clearly... point should have been in this list. <laughs> but, but but we'll get to that because someone's going to bring it up. I, I right thought here. the fight at the end was good, though. I, mm -hmm. I liked the fight at the end, but it was just getting to it. It jumped around so much. I think there was too much attempt to wor world build instead of character development develop if that makes sense yeah all right so jedi bugs and this is where we're going to get into the good stuff he says our choices are a bouncer a strong creature that kills for no discernible reason at all and demon howler monkeys 
The answer is none. <laughs> none have piqued my interest because none of them are anything more than a collection of muscles to put in Isom's way. They have no defined motivation for the things they do. No goal to achieve that Isom is in the way of or that is counter to Isom's goals. Two of these three are literally just henchmen. Now, I imagine that there is a goal with at least one of these, and we just haven't been given it. But knowing the bad guy's goal is pretty fucking important. As it is, two of the three have attacked for seemingly no reason, and with the third, Isom was the aggressor. Damn, this post literally just called out the important role of villains and then asked readers to think about these characters within that context, which has made me realize how fucking trash they all are. Oops. And this is where Sheep City and what, he was an what employee. Are the, what are the motivate? Does anybody, I can't remember the comics that well. Does anybody know the motivations for the fact that they don't remember says something? <laughs> there is no motivations. No, there, there literally is nothing. Well, the disrespect. Yeah. No, but not for the bad guys. Uh, the Hell Monkey <laughs> show up. The, the, the Hell Monkey <laughs> show up. <laughs> That's all the disrespect is his kryptonite. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I'll mute myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the Hell Monkeys show up. They attack Isom. Uh, they fuck off. He goes after them, and that's it. There's no motivation. We don't even know why. They're just like, we've underestimated him. But why did you estimate him in the beginning? What was the whole point? <laughs> Tell us that. How hard is it? <laughs> but anyway, so Sheep Sidian, who is an employee of the Rookers, he chimes in. You have a club owner who runs illegal activities and has conflict with Avery because he's interfering with his business. Okay, in what way did Avery interfere with his business? He went in and beat up some people <laughs> at his club, and that was literally it. And it was literally because Darren disrespected him, right? If Darren just said, okay, I don't know where Jasmine's at, Avery would uh, Avery would have just fucked off, and that would have been the end of it, right? He's not, like, superheroing and stopping – uh, you know, employees, or he, oh shit, he broke up my drug ring, or oh shit, he broke up my dog fighting ring. Like, Isom's literally done nothing. Uh, a merc for a hire who has a history with Avery that's yet to be fleshed out. Well, I mean, fleshing it out a little bit might be uh, a way for people to be interested in the character, but just saying, oh, these two have a history, so be interested. A creature that killed a woman because she reminded it of someone it knows. That's never said in the book. We literally do not know. That's you, as an employee of Ripperverse, giving a character a motivation that the books do not give it. I don't remember that. And also, is the purpose of Avery retiring? And demonic entities that kidnapped and branded Avery's friend. Uh, it's one thing to say you haven't found one that piques your interest. And it's another to say that they don't have motives. Antagonists don't need to have their whole plan laid out immediately. Uh, they didn't have any of their plan laid out. What is Darren doing? Well, he's runs illegal activity. Okay, which illegal activity? Is he a drug dealer? Is he uh, running women? Is he a fucking running numbers? Whatever. Yeah, yeah, blackmail. Does he, you know, corrupt city councilmen work for him? Uh, is he smuggling things in or out of the city? Uh, you know, Texas is an independent. Choose your own motivation. Nation, right? Texas is independent, <laughs> so it could they be. Are, they are a border. They are a border nation. So yeah. You, you could say that he's running something from you know outside of Texas into Texas or something from inside of Texas into outside of Texas, right? We don't know. We literally don't fucking know. Maybe he's taking stuff from Mexico and running it into the United States through Texas. Right? That would be a good story storyline. But none of that's in the book. Yep. Ethan, and look at all the mental gymnastics uh, the <laughs> Sheep City uh, is having to perform. You read it. Did, did any of the characters, any of the villains, pique your interest out of Isom one or two? Um, Ethan loves it. Uh, I mean, I'm. I, I want to know. Uh, oh man, what love is? Uh, no, I mean, not really. I, I think that. Um, that's uh, yeah. I think that's one of the problems with the book. I, I don't feel like. Uh, I think my my main interest is uh, in Isom because I, I haven't really come to understand what he's about yet, and so it's hard for me to care about his villains. You, know, you understand, like yeah. I, it's like yeah, the, exactly. the the main issue is uh, until I care about Spider Man, like I'm like, what is this dude doing? What is he? Why is he doing what he's doing? Oh, I get it. I understand Spider Man. 
Now I'm like, fuck you, Green Goblin. You know? Now I'm like, fuck you, Scorpion. Fuck you, Vulture. You know? Uh, fuck you, uh, uh, Miles Morales. Because we are <laughs> like enemies of uh, Spider-Man. Miles so, is an enemy of Spider-Man? I mean, to be yeah. honest, it, it, I I don't know why I care more, more about Blood Ruth, except that as a kid, to me, comics were like what the character could do and how they looked. And I think Blood Ruth, obviously, she's derivative from Solomon Kane, you know, it, like whatever. But it looks cool and she has some cool powers. And that kind of gravitated me more towards her than anything of Isom. And it seems like every character spoke in the same voice. And that's something as a writer I kind of came across and I had to have my my story yeah. editor kick me in the yeah. ass and said, look, you have Bane sounding like Malchus and Malchus sounding like mm-hmm. Zeth and what the fuck. And sometimes you get in your own head when you're writing multiple characters and you have to fix that. And I don't think they fixed that here. And you have the characters is very one note, but it seems like with uh, Blood Ruth, there was a different note. And for some reason, her powers and her outfit and her attitude, and there was a charisma about her that Isom still doesn't have. So there's a diamond in the rough there, but I don't think he's going to pick on it because that's it. I I give a fuck about blood eating or good eating or whatever. (laughs) Fucking famous. <laughs> Fuck that guy. If you're gonna dude, clip oh, that guy. Hey, but he's a he's a polymath. He's a I polymath. give a shit. I don't nobody <laughs> give a shit because <laughs> nobody <laughs> cares about him. Put him on a blood root book now. Today. Right the fuck yeah. now. Uh, now uh, uh, get rid goodying. Nobody okay, gives a okay, shit okay, about more, him. More, more. Calm down. Yep. Get him, get him uh, so Ethan, they wanted me to ask you this question. What's the okay. best criticism you've gotten from Cyberfrog, and how did you apply it going forward? Uh, best criticism that I got from Cyberfrog, I got a lot of criticisms that were really helpful about uh, uh, about writing the, uh, uh, you know, like, oh boy, that's a tough question. I know that this was something that Eric got too. I got a lot of criticism that was extremely helpful, but. Uh, Okay, mm-hmm. uh, let me ask you the question. Which Literature criticism devil did, did no, no, hold a sec, hold sec. Which, which criticism actually made you realize it's more profound than everything else? Um, Mike Partika is cursing your name right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I I think that uh, I think that. One of the things that people, uh, uh, oh, mo- character motivation is like a, a, a such an important thing. Uh, people asking me why Cyberfrog is doing what he's doing, and that's still a criticism that rings around in my head because right now he's doing what he's doing because he has he's he was created to do it, and his mother told him to do it, and that just isn't really enough. And then it's he meets Heather Swain, and he realizes that. You know, um, no, I really do care about human beings because I like Heather. I, you know, I like Lily. I, I love this uh, community that I'm discovering, and so I want to help these people. I feel motivated, but it's still not enough. Like there still has to be another thing that makes Cyberfrog another incentive that makes him realize that, that he's got to risk everything that he has, uh, which is and his I'll- own life, in order to fight uh, these enormous odds. And that, to me, like that's a that's an important criticism that I have received, and I've taken that to to heart. Like, all right, how do we, how, you know, how do we build the stakes so that Cyberfrog has no choice uh, but to do what he's doing? See, I mean, the thing about you know writing um, these characters is that y- you establish what their motivations are, and then they have to act based on you know what you've established about them. The, the reason why Heather behaves the way she behaves, Lily behaves the way she behaves, all the characters in the book are acting because they're real people who have motivations that I've explained to you. So I, I don't, I can't just say I need Lily to do this to move the story the way I need it to happen. No, Lily makes her own choices because we've established that she's really lonely without her father. Her life is incomplete without her dad. And she thinks that she is responsible for his leaving and can 
bring him back somehow. And it's never going to be the same for her. Her life is never going to be able to continue um, without her father returning to the village. So we know that. And because we know that that's what Lily's primary motivation is and what she thinks about every single day, Lily is going to make choices and have actions based on that. So, I, you know, one of the criticisms that I think, uh, one of the most profound criticisms um, uh, that I received is to uh, define your character's motivations early. Explain to the reader explicitly why your characters are doing what they're doing. What do they want? You know, what are they willing to sacrifice to get, uh, you know, to get what it is that they want? And then the story will kind of happen. You you can be true to uh, you know what their what their goals are, um, and that's one of the problems that I have with uh, with Isom. And I told Eric this early on. I said I don't know what he wants. I think he wants to be left alone. So why is he motivated to do what he's doing? Uh, pr pride hurt pride hurt ego uh, is not a heroic reason to uh, to do anything really. I, I mean it's something that we can relate to, I guess. Um, but what else? Like, what else is going on there? Uh, you really want people to kind of, uh, it's not a reason for us to root for them. And the thing about it is, is that, you know, um, you can root for a negative character. Like when you're watching The Sopranos, Tony Soprano is clearly an <laughs> evil man, uh, but yeah. you're rooting for him. You, you know what he's doing. He does bad things. You know who he is. He's not a nice guy, but you're rooting for him to win anyway. You don't want him yeah, to get a room. The FBI we, we comes from like, therapy. Yeah, we see, yeah, him, yeah, we see him taking care of the duck. Right. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't watch that shit. It was, it's a really good show, Tony. It's the best show ever made, and you would really like it. But that's the trick of the, a show like that. It's the trick of a show like Breaking Bad, where you're rooting for somebody who, uh, who is going to hell, and you want them to win anyway. You yeah, know, it's, uh, it's really good. The same people who made Sopranos oh, made one of my favorite shows, uh, Boardwalk Empire. Empire. It's the same thing. Yeah, uh, Finbar says. So, best, so no, said, hold on, hold on. Okay. The best criticism ahead. I can give EVS about Cyberfrog is how come Finbar didn't get a bunch of free Cyberfrog shit. <laughs> That's a good uh, question. <laughs> fin That's a profound one of our criticism. <laughs> so, uh, would you like to see how Eric July answered that question, or have you already watched that video, Ethan? Oh, I have not watched that video. I, I heard that he was asking that question. Though. Can I just? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Then I'm going to open it up and we'll see what other, some of the folks who are on the live chat have. But uh, what's the best criticism you've gotten from ISOM 1 and how did you apply it, if, if any, to you know your ongoing work? Yeah, uh, I think the one that uh, got me, and I will say, I will credit Chuck for this. Um, you know, there are certain things, and Chuck Dixon that is. Because uh, and the first bit I got of this is actually coming out of, out of another story, and then applying that to kind of uh, Isom one. So, what what other story did Eric work on that you're aware of, Ethan? I don't know. Because he said he got it from another story, but then he applied it to Isom one. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the way he approaches storytelling is like, yeah, you can have this layout and, you know, draft or whatever, you know, you kind of where that you want to take the story. But even if it's such a small, rather, even if it seems kind of insignificant thing um, that that needs to be either number one, expanded on or completely swapped out. There's no like sacrifice there. You don't just kind of run with it. It's like, hey, OK, here's this thing here. I can't make this make sense. Let's try to make it make sense. And maybe we just change out. It could be something as minor as a, a simple motivation for, for a particular character. It's called character uh, and I'm not saying minor like motivations minor. I'm saying like a, a minor like, OK, this character, you could get to the, that end game, right, of what this this is how the character is acting out on that motivation. Right. But it is very important on that middle part and like how they're getting that, that vehicle. Oh, apparently that noise was coming from the video and not from Extra Hero earlier. So it's not from me. No, no, it's from the video. That same we played this <laughs> earlier and we thought it was Extra Hero. Is somebody hey, banging, so, their, so, banging their head against a wall? No, that's not a fire alarm. No, it's you probably will. the water. So if it's there was one thing that I would have <laughs> changed, uh, probably uh, not necessarily changed, but I probably would have added to the page count. I some two was 112 pages. 
I saw one, it easily could have been that. It was that conflict that happened uh, between Alphacore uh, and, 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 and Yairo. Uh, I, what I... So, so yeah, far... Really, it's not it's the sad. number of pages, for fuck's sake. So, so far, uh, has, has Eric handled this question well? I think he handled it as well as I did, because it's like... Uh, <laughs> You know, it's like, what's the best criticism? I, it's like, oh, shit, I don't know. I'm not. But you know what? I'm going to amend my answer and say uh, the best criticism that I got is clarity. Always be more, like, vividly clear about everything that's going on in your story. So that Actually, uh, Ethan, Ethan, can I talk to you man to man? Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I bought uh, Blood Honey. I love the art. But I just didn't feel a real connection to Cyberfrog because I really didn't know his powers or what he could do. And there wasn't a lot of dialogue from him. So I could really know his personality. And then, of course, you know, things happen. And in, but then in Wreck Planet, I really got to know Cyberfrog because I got to really, there was more dialogue from him. There's more interaction between him and, and Heather. And then I got to see him really kick ass and see what he can do. And again, as somebody who's a fan of comic books, that's what we like to see is the, the powers in the, the, and, and I realize that cyber frog really has a lot of like Spider-Man and, and Deadpool in a smart ass. Oh, Morb, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. But let's not, I mean, that's, let's get back to uh, this. People aren't, uh, they're in the audience. They're not and, here to listen to this. And I, and I fell in love with, uh, oh. with Wreck Planet. I, and the, I'm a fan for life. I mean, it, that you, hooked me, you know, Fantastic. so I appreciate you. Thank you. I w what I would have done was probably added a couple of more pages to have that. Yeah, we're picking up where we left off at some point with that with that story. But I think I saw one could have used just a tad bit more per more perspective for those characters, especially with with them being the next book. It is that we're we're kind of coming out with what I would have done if changed, uh, uh, if any, was you had. So uh, I'll ask you this, Ethan, uh, do you, what do you think it's a smart move? Or a bad move that he already planned Alpha Core to be the next book rather than saying, okay, well, here's a bunch of characters. Let's see how the audience reacts to all of them and then go from there. Um, yeah, I think you can slow down a little bit. I, I don't, I, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know or care, Tony. I got to be honest with you. I don't care about Alpha Core. I don't care about Isom. I, I don't care uh, if he launches a million books or zero books. It's just, you know. Uh, take it at your own pace. Do whatever you want to do. I, I don't have better advice for him about rolling out these characters. Um, I you know Alpha Core is uh, it's either going to sell or it isn't. I think his best bet is Yaira, I guess, because Yaira's a chick. That book he does, is he does have Chuck Dixon, and Chuck Dixon is right in Alpha Core, and that that is a selling point. I mean, Chuck Dixon is a damn. I, I don't think it is again. And I'm saying this as someone who doesn't care about whose name is on books, right? I don't think Eric's fans really know who Chuck Dixon is, other than Eric told them it was a good writer. I, uh, I think I, I got to agree with you. I, I think that the selling point of Eric July's books is Eric July. Um, yeah. And, and uh, you know, I, I don't I – can I just say, I don't understand what – like uh, – so what you is know, the point of it. putting it? You're just putting out comics. You're, you're just hiring people and putting out. You're hiring people to draw the comics that that you thought up. I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I guess I don't know. I, I think that people are really close to uh, Eric and they want to support whatever it is that Eric is doing. And and I I don't know. I don't know what anybody's motivation is here. I don't know why Chuck Dixon is doing this except for. Uh, you it's know, paycheck. it's a paycheck. I don't, you know, I don't know like what, why Eric would even want to publish Chuck Dixon, like, and no, no offense to Chuck Dixon, but, but what, for what reason? Like, this is supposed to be your comic universe and, and you're just the writer. Like you can write all this stuff. Can't you? I mean, how long does it take you to write a book? I mean, I, I have a suggestion. You should be the one writing this Yeah, hold on a second. to I keep have it a consistent. Go, go ahead, George. Uh, quality by association. It's it's the it's simple it's the simplest uh, business move you can do. Yeah, I guess. Well, yeah, he he actually already uses this because 
uh, from time to time, Eric will say things like, like Chuck Dixon told me I'm a good writer. So, <laughs> but, well, if you know anything, George, Eric July is actually on the same level as Chuck Dixon. He could literally <laughs> switch names on the books. Eric said this. And he could put oh, yeah. Chuck's name on his work and his name on Chuck's work. And you guys wouldn't even realize it because his work is that good. I thought, I thought these guys were fucking me. Uh, and and the, the fact that he that. only listens to Chuck Dixon is just, God. It, I mean, again, my comic went through five drafts. I had story editors kicking me in the nuts, telling me what a piece of shit this was or what, what did make sense. And I, I took it. And I fixed it before I even got it to art. And Hopefully. that's what you need. And I'm not seeing that with any of this universe. And Chuck Dixon is a great writer, but he's not. You need multiple eyes looking at your work because people can miss something. Wait, yeah. hold, on, hold on a sec. I, I, I do have a question. Ethan, uh, even though Chuck Dixon is a great writer and all that stuff, am I wrong in the assumption that the editor – the people that oversee the book would actually pick up on um, issues in the writing or in the char characterization and scenes and stuff like that. That's I don't know. Job. That's her job. Are there editors? Yeah, there's editors. There's several. Uh, so let me ask you this, Ethan. Even more important, if Eric July hired you to write a book, would you be comfortable with him editing your work? Uh, I don't, I mean, no, I, I don't No, I, man. I, these are like, I, you know, because I, he, I'm asking you this because he literally has said when they ask him, how do you get better? He goes, I edit Chuck Dixon's work. Yeah. But if he paid for it, I don't really care what he does with it. You know what I mean? Like the, the thing is you're in a work for hire scenario. Uh, you know, Chuck Dixon is, uh, is turning in a script that he hopes is acceptable to Eric July. He's a professional in that way. And if Eric July wants to make changes, then you know that's on him. He's allowed he to. He owns do that. it. He owns it. Well, he is. But Am, is he know. comfortable with it? I mean, is Chuck Dixon like? Is this like, you know, uh, Chuck Dixon's masterpiece? Is this is Citizen Kane? It's a work for hire script for uh, Eric July's Ripperverse. I'm sure he's perfectly okay with Eric doing whatever he wants to do with it. You know. If I'm gonna put my name on something, I'm not gonna let someone. Yeah, else. I'm with you, Tony. I, I would not want Eric editing mercenary guild i have my editors who i rely on i've i've seen the work i would not want him editing my work all right let's, let's, let's go on. at that that conflict that they had with yaira i would have spelled that out maybe a little bit more uh with with her getting knocked down the block right that way it's more easily explained uh because she runs in the ice um because of that uh so i would have probably shown that i would have probably shown that if i added pages uh, but I also would have had knocking that, people uh, around the love city. to have some uh, another kind of interaction there. Uh, when Brian tells her, "Hey, you know, you, you were told not to return," so it, it's more adding addition to the adding addition. I love that line. That so I could kind of give perspective. It doesn't need much. It does. I wouldn't have had to need, need like five, ten pages. Even a couple, I think, would have given a little bit more perspective. But that's the thing about this industry is that you're trying. You don't want to have fluff, right? So that was one of the things that I was always afraid of. I was like, hey, with the first book, like, okay, I don't want to spend too much time doing this. Uh, I, I need to get kind of get kind of to the point. So it's that balance of you don't want to give too much, but you also don't want to give. Uh, too little. So if there was anything, I don't want to say change. I don't necessarily regret it. And yeah, we could pick up where we where we left off. But just to give more perspective on that conflict between the Alpha Core and Yaira, definitely setting up the next books. I would have would have added just a couple of more pages uh, there for sure. Cool. That's actually a good point by Eric, and I actually support that because you you sometimes got to go between fluff or because everything costs money, the art and everything else, it does cost money, the lettering. And so what is fluff? What isn't? And that's why you need a good editor. And I don't think he had one, but adding those pages may have, may have helped him out. But I understand his mindset of trying to keep things concise and get to the getting and not let things drag too much. Yeah, he really kept it concise with like a 90 page book. <laughs> Very concise. I don't. Th I don't feel like he actually answered the question because I don't know what it was the criticism that he got. 
He, he just did. said, hey, this is what I would have done differently. But that, that's not the criticism, right? Like, well, I think the, he answered, the, he answered, answered. the best criticism that he received was from Dick Masterson. And he didn't listen to it. It was excellent criticism. There were Actually, great liter stories. Literature notes. devil. Thank you for talking that. over me four times, more. I know your eye. I'm sorry. Please <laughs> let me finish your thoughts. Okay. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, Literature Devil actually did a very good critique of uh, Ice on One, and you should check out that video. Literature Devil, you can. I, I, I checked that video out, and it's literally the same things that I said, just in a nicer tone. That's correct. Yeah, I mean, Literature Devil is excellent. It really is great. Moronic Opinions did a very good good review. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, but you know he's evil, so that doesn't. It's happen. all unpleasant. I mean, when you're when you're not ready yet, when you're an amateur, none of the criticism that you receive is going to be anything you're going to want to repeat because it's all painful. It all mm. sucks. You know, it's like so asking somebody like Eric July right now, like, what's the best criticism you've repeated or you've heard? Isn't he's not going to? If he's actually listening to criticism, none of it is going to be anything he's going to want to spit back out at you because it it's like, well, what is it? Uh. Well, my story, my characters don't have any motivations. Uh, the, you know, uh, the hero isn't behaving like a hero. We don't know anything about him. It's like there's uh, every aspect of this is unclear. And uh, I, I don't get like nobody really understood it. So uh, like those are like like those are the criticisms of Ice on number one. But it, it's no big deal because it's his first comic book. And as I said, it's like it's a good starting point. You've got to, you know, you got to take a first hack at it. You can't just, uh, you know, uh, here's another fucking phone. I, I appreciate that, Ethan. But then I look at somebody like Raging Golden Eagle who came out with Blade Devil and he knocked it out of the park with his first uh, thing. And it was a manga inspired book. And he's an American or. I don't know. He sounds halfway American. Um, <laughs> yeah, but his book and, has and a bunch of little it. kids. He absolutely crushed it with Blade Devil. Yeah, yeah, and, no, uh, no, no, no. There has like nine-year-old looking girls that are half naked and he sells wife from pillars of them. Uh, if well, this isn't Dane, I swear to God, I'm going to kick somebody. Okay, in. okay, you know, but anyways. The, no, hold, hold on. Is this Dane? Do... Dane, is this you? Um, this... Just go ahead and email me. No. There's no possible way <laughs> Dane would come in here with me. I, I tried to speak with him a thousand times. He's terrified of me, and I don't understand why. I don't know who this idiot is that keeps coming in. Look, well, he just left. It, it was funny the first time you did it. Okay, I can't ban you because then everyone has to log in in order to get backstage. Stop being a jackass. It's not funny. It's derailing the stream. You're not helping. You're not helping Eric. You're not helping us. So I, I got to go. I think I'm going to get back to work, but I appreciate Tony. Thanks for uh, having me on. I appreciate no, no uh, all you guys. Have a great night. Uh, if I, Morb yeah. is outside your uh, thing, you know, just call the cops. <laughs> okay. <Take care. laughs> I will be there. Trust me. <laughs> all right. Let's get back to this. All right. So where do we leave off? All right. So uh, antagonists don't need to have their whole plan laid out immediately. Not to mention, antagonists might encounter an evil greater than themselves. What the hell? When do you try to eat your mic or what? <laughs> an evil greater than themselves and have to pivot for their own survival. What we have in two books are antagonists that have clear interests in their own prosperity for different reasons. Uh, Eric has said on multiple occasions that world building will be a slow burn and that he will not be doing any hand-holding for readers. If you would rather have the story spoon-fed to you, that's fine, but your critique is disingenuous. First off, how can you call his critique disingenuous? You're basically saying he's lying. He said what well, he said. Unless it, unless it comes from Chuck Dixon, and that's the problem. You have to be somebody in order to critique him. I don't even think Ethan could legitimately critique him because Eric outsold Ethan, so therefore... You know, my dick's bigger, and it, it it's just ridiculous. It's it's like there are problems in your story. I'm eagerly awaiting the Liberty Safe portion of the show. We don't we don't have sponsors from Liberty Safe yet. Uh, Do we you. actually know how many comics Ethan has sold? No idea. I never looked into it. Well, he his first uh, his first crowdfund went for like 1.5 million, and then it's uh, I think. Got nearly two for a second one, but again, 
crowdfund is just that. But then, you know, he had the eBay store up and that's where I bought uh, Blood Honey. So I wasn't yeah. on that crowdfund stat. So uh, he's probably sold, you know, probably four million. Who knows how many toys and hats and bullshit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Extra hero. You're big time now. Did you see this? Yep. Uh, he made it into the detractors club. Uh, Full 3D animated extra hero. Look at this. Just like Ethan. I mean, uh, Eric's probably sold four million. Wow. Of, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, who cares about that stuff? Personal. It's more important. That's extra so hero's got a 3D animated yeah. avatar. Look at that. From the uh, legend like, himself. Thanks, whoever did that. Himself. That suits yourself. Reminds me of like yep. Jackson Five days. I can dig it. That is time, <laughs> man. And we got another one. Hold on. Since, since we're here, we might as well show the other one. Right? Thank uh, you. Earth, wind, and fire, man. This is TJ Laser. Look at that. Hell yeah. Look at this. Oh. Even got this the hair. Right. This is amazing. I, mean, I look forward to whatever it is you're going to do, whatever weird things you're going to do with their avatar. Oh, there was one There was one masterpiece he made that's like uh, Mahler. And uh, Nerd Roddick and uh, what's his name? Critical Drinker have their heads up each other's asses and they're spinning around. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking art that was. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. <laughs> this is better than any big booty dragon. All right, let's get back to the who's your favorite villain. Uh, yeah, important things to do. Uh, now that we've uh, gotten rid of Ethan de derailing this whole stream. Uh, Finbar can't get it 3D. Uh, Finbar says, where the fuck's my 3D thing? You can't. That's a trademark thing. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, Jedi Bug says, first, the Ripperverse post neglected to include Darren in their post, so I didn't address him. But if you'd like me to, sure. He's one-dimensional, generic crime boss with absolutely nothing that sets him apart from similar characters that are used as bad guy fodder in tons of other comics. He's incredibly underwhelming, and his past with Avery... While probably the absolute best piece of writing in these two issues is also incredibly basic and does nothing to heighten my interest. But I don't question his motivation. Those are clear. Self-defense from a deranged man-child who can't stand to be disrespected. Uh, I'm wondering where on earth you came up with Chandron's motivation of the girl reminding you of someone. Did you just, quote, invent that? Because it's certainly not present in the issue. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're talking about that nerd kid saying that he... That, uh, she looked like a character from a particular comic book, in which case I think you're reading comprehension skills. As for the Hellions, do you think that what you listed is a motivation? Because what you listed was just their actions. And I'm not wanting a story spoon-fed to me. All I want is something that appears to be in any way to be a story, rather than a jumble of events happening with no seeming rhyme or reason. Like, I see what July thinks he's doing, but he's not. He's not building intrigue or planning mysteries. He's just having stuff happen, and the only way to get any indication at all that there is any sort of plan to pay off is to watch his stupid YouTube rant rantings. That's not how storytelling works. Real question for you. Other than Iceland, do you actually read comics? I don't think he even knows that Sheep Sidian is an employee. Uh, he just doesn't have an editor. He doesn't have a story editor. Yeah, I don't even think a story editor would be brave enough to criticize him or you know, I'm going to bust your ass or something like because his ice on two jumps around so much. He's trying to build this world. He's trying to introduce all these characters. And yet we don't yeah, give like a shit about, about ice on. We yeah, still don't happens. care about ice on. I don't care about any of them. Ice on and stuff happens. The book. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's Isom see how just a tool. Uh, let's see how sheep city and responding. Uh, it's like you read the book specifically to shine a negative light on them. Now he's questioning why he read the books or what's going on. The first book boils down to a man who helps out his family against his better judgment, um, gets pummeled on, and returns to the scene to confront the enemy. His pride getting in his way is a believable flaw. In the second book, he returns home and is now on the defense against some creatures that kidnapped his second-in-command. Uh, Sam is his second-in-command. There's like a chain of command when you're farmers. Is there? Yeah, yeah sure. Why not? <laughs> Command. Uh, I would. I would just be like, he's his employee, right? He's like, he's the farm manager or whatever. Like, yeah, you really never get a sense of that in the book. Of, and is tasked with going on a rescue mission. He's not really tasked with it. He takes it upon himself, right? Yeah. 
other things happen with other characters for the sake of fleshing out the world and setting up threads for different stories. So shit just happens because it happens, and if you don't like it, well, you're an idiot. Uh, the fact that Chadron looks at the civilians running, gets punched in the chest, then proceeds to chase after the girl is where, quote, reminding him of someone comes from. Uh, again, he's just reading into this. Yeah. Uh, the nerd made a statement that is irrelevant to my point. The Demon King says in the preview book, part of the book, he must be eliminated. Who he refers to could be Avery or Sam. <gasps> no, I don't think it refers to Sam at all. Uh, he would have just killed Sam if that was th their point. Yeah. They you had know, Sam captured. I would open up the book and actually try to look at it, but I don't ever want to see it again. So I don't, <laughs> I'll take his word for it. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm not trying to insult your intelligence, but I'm also not sure we're reading the same book here. There's a reason all this foundation has been laid. There's no foundation. He just threw down a bunch of sand. Uh, as far Ethan as actually Light reading... Lies, this is Deep an employee of uh, Erectra Light Locker. <laughs> as for actually reading comics, I've been reading Andrew. comics for most of my life. Just because a, a first book isn't on the same level as God Loves, Man Kills, or Necessary Evil doesn't make it bad. No one said that it had to be on that level. Also, it's very funny, these guys who've read books all their lives, this is the only stories that they ever reference, right? It's like when, when people like... They always reference Harry Potter because that's like the only thing they've ever read. They just know that God Loves, Man Kills is considered a good comic, and so they always reference it, right? Uh, reference other things that you I mean, personally. We, I've never right. read. I've never read God Loves, Man Kill. I'll admit it. I've never read that. I don't own that piece of. Have you read uh, Craven's Last Hunt? I've read Craven's Last Hunt. Yeah, um, I haven't. I own it. But what I'm saying is, I would not reference this because I didn't read it, right? And I, I have a feeling they didn't read it either because he didn't specify anything. He just said, "Oh, it's well, it not doesn't matter what you is. read." The, the thing is, uh, it, what I wanted, to, what I talked to Ethan about was, like, your first issue didn't quite grab me as far as the character and the powers and the stuff he could do in the dialogue. But the second one, you paid it off, you know, like, and that that's what I was hoping in this one. He would pay it, pay it off. Chekhov's gun, you yeah, know, well, like he, he didn't. Pay, and he, he never, we got he it. never, Ethan paid it off in spades yes. in Wreck Planet. I love Wreck Planet. I did not. We, we know that. We, we heard you say that several yeah. times for the show. But, but I did. I, several I was, times. I was hoping and the Eric, exact uh, same Eric asked a good question. I know. Wait, fuck this comic. God, but you this know. comic is supposed to be at the quality of the great comics. And why is it at $35? But paid the, the shit off. Paid the shit yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. paid less for Wreck Planet in Blood Honey more, more, than more, I did. More, more. We're bringing it, bringing it. Uh, Eric right. DeBunk says, so wait, if this comic isn't supposed to be at the quality of great comics, then why does it cost 35 Because that's it's how much he can milk you for. He said... It's got great, good, good no, ink. No, Eric, Eric literally said in his video, you should charge more so you can make money because that's what you're supposed to be doing, making money. It's not about creating art. It's about making money. Uh, <laughs> dude, Ethan's gone. Put your pants back up. Yeah. Come on, more. You're embarrassing yourself. Uh, also, I don't give a fuck it. Look, I like the guy. I like okay. I like what he did. I, I like I was... the guy too, but he's gone. Uh, as for actually reading comics, right? So he asked him, other than Isom, do you read comics? And instead of actually listing comics, like, hey, I read Spider Man, you know, The Hulk, I've read Doctor Strange, Surfer, uh, Quasar. These are the comics I've read, by the way, you know, Defenders, uh, Avengers Whatever. West Coast, uh, Captain America. You know, I've read those runs for the majority of my life. I would say from like 1990, uh, I'll say, to 2000. Every comic that came out for those, I've read. Not to mention back any back issues that we could have got our hands on uh, that were tangentially related to the MCU. Or not MCU, but you know, the Marvel Comics Universe. Uh, as well as like things like the Infinity Gauntlet and all that. Right? I can name comics and I can give you stories that happened to them. This guy literally didn't name a single comic that he read. He just said that he did read them. I, I've been reading comics for most of my life. Which ones? Right? People who read comics are very apt to tell you which comics they've read specifically. Right? Yeah. Yep. It's like saying, hey, have you ever watched a movie? You're like, I watch movies all the time. I love movies. Movies are fantastic. Well, name some fucking movies. This song, again, this sounds like a fucking lofty pixel explanation. Look, I'll, I'll tell you, in the 80s, every comic you pulled off the shelf was great, whether it was uh, no, or it Marvel. <laughs> Come on. Period. No. It was great. Uh, he even liked Cherry Pop Tart. <laughs> uh, I never read Harry Potter. Okay, so it says, hell, you can go back to the 70s and 80s Avengers and catch story beats just like this. Well, which ones? Which ones? Name specific ones. Right? If that's underwhelming for you, 
then a different story might be more your speed. I have no problem with that approach for these books. Uh, you have no problem. He's your boss. You're literally going, hey, the company that I work for is doing great and fantastic. Stop questioning the company. Uh, that's like asking uh, someone who works for Coke if Coca-Cola is good, right? I don't like the taste of Coke. And they're like, no, no, Coke is fantastic. Why, why don't you like Coke? Uh, Jedi Bugs replies, no, man. I read the book because a friend recommended them. I had literally never heard of Eric July at the time. I had absolutely no agenda going in, but they are fucking terribly written. Absolute garbage. When I read them, I was under the impression that Eric July was a comic writer who started his own company to make comics his way because he was tired of the mainstream comics. The friend that recommended it told me the latter, and I inferred the former. The only reason I looked up Eric July is because after reading these, I had to know what comics he had written previously because the writing was so bad. That's when I learned he wasn't a writer at all, but some jackass who thinks writing is easy. It's not. And that's why his comics suck so fucking hard. Do, do you know what the problem is? What? Uh, I've, I've experienced this uh, many times in my life. Uh, when, the, uh, when the audience or the customer is a lot more clever, a lot more educated, a lot more um, knowledged than the person that is selling them a product. That's got to be the mellifluous voice of uh, George Peter Gatza speaking right now. Hello. Yes, yes. Greetings. Hello. I, well, I had to check if it was really you, Ethan. No, it really is. Yeah. Oh, Eric DeBunks is in the chat. Why doesn't Eric get in here? <laughs> I don't know. We, we've asked him. Do you want me to get out? No, there's room. I have room for like 10 people. Why is Eric DeBunks a problem all the time? Why is he the way that he is? I think he was born that way. I think God molded him in his image. You know what? Like, if I didn't know better, I think he was a little light in the loafers. You know what I mean? You know oh what I'm saying? <laughs> if I didn't know no better, I'd be looking at that guy. I'd be like, that's a little bit boy. Yeah, Uh-oh. <laughs> you asked and he showed up. What's up, oh, Eric? God's sake. Hey, what's going on? What's up? Uh, Eric, what's going on, brother? Is that EVS? It is. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. I'm, gonna you, uh, I'm calling you. I'm calling you Eric. I'm going to call you Eric June now because uh, June <laughs> is Pride Month, uh, and you are uh, a homosexual, I believe. I, I am, in fact, a homosexual. I'll take that. Okay, so you are Eric June, and he will be Eric July. Do you accept that uh, nomenclature? <laughs> Fuck, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Uh, guys, I, I want to say the good Eric and the bad Eric, but I mean, you do you, Ethan. All right. Well, listen, here's what I wanted to say. I came back because you guys might not know this, but I am the star of an animated series. Uh, well, are you about, aware of this, Tony? There is a show that, that is about me. I'm not aware of this. What, what, no, no. Uh, the show is called Hail Salad, uh, and the series finale just came out. I'd love to share it with you. It's only a few minutes. If you would watch it, I think you'll enjoy it. Is that that like Captain Ahab stuff or? No, you watch the show. Okay. The new Camel Moon Hell Salad Blu ray campaign is finally here. That'll be good. I will watch that. Featuring all new standees, t shirts, minifigures, and much more. Try to blur out my nudity. <laughs> That's me. Go to Indiegogo after watching this new episode. Enjoy the show. Why are you naked? Look at, this. Look at this freeze frame. Why am I wearing like lace up dazzling boots? That's what I want to know. <laughs> like a Conan loincloth. Yeah, it's a little bit, you know. Uh, Hail well, salad yeah. finale made me weep no longer. Good for you, Ethan. Good Get for ready, you. guys. Here comes the last episode of the show. Right. Eric the Bunks is here. Stroke me, stroke me. Could be a winner, not she moves so well. Stroke me, stroke me. Look at these boring ass white people here. These photos look sus. Yeah, share my screen and tell me if you give a fuck. Yeah, hold on a second. Let me show you this. This is okay. disgusting. My oh, man, Shane Davis. How you doing, man? Welcome. To <laughs> Here's our July. How's it going, Eric? Good to see you again. I take as much time as you need. The highs, the lows, just everything that you've been a part of. All right, right. I do plan ahead and I do think ahead, but I care as much about the sexuality of Robin as I do, like, uh, whether he's a vegetarian or not. <laughs> because, it, I mean, in all, all retrospect, it's paper. All, paper is just paper. What's the value of that paper since, like, probably, like, uh, 2008? You know, like, how can rates go down? The price of milk, the price of gas, everything else is going up. Well, oh, I'm definitely jealous of it, sir. Always have been. Turn it off. Turn it off! Even in my 
kill time listening to this bullshit for four hours. I'm like, and and I and only I did what I, I you know, I, I made of one of the. Huh? <laughs> That's Shane Davis, by the way. I know, yeah. <laughs> That's my spaceship with a dildo on it. Uh, We're not going to get copyright claimed on this, are we? No, of course not. No. John Mayley. Painfully funny. What, what do you think, Eric? Is, is this a good show? Are you, are you hooked? Yeah, let's ask Eric so far. Eric, what do you think so far? Uh, looks cool. I All guess. right. And this has got Young Ripa guest star. I don't even. I don't even know what. The, what is this? Is it episode ten? Is yeah. It a, is it is it actually nine previous episodes? Is that a real thing or is this just a no? It's like a, a real satire? thing. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Right. So what this guy does, is he watches all of our shows and then he clips us out of context and he creates weird versions of us and he does kind of a space ghost coast to coast thing uh, with it. So yeah. okay. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it is. But he kind of captures the whole personality of every. Yeah. I, it's very nice, very clever. Two XLs being kind to me right now, Eric. There I am with my dyed beard. Yeah. <laughs> it should be pink, pink or purple. Again, painfully oh, funny. Falling off. <laughs> that beard dye. I'm embarrassed for you. That's money you ever spent. I get lesions on my face. Who am I trying to impress? Hmm. Herpes, they call that. I could go back in time and keep my white afro. They called it a Jufro back then. It's a ridiculous rumor that you started. I don't know, but hold on. Tell me when my voice stops sounding annoying. Ready? Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> don't eat them. Yeah, why didn't I kill everyone? Oh, it's Pride Month. Yeah. yeah. I think next month is Retard Month. Now listen. I don't want to make excuses for Jonestown. I just groomed my neighbor's kid. I don't want to sit here and like apologize. I'm subscribing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know what? I don't want to sound like an apologist for Squeaky Frome. Women need leadership. You don't need who, evidence. Who's the dog? That girl's a liar. The dog is John Mayer. Now you know how Jesus felt. It was crazy. That's Doug Tanay. The tree of woe. Yeah, but I mean, if you really think about it, Cecil's been a big zero for the past two years. You know what? Perfect punishment? Weekend with Ezra Miller. Thought Anne Frank had it rough. I have a few girlfriends that nickname me The Flash. And he can't even moonwalk. Oh, uh, my girlfriend just posted a new video. Oh, look at that. What is that? Whitney is pregnant. No, you Lonely just fans. put it in the trash can and, like, they just are gone. I threw a pillowcase full of kittens into the river earlier. I swear to fucking God, I haven't seen anything like this since Elizabeth Smart. She's like, I remember leaving your apartment and having sex with the cab driver. The sketch is owed an apology by everyone here. Yeah, this whole thing is shredded. Look at this thing. All right. Anyway, uh, not every fetus is pro-life. Look how cute that is. She's got a first period last week. That actually looks like you without a mask. I'm explaining to her what her <laughs> menses are right now. By the way, this is still open. You can back it right now if you'd like to. It's interesting. <laughs> well, she's been on that like birth control where you don't have a period for like seven years. Do you have to have a period? Like what happens if you don't? That's our overlords <laughs> listening to everything. And now you tell me that you're having my baby. Get ready for the gay. <laughs> Welcome to Gaylord himself. Does he have big dong energy? Hail, hail. Cecil, it's been a long time. I saw one meme of him flying in and shooting rainbow colored dildos at Doug <laughs> and April's face. He went out of his house and did more things than John Mill. I just got out of a holding cell uh, yesterday. Man, I'll tell you something. You know, like stop dyeing your, your mustache to that, you know, black right here and the rest is white so you look like Hitler. Stop doing that. What a fraud. <laughs> Probably dyed his beard, too. What a loser. Hold on. Let's take a minute here. First of all, welcome, Pornbot. Pornbot needs cummies. <laughs> Say that again, baby. <laughs> Pornbot cares not if you're shaved or not. Things you're over here at a glory hall. Yeah, did I nut on my hand? What's, what is this shit? We know what you click on. Pretty good at swallowing my feelings. I only drink whole milk. John, there's no such thing as a woman that used to be a man. There's just a man that used to have a dick. He just wants to see a good movie where the guy fucks the invisible woman. Most people just go to Puerto Rico for that, but, like, there's also Epstein Island. Oh, yeah, I didn't put that together. Speaking of the holy gay sex trinity, Liam's here. I could listen to Liam talk all day. 
So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for watching. I truly am retarded, and, you know, there's, uh, I have no influence or, or anything anymore. Great to hear from you again, Liam. You're making some really great points here tonight. I'm sure that this will turn into another, like, four or five-hour EFAPs on, like, ten other channels, because I'm so retarded, don't you know? He showed images of hoes attached to his penis. He wants to have, like, the you have their <laughs> lifestyle with real dolls. All of this is about her boobies. It takes a harem to raise a child. Why do I have to fight in a ring? I want to fight with the hammers of justice. Liam, little advice. Got to lose the anger. I've beaten my kids a few times. What about punching a girl in the mouth? You ever think about that? Be gone, women. Go. Shut up, nerd. Liam, ignore John. You remember what Jesus said about his enemies? Always be jealous of guys like you that are good at sex and have money. I mean, why? Why? Why not? Why not turn to us for help when you want to? When you need help, why not? Oh why God! Do it? We're right here. Oh, well, we're, we're gonna get fired for this hour. No, we're not. <laughs> yeah, None we... of us are perfect. Sometimes we need a friend. Liam, this is probably one of the that things that I've seen in my life. That. For this is the best Saturday morning cartoon I've ever seen. So I'm gonna need an Australian. To lean on. Take it, Michael Bancroft. Uh, internet issues. You know what it's like here in Australia. Lean on me. We all need somebody to lean on. I love Ethan. So. Wow. We all need somebody to lean on. God, what the fuck? That's what I've been saying, Ethan. Yeah. These are magical moments. We wouldn't have these without Liam. I like the fact that everyone else can die except for me. I believe Robert Chambers had that theory, too. Mm. I like the fact right. that make John well, Manlin interesting. So, uh, I, uh, mm. What did we learn from this? Uh, <laughs> Goddamn, I'm about to puke. Shane, you have something to say? Listen, don't commit to a three-way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so beautiful. Well done. That, that was a oh, thing that we watched. Power of the goddamn booty. Yeah. The the booty. Do you guys Power get paid for booty shit booty like this? No, of course not. You know, it's just... uh. Look, I mean, uh, you know, but, yeah, we should, but uh, they're, they're just making cartoons and stuff, and it's fun. God, it's, I, I remember the first cartoon with uh, your, your Captain Ahab and... and I showed that to my boss, and he was peeing his fucking pants. I had a whole law office peeing their pants, like, <laughs> off of that cartoon. It was hilarious. I'm Captain Ahab. These bitches came in and said, Oh, right. <laughs> uh, sure, yeah. yeah. What would you think of that, Eric the Bunks? Uh, I mean, it was fun. I, I don't get all the references. I haven't seen enough of your uh, streams to know everybody that comes on there, so I don't Why understand. All that stuff. I've seen all your streams. you seen all mine? Of course, yeah. Really? Big okay. Yeah. I, I like yeah, that I, song you got, Eric, at the beginning of your one stream. Oh, my uh, my after party song. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot of fun. I appreciate it. I worked a whole ten minutes on that one, so I'm glad you, you like that. Good. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, it was a lot of fun. But uh, no, I just caught the first my er, my first Ethan Van Skyver stream was like two weekends ago. I think I, I came into one of your streams and yeah, I was happy to see you there. So nice to, Were nice you though? Good. Really. <laughs> <laughs> were you really happy to see you? you guys are doing your thing i don't you know you're you're doing your anti-chud thing uh yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I am yeah. definitely king of the chuds are you gay now ethan uh am i gay i'm not gay. Uh, no. you just told me earlier that if you use chud referring to another man oh well, right 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 gay. no no but i mean he, uh, he, no it's too late no 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 <laughs> I, too late I he caught it. He he's not referring to himself come on now that's even please. worse he just yeah. caught it uh i'm just saying uh, that yeah, of course. Oh, you're happy. You're ex welcome to be in there. It's nice. Yeah. Well, I can't get any of your friends in there. So, uh, oh, you mean the the some of the people I stream with or whatever? Is that what you're talking about? Like the I know. Look, you've had issues. Like I I I I have seen a couple of the times that you've talked to some of the people that I've streamed with. You know, because I stream with a few different people. So, um, I've seen those uh, conversations. But uh, I didn't know you. I didn't think you had a lot of. Uh, guest on your streams that don't share the same opinions as you usually so look where i am right now 
No, no, I know. That's what I'm saying. This is well, I, I didn't you? even know. I, I didn't nobody, know you even came on the show. So no, you know. Yeah, nobody wants to come on my my stream because I think the idea is that if you know the, the few times I've tried to organize things where it's like, uh, hey, nerdette, you know, you want to talk? Let's go on my show. She's like, no. You've never it will be neutral grounds. I would, I would love to come on your stream. <laughs> we, we know you would come on his stream literally more. <laughs> well, you, you made that very clear. Okay, well, I'm just putting it out there. Okay, shit. Quite literally, you would come on his stream. I think. Yeah. Oh. No, no, I have I have some people that I have issues with, but it's it's more or less specific stuff that I don't like. I don't generally like. I don't try to paint people with a broad brush unless they are do a bunch of consistent shit that I don't like. Um, but yeah. Uh, to be honest, I didn't know no offense or anything, but uh, I know, knew you mostly through your work um, in you know the Flash and stuff like that. Uh, I didn't realize all this other stuff was going on until I started diving into the waters here on YouTube. It's wonderful. So, so uh, what horrible thing did Ethan do? Well, that's what I said. I have I didn't know a lot about Ethan until recently, um, in terms of like all the Comics Gate stuff. To be honest, because I kind and, of and, and what do you think of Comics Gate when when that name comes to mind? Okay, think so think I think, and I've said this before. Eric, I you don't think, have to do this if you don't want to. You, no, no, no. Not, we're, we're being friendly here, like you know. I'm. It, I, I hope I'm coming across friendly. I'm not trying to be rude. Yeah, oh, I know, I know, but it's yeah, like yeah, you don't need to be assaulted here right. about this. Yeah, yeah. I, no, no. I apologize look, if I came no, across. Uh, I get it. Dickish. No, 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 no. I get is it. That I get a word. It. Look, a very simple way to put this is: I believe independent comics are extremely important to the ecosystem. I think creating comics outside of the mainstream is important. I think everybody should be allowed to make whatever kind of comics they want to make. If there's a market for it, those comics will survive. If there's not, they'll go away. That's just the reality of it. Um, I may not necessarily agree with some of the values of people that make comics, but I don't think that anyone should be dismissed or not allowed to make something for that for those reasons that's just my opinion on it um, yeah that's great fair. i agree yeah uh so that's just it you know i i like independent comics because i think everybody should have an opportunity to make something they love to make that's i mean that's where teenage that. mutant ninja turtles came from you know yeah during the time when comics were great you know marvel and dc were killing it and teenage mutant ninja anymore, turtles hmm? you don't think comics are great anymore I'm not going to get it. We've already talked about it. <laughs> well, but independent comics exist now. And you just said Ethan's comic was great. So comics are still great. Maybe not the mainstream in your opinion. Right. Mainstream. That's what I mean. But see, back then, independent comics really had a hard time surviving because just about every comic you took off the rack in the 80s and 90s from DC or Marvel, especially in the 80s, was fantastic. And that's really oh, where Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Hold, hold that thought. You gotta you hold know, that thought. You gotta hold that thought. Hold it. Fuck them whole ass roads, man. Continue. Man. You know. What so the, the fuck. The point is, there's always, there's always an avenue. There's always an audience. And uh, yeah. even I mean, if I've been... comics are great, or if they're poor, uh, there's, there's an audience for everything, really. I mean, I've been reading comics my entire life. I'm almost fifty years old, so I've been, you know. I've been into comics since as far back as I can remember. Um, so I've loved all types of comics. I got initially started out reading Marvel, um, like the X-Men comics, Chris Claremont, John Byrne, that era. Um, that was kind of my introduction into comics. And then I eventually got into DC after that. So I've been a comic fan pretty much my entire life. You read, you read any remember, comics so. that Ethan drew? Just the stuff he's done for the mainstream companies, the, the, the Flash stuff and things like that. Um, it was hard to avoid back then. I mean, the, you know, the stuff I was doing for DC, uh, you know, in the kind of uh, the teens, the 2000 teens uh, and the 2000 aughts was everywhere, you know, yeah. uh, the rebirth stuff and Sinestro core flash <laughs> rebirth it was around. I will say, I don't know if you guys have talked about it or not, but I, I'm kind of shocked at the, the prices for the, the rip stuff. I, I don't understand those uh, membership prices. Yeah. <laughs> That's a yeah. I don't. I don't, I'm I don't with get you that. On that one. I, Ninety-nine dollars, where you have to spend almost four thousand dollars to ever see any benefit from the discount of being subscribed I, for a year. That's a lot. That's I, a lot. I, I don't. I don't now, how do you do that math? How do you do four thousand dollars? Oh, it wasn't my math. That was. I some, think the highest tier is forty-nine. Yeah. 99. No, no, it's ninety-nine. Ninety-nine. More, more, yeah, more. 
Yeah, there's 99. Somebody mentioned it on one of the streams. It might have even been here in Tony's stream. Somebody was said they punched out the numbers and the percentage of discount that you get uh, to see any real discount. You'd have to spend almost four thousand dollars to see a discount. Yeah, uh, so four thousand dollars times thirty percent discount that you're going to save twelve hundred dollars. So you have to spend four thousand to get the equal well uh, of the twelve hundred that you spend. See, and I can see that with like Amazon if you're. Like my boss's wife orders from Amazon all the time, so they got the Prime, so they they pay the monthly fee, which is less. All right, come what on, guys, for... don't you don't you want to spend twelve hundred dollars a year for your uh, book to be in the mail three days earlier than everybody else's? Well, no, hold on a second. I, you, you guys, you ever pay a thousand dollars for a PBS tote bag? I mean, you're not paying for the tote bag; you're paying to support public broadcasting, like I do, because they show oh. boobies at three a.m. <laughs> <laughs> on public tv like that's that's what it is it, it's not it, you know i don't think you know saying value for money when you're in a situation where the entire point is to sponsor uh, a creator that you like on the internet is um i i really think that's kind of uh, missing the point like he's just saying look uh, i like I, right now i have a subscribe star i don't have any huge tiers i think i got like five bucks um, but but I don't have to give you anything for that. Like I do, I give you guys, I give people trading cards. But well, those that's trading just, cards sell for fifty some odd more dollars. Right. I know. I'm, All right, more. But I mean, the point of the matter is, again, like it really is just about supporting creators that you like. And if you want to give Eric July a hundred dollars a month, it doesn't really matter like what comes with it. It's you're just sponsoring him to continue yelling about the whole ass roads. Which, well, why, uh, why don't you enjoy. just become a channel member? He has channel memberships too on his channels. Yeah, I, I guess so. Are they a hundred dollars? I mean, you know, this is these you are like, super chat. You could just super chat him a hundred. I just think it's that's true too. Where yeah. we come to well, it's, society. There ain't, there's nobody that I would spend a hundred dollars. I'm gotta, sorry, you gotta, nobody, you gotta nobody. Your, you got to pay for your friends or pay to be part of a tribe. It just just sickening to me. I, oh, I'm sorry. I mean, look, I you know I get political donation. I got, I'm going to stick up for Eric here, okay, because uh, I feel like it right now. I get uh, texts from uh, Trump. I get texts from local politicians all the time saying, uh, hey, you know, we need money. What will you pledge? Uh, and it's, it's yeah, it's like $100, you know, something like that. I, I haven't donated very much in my time of my lifetime. I think I probably donated a, a cumulative total of $1,000 in political donations in my entire life. But I can see other people have and do. You know, it's like it's it's all about like whose voice do you want to hear? And if you want to hear Eric July out there uh talking about what he talks about, maybe you want to give him a hundred bucks, maybe you want to sponsor. He him. is absolutely gonna have people that are gonna pay for it. One hundred percent are gonna, be gonna pay for it. I, I'm not disputing that. I'm saying for the from the standpoint of like trying to rationalize spending that much money for you know the perks that are offered i just don't i don't personally me personally i don't see the value in that but i'm sure some people will see value in that for them and, for and i agree reason. with that but some people may and and i agree with ethan on that it's like okay well if you just want to give money to somebody who is going to stick it to the left and okay great it's fun to make fun well, of well, though. Well, it's well, fun well. to make fun of so well if you want to give money to someone who's going to stick it to the left and own the left then give me, <laughs> give me money right here. We're going to own our enemies. Give us some money. Wait, hold on, hold on. Now you're against the left. What am I doing here? What am I doing in the show? Well, well, no, well, if, it, well hold, hold on, hold on. Because if you want to <laughs> stick it to people like Ethan, give me some money. And we're gonna oh, own there we go. That's better. Like, that'll that'll anyone you want to own, Eric. If you want to own the left, we'll own the left. You no, want to whack it up me, with man, me? Right? Like uh, whatever people give you guys to own me, can we split it on the DL? I mean, you know, uh, I'll get it. I'll say some more incendiary things that'll uh, send uh, leftist packing towards giving you guys donations. If you'd like, we can work out a whole big scam behind the scenes. Let me know. That we already did. I thought it oh, was that's on. right. Yeah. I'll let Eric in on it. Eric, go. Uh, yeah. Look, I think the misconception about me that. because because of uh, because of the communities that I'm, uh, you know, that I hang out with mostly is that I don't know humor. I don't know how to take a joke or whatever. I'm a fucking Gen Xer. Like I grew up when this humor was kind of a thing. I get it. Like I, you know, there's more to it for me than just somebody making a bad joke. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, to me, like, look, I, you know, the, the thing about it is, is that everybody's gotten so sensitive uh, and it's gotten so bad for me. Getting canceled was like the most freeing thing in the world. You know, 10, 15 years ago, 
um, you know, working in the comic book industry, people were friendly. Uh, even though they didn't like you for your politics, they still, we, we coexisted and the jokes were kind of like, um, they were friendly. They call you a Nazi, but they would do it with love in their hearts. And then something changed. And I don't know what it is, but it sucks. Getting canceled sucked, and I, you know, I think it's been. If you're, if if the point was to keep me quiet, I mean, it did the exact opposite. Uh, I feel would, more. Would you free can, to, do you consider yourself canceled now, or was that just how you felt when this all happened? Because I don't consider you canceled now. I think you've got a very large yeah, group of supporters now. I mean, so sure, yeah, people who support people who were canceled, but I mean, er Eric, like. I'm the guy who drew Sinestro Corps War and was nominated for an Eisner. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm you know what I mean? Like, that. yeah. So I should be able to work wherever I want, but I can't. So I can't go to Marvel or DC <laughs> and say, "Hey, how you doing? Like, put me on a Green Lantern one shot or something like that." I can't because even if I found a friendly editor over there, um, and I got a gig, your people. Uh, would basically hound DC Comics and heckle that editor until I lost that gig. Well, well hold, hold uh, on, Ethan. I got to push yep. back on you. Do we know it's Eric's people? Does Eric believe in hounding editors? Would you, if if Ethan got a job at DC? No, I don't care if Ethan worked for DC or not. It doesn't matter. So there you go. Me. So it's not his people. Well, maybe not his people. Okay, so not Eric's people, but in other words, the left, the radical left, people who uh, subscribe to cancel culture. And so use Ethan, it as let a me ask you something. Weapon. Are there people in, in the community that you associate with that, that go too far for you personally? Do you feel like some people sometimes go too far in the conservative community? Yeah, definitely. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that is, it's also the same way in, in the progressive community. There are people that we don't always necessarily agree with that go too far and take things too far. Far. So I think it's safe to say that everybody has people in their communities that they don't necessarily agree with, but you don't always hear people speak out about it because the minute you say that you don't agree with something a conservative does, then you're looked at as a traitor within your own community. Would that be true? I, yes. I wouldn't look at it that way. To me, like I look at it now as um, I'm not going to police anyone's speech. It's not that right, I'm worried right. about the ramifications of it. It's just that as soon as I do that, as soon as I say what this guy said goes too far. Uh, then that opens me up to other people saying that you're a hypocrite because what you said went too far for me. So maybe you deserve to be canceled. I'm coming from a place right now of just pretty much, and it took me a while to get here because early on I was very scared. And, you know, people saying this and that around around or within Comicsgate was a problem for me. And I would criticize people and tell them to be quiet. Mm. Uh, I'm at a point right now where I don't care. Anybody can say whatever they want to say. I recognize a joke, and I also recognize people's political free speech. Uh, and if somebody wants to say something I'm not going that I disagree with, I'm not going to be the guy to go, that's too far. I'm sorry. I, I, that's just too much. This guy's the bigot. I'm why, not going to do, do you, it. Why do you turn gay when you say that? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> let me push back on what Eric. I want to push it is back gay. on what Eric. It's like, is, it, is it really it, gay, it, though? Is it? Yeah, it, it is. is. It's, it's, gay in, it's gay in the schoolyard sense, not okay, in the right, homosexual right. sense. I'll take it. Look, look, I tell people this all the time. Again, Gen X are here. I grew up when that word was thrown around all the time as meaning other things. Lame, and I'm not, weak. I'm not, yeah, I'm not giving, look, I'm not going to say, I'm not the, the king of gays, right? So I'm not going to give something a pass. You know, and say, oh, well, it's it should be that way for everybody. There are some people that don't like it because they grew up at a different time and this, that, and the other. And I understand that. But I also understand that sometimes when people say things, they don't mean them the, the way they are meant to be said. Um, but you have to admit that sometimes people in communities hear someone with a large platform say something like that and they'll take it the wrong way. I'm just throwing that out there. They, they do. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And so my, my point of view from that is I don't care anymore. Like right. I don't care because I get the, the consequence for that has been demonstrated to me to go way beyond uh, what is fair and just. And I think people attack each other uh, because they get some kind of internet high, some kind of power uh, from hurting people and destroying people on the internet. And I personally am not going to be a part of it, especially not from people who agree with me about 90% of other things politically. I'm just not going to join in that kind of a witch hunt uh, to purity test my own audience or my own fans or my own friends and peers. I'm not going to do it. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to push back against cancel culture and people who do try to oppress others for their speech. Uh, I will push back on that all day long. Well, I don't let me think ask you a right. question, Ethan. Yes. So you won't do it publicly, but would you tell those people privately, like, hey, uh, I think that may have been too far? No. No, who cares what I think? 
I, I mean, the, the, lots, lots of people care what you think. I was going to say, you have a pretty big following. I think a lot of people do care what you well, think. But e okay. even if... The, well, well, then well, let no, me no, say no, that no, if people well, care no, what I think, then what, what I think is that people should be allowed to express themselves however they want uh, without right. being punished for it. And that's the message that I would like to say. Now, just because somebody might say something where I'm like, that made me feel a little, you know, icky. I'm not going to go to them in private and be like, by the way, um, let me do the voice again. By the way, guys, that was just, that really kind of was a little bit too far for me. Like, I'm not going to do, that's not who I am anymore. I mean, it's just not, I was that before because I worked in the mainstream comic book industry where everybody behaved that way. And I didn't see it for what it was. It's insidious. You should not be policing people's speech. You should accept that people disagree with you and still be able to work with people, work around people, and respect people's differences. And if you can't do that, if you have to hurt people and beat people into submission until they agree with you 100%, um, I think you're evil. I think that is an evil thing to do to people. I, I agree with you, Ethan, but I, I, didn't, I didn't say for you to do that. What I said was, if someone was Would I do it? No. No, no. Here, here's the thing. Like, if Extra okay. Hero came out here and said some crazy shit, Behind the scenes, I'd be like, hey, dude, that was kind of crazy. Maybe, you know, cut that, you know. Not on my show, don't do that. Well, what I might say is if somebody says, do you agree with that? I might say, no, I don't agree with that. But what I'm not going to do is say, um, hey, knock that off. That person, you're a you're a jerk. You're a bigot. I'm not going to do that. People, well, I'm, I'm people not talking hit about me up about. Or bigots. I'm just saying, like, hey, you know, like. Well, you know, okay, that's not so, you. That, that, that's not you, Ethan. What would you say? You know, that was kind of weird. What, what do you that. think, Ethan? What do you think of a, a guy posing by Isom's grave? You know, what do you think of that? Should he do that? Is that great? Like, no, I don't. You know, he shouldn't do that. Yeah. You know, but it, I'm not going to sit there and go fucking kill that guy. That guy's. I'm not going to do that. If you ask my opinion about what I think about something, I might. You know, I might say I disagree with that. I don't think that's a good right. idea. But I'm not. What going about you, to, Eric? Uh, what do you think about the Isom photo? The which one? The grave photo. I wouldn't do it. That's not something I would do. I wouldn't engage in that kind of shit. That's bullshit shenanigans, man. Like it's funny. Like it's funny to see, but it's fucking stupid. But, like so, I want to push back on Eric on something you said earlier. Yeah, what, said, what's up? Like, the, the the far left, and they say all this stuff, and they do all this shit, but they've gotten mm -hmm. control. But it's people like you who never push back on them. How I've heard. That? I've I've heard Ethan push oh, back oh, oh, on people. More, more. And, he asked you a question. How do okay. you how do you know that that, that I that people like well, me haven't done that? Well, I'm not hearing it, so maybe maybe I was I misspoke on that, but it just seems like so you're asking a question. Um, I just want to make sure you that you're not I'm, I'm asking accusing me of it because yeah, yeah, okay, it. I'm asking a question that people on this far left uh, because things have gotten so far out of hand. Uh, have has anybody ever said like? you need to stop with some of this box checking and some of this anti what anti American, anti Christian, anti capitalist, anti man. White, I'm answering anti for a lot of people here. Holy shit. This is a lot of people. You're, you're throwing a lot of, a lot of well, that's yeah. what we're seeing. That's yeah, what we're yeah. seeing. Okay. That's what we're seeing all, routinely is anti Western more, more, civilization more, 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 in a lot of more, more. You ask them a question, let them answer. <laughs> okay. So, so you're you're asking me like like I guess how I feel about that or or is that have the you question? ever pushed back? Have you ever stood up and said this isn't what the character should be? Uh, make them what they should be, or this isn't how it should be drawn, or oh, okay, this, okay. this more, character more, more, is more, not more, black. More, more, and more, why are you more, making? More, more, what are we talking about? One more. Well, you, <laughs> hold, hold, hold on. More. You ask like 17 questions. It just ask a single <laughs> question so a person can answer it. I think what he's saying, Eric, has you have you ever disagreed with the way comic book writers have handled characters changing their, their gender and yes. Stuff? There you go. Yes. The answer See how is easy yes. that was? You and ask I, a simple question, about you it. get a simple fucking answer. <laughs> I've talked about it on my streams before. No, um, no. I I have you ever confronted them? Who's he going to confront? The actual, you want to go the out and beat up person? Probably not. I mean, I don't talk to a lot of like Ethan and people in in his field aren't always very accessible on social media. Sometimes Dan so, Slot is not accessible. 
he doesn't answer people a lot. Like he doesn't Dan slot. I think he took his profile private a few times. I mean, he doesn't really talk with people like that. The most I can do is what I do anyway, which is talk about it on video or make a, a video about it or talk about it on a stream or something um, or, or on social media. Yes. There's been times that of course I've disagreed with stuff like that. My take, and this is, this is how I feel about changes. If the changes that are being made to a character either uh, are superficial or they're performative, I don't like that. If you're going to make a change to a character, it needs to be something meaningful. It needs to be a reason behind it. I don't like to be pandered to. As a gay person, I Wait, like... You're gay? It, it, yes, I'm gay. What? So, yes. Hey, I'm a, for you. Apparently, I'm the king of the gays. Uh, but as, when did it be as the queen? Hold, hold on. When did it be the queen of the gays? I'm not fabulous enough to be a queen. Uh, I don't have enough jewelry and stuff for that. But um, I think the queen of the gays is Madonna. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But to answer your <laughs> question... To, to answer your question, at least in my experience in the gay community, is we understand what pandering looks like. We understand what that is. Okay. We don't like that any more than anybody else. We don't like performative allyship. We don't want people to make changes that are superficial, that don't make any sense. We want them to be meaningful. We want the characters to make a difference. The issue that we run into is that there is so much dislike of pandering from everyone that all of the changes get lumped into performative. Meaning that if they do make a character that is actually, they have a justifiable reason for why they're doing it, it's never taken seriously because there's so much dislike for changes anyway that nobody will give it a chance. For example, you and I may watch a movie and I may agree with you on something being bad in the movie or bad in the comics or whatever it might be, whatever media we're consuming, but we whoa, can't even have whoa. a nuanced... Yeah, we can't even have a nuanced conversation because everything is so polarized. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. But that's not just that is not just a unique thing to the left. It is also on the right. Well, we've been kind of beaten into that submission. I haven't been beaten that. in any submission. Uh, I But the thing <laughs> is, so how do you feel about like gay gay Robin or gay Superman or Gay Superboy, the, the Superboy that's uh, bisexual, that one? Is that the one yeah. you're talking about? They aged him up and... Answer for I mean, all the gay characters. <laughs> basically, I'm answering for every gay character in the comic. Okay. Just start listing off gay characters uh, I mean, how you feel about no, it. No, no, I mean, how do you feel like that as a gay person? Well, first of all, they call him bisexual, and I know in the... Because my brother's gay, and okay. they look at bisexuals as just fooling yourself. Oh, oh, that, hold on, hold on, stop, stop. First, first off... <laughs> I, I love how you do this thing where you go, this one gay guy said a thing so that all the gay guys think this way. No, no, because that's my that. that's my go, that's my window into the gay community. But but your brother is not all the gays. He might no, think of course not. Of course not. Them, but he but, but he well there's a lot of gays stop, there. Stop stop drawing with a with a big ass brush. Okay. No, secondly, no secondly. Eric is not the represent. He didn't come here representing the fucking lollipop. Killer. I'm not saying. I'm asking how he feels about the pandering. I, I, have I, what I, asked I, you, I look more, at his pandering. More, more, more. Have I ever asked you, as a white man, how do you feel about anything? <laughs> have I? Because no. we don't do that here on the show, right? That's not what we do. I I I, I jumped. So, okay, look, I'm I, sorry. You want me to apologize? No, no, no. no, no you're good. You're good. You're fine. You're fine. I don't have. I'm trying, to, I'm, trying to I'm trying to get you're a window. Get a window into it. I'm trying to get a window into. Yeah, you're not offending me at all. Like no, honestly, it's me. probably good that I'm here because the fact that you're asking me questions means that I get an opportunity to answer this, and that's amazing. I just jumped in kind of as a joke because Ethan told me to jump in, so I did. I thought it would be funny, but now that I'm here, I'm here. So yeah. So, but anyway. Yeah, uh, I mean, look, I never thought I'd ever speak to you, to be quite honest. So it is kind of a shock to to have you call me out. So that was that was actually pretty Dude, fun. It's, it's fun. I mean, here's the thing: like, you know, most most of the time, when I want to talk to you guys, the anti anti uh, SJW guys, um, you know, it's like you don't want to because you're like, I'm afraid I'm going to get mobbed and neutral grounds. We need neutral grounds. This is I'm, neutral grounds. So I I'm mean, pretty it's good. Also, I'm pretty good at holding myself. I've been on the internet since the late '80s. Like I all of this troll culture stuff, and I'm not saying you are, but I'm saying like the people that are, that get worried about that stuff. I'm, I'm not really one of those people. So okay. for me, it's like, I have no problem coming in here and, and having a conversation at all. And I'm not, I'm not going to jump in here and start calling people names. I don't do that either. So, but um, with, as far as what Morb is saying though, again, those are characters that have unique things about them. Like they didn't change Clark gay. They didn't make Superman gay. Right. So they didn't do that. They introduced this, this concept that Superboy is bisexual. And from what I've read, I think it's okay 
he's not my favorite character. I'm not going out like I don't buy comics because a character is gay. Like that's not why I buy comics. What? I buy a comic book because I like the comic book and if the story is good, then I will continue to buy and support that comic book. That doesn't mean that there aren't people that buy it for like there might be people that'll buy it because a character is bi or gay. I don't know. There are probably people that do buy it for that reason. I grew up in the era of the X-Men, back when the comics code was a thing, back when gay people were coded to be a certain way. And Ethan probably knows a lot more about this than I do because he was in the industry. But there were things you could and couldn't do with characters. So a lot of stuff was coded back then. So I had to sort of imprint on characters as a, as a gay person growing up because I didn't have any actual representation. So for people today to now have characters they can look at you and go, hey, I can identify with that character on a deeper, deeper level, as long as it's done in a way that's respectful, I don't have an issue with it. However, I do not like pandering. I don't like that. But everybody gets pandered to. When they put a woman with big titties on the cover of a comic book, they're trying to get you to buy it because there's a woman with big titties on the comic book. That's pandering. That's the reason that companies do that. That's the reason why. Do you know what comic that is, there? Because okay, but sure so like, what about Iceman? <laughs> Iceman was a was a heterosexual for quite some time. So, and he was a so, well established. So, so gay people then, don't come out later in life. Gay people don't come out in their in later in life, like 40, 50 years old. I'm asking as a genuine question. Gay people that are closeted sometimes don't come out until they're much older. Yeah, it happens all the time. My husband that, that I was with for 20 years was married for five years, had three children, and was gayer than I am. So... Like and that's quite gay because I'm gay as fuck. So he was really gay. <laughs> I, did, like, did he drink too much atrazine? So no. <laughs> so but <laughs> but the my point being is that sometimes people do come out later in life as a gay person. It does happen. I said this in I think it was no, it e does happen. My I brother did that. He was 28 when he came out. Right. So the thing about it is you are totally like I understand. I get it. If there are characters that people love and they get changed and you decide you don't want to support it anymore, you don't like the characters, I totally get it. I get I'm not saying everybody you don't have to go, "Oh, I love everything they've done with this character." I'm not that is not what I advocate for. I don't any I don't know anybody around me that advocates for that. But at the same time, also, I think it's important to show that there are, like, even if it's one individual person, to show that diversity does sometimes happen in a way that is unexpected. And with Iceman, they did it in a way that was unexpected. However, I will say there's a lot of questionable shit that happened with that, like with Jean Grey reading his yeah. mind and outing yeah. him. I mean, that was kind of fucked up. But that happens in real life. People get outed that way all the time. Friends do that all the time. One of my best friends online outed me to someone else that I didn't necessarily want to know they, because I don't live near these people. They live on the other side of the country. He did it anyway and, and fucking backstabbed me that way. And it was awful. It was some bullshit. The bitch. Oh, so terrible. that stuff happened. <laughs> right, exactly. Such a that's bitch. Terrible. I cut off all contact with him. Anyway, Getting back to my point, because I'm going off on a tangent here. No, um, go for it. With, with Iceman, I get that people were bummed out about it. However, my current partner, Iceman was always his favorite character. So when he found out that Iceman was was uh, coming out as gay later in life, he absolutely loved it. He loves the character more now than he ever did. And I think you can it, find wait, some wait. people that do. Wasn't it earlier in life? Because wasn't it like the young? Iceman? Yeah, it was. It was a time travel story. They brought in the like the younger version of him, and then the younger version told the other version it was okay to be out because, you know, that it, he would be accepted and stuff. That's kind of how the story went. But then there was this whole thing about erasing their fucking memory. Like, they start, they did a really good job starting out, and they totally fucked it up later on by sending them back in time and making it so he didn't remember that he was out. It was really dumb. Anything goes They, so they a, fucked a, it up. A, excuse me, your friends can read your mind? <laughs> yes. Yeah, my friends can. We're all mutants. We're all mutants. It's, gay people have powers. Didn't you know that? Yeah. We're yeah. all accepts. Yeah. We're all accepts. So I, I actually respect your explanation of that. Yeah, I, I sorry I got a little loud. I get very like no, no. I I respect so, I um, respect what you said. You, you were not loud. You've not watched the show a lot, Eric. We we get much, much louder. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Most most of the people that I know um, don't like to get into to, to debates and stuff for this very reason. But I feel like a genuine conversation between people does a lot more than like fighting with someone trying to get a gotcha moment. That's not really what no, I'm about. And, and, uh, and I actually actually learned a lot hearing your perspective of that whole scenario. So actually, you know, even though I don't ag agree with Yeah, you don't have whatever, to. I don't, I don't, I don't try to, I actually, to I actually respect what you just said in your personal experience with that. So yeah, that's awesome. I, I, look, I, I am cool. very big on, and I appreciate that. I'm very big on 
people just hearing each other, even if we don't necessarily agree. That's more important than arguing and fighting, I think. Yeah, that's how it should be. Yeah. Always in good faith. Yeah, look at people Always. in the chat are like, oh, I got owned. I wasn't trying to I debate, yeah, folks. Yeah. I just want to ask him how he felt about these some of these changes. That's it, folks, in the chat. Yeah, don't, wait, don't, wait, don't worry about the Ebby's Ebby's asking. Ebby wants to be like yeah, a yeah, Destiny Vosh moment. I wasn't trying that's to. Not like, who there's I no, am. There's no. <laughs> there's no more own. Like I'm not trying to own anybody. Look, my, the only thing I ever ask is people give me a listen, and if you don't like me, then just fucking mute me. <laughs> so that's all I can say. Like that's it. That's it. I, you know, I, I, I'm an old ass gay guy. I've heard it all. There's nothing that can be said to me that I haven't heard in my life. So. All right, so how did you get involved in the uh, anti rip uh, verse thing? Like, how, what are your... A... Uh... <laughs> okay, um, I tried to... So I have my main channel, which is Eric's Reloaded. I have my second channel, which is Eric Debunks. And my main channel, I've been building up for the last 10 years. I'm not trying to become the biggest person on the platform. I just created it as a space to talk about my favorite movies and TV shows and superhero stuff. And so that's what I did. And I tried to stay out of it. Like I didn't want to get involved with the geeks and gamers crew, Friday night tights, anything like that. I didn't, I did my best to just ignore them and not talk about them because I felt like if I did that, I was platforming people that I didn't necessarily agree with what they were saying. And I didn't want to necessarily get involved in all of it. And then when she Hulk came out, um, I, I was reviewing she Hulk and all of a sudden I was getting a lot of people from that community coming over into my streams into my comment section and just Whoa. kind of attacking Whoa. me. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And so I pushed back a little bit, then they pushed back, and then I pushed back, and then that's how that all, that's how that really all started was because of She Hulk, basically. What do you how, think about She Hulk? Yeah, did you like it? I think She Hulk was an interesting experiment. Um, they were trying to do like a half hour comedy thing with superheroes, and um, I don't know. Did you guys ever see that show Powerless that was on the DC show that came on for a while? Uh, I think I've seen the commercial. Uh, for it. Yeah, it I've was, seen the trailers, yeah. Yeah, it it, it kind of tried to do the same thing. It was a half hour comedy without a lot of superhero stuff. Um, it wasn't very good. Well, they were trying to do a law drama without people who knew anything about the law. And that with She Hulk, is that what you're talking about? Is it yeah. talking about She Hulk or Powerless? Yeah, with She Hulk. Yeah, She Hulk. So, and um, She Hulk to me, okay, so first of all, I've loved She Hulk pretty much my entire life. I think John Burns, She Hulk is my favorite. Yes. I love the, the Hell yeah. the character. So, oh, yeah. Um, we all, we all I, agree on that. Yeah. 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 So, um, but anyway, so I love that character and I think the show was quite interesting because I enjoyed parts of it, but I do understand there was some of it that didn't work. I will say what I think Marvel did nail with that is, is a different market because I'm a DJ. I work in the nightclubs. So I interact with people quite often that know that I love comic book stuff. I'm always wearing t-shirts and supporting it. And I had several people come up to me because Megan the Stallion, who is a hip hop artist, was on She Hulk, that controversial twerk scene that people either you love it or you meme it, one or the other. I, I just depends I just on where care. you go. So yeah, yeah. But Same, I had I several care. people that, that came up to me that said, I didn't care about Marvel until they did that. And now I'm gonna start watching Marvel to see what if there's anything else that I like. So in that regard, they did sort of pick up some people, but I think they also lost some people in the process. So I don't know if that's a win or a fail for them. I, and I, I have no idea. Uh, but I do know that with She-Hulk particularly, uh, going with something that's all VFX, all CGI, I think that it needs to be almost perfect, like Avatar perfect. And I don't necessarily think they they got there with uh, with that. And I've complained about that quite often with the show. But I didn't hate the show. I thought the show had its moments. I don't think it was the best Marvel show I've ever seen. But I think the well, last episode there a lot of man hate in that show. I mean, even no. even Angry Joe no. by the end no. of it no. uh, finally just said, no. "Just yeah, no more. Okay, <laughs> just no, was, just uh, no more." We, we've had this discussion before. There was no man hate. <laughs> if if you go looking for stuff, you're gonna find it. Right? You could literally. Pick up any piece of media, and if you go looking an angry, for angry anything, Joe, finally. I don't give a fuck what Angry Joe said. What, how, he's not an authority on wh whether or not something contains a thing, right? But people made videos saying that I don't it give was a shit. Hate. I watched the show. I watched all the episodes. Said that there was no man. -hate. I don't think it was it was accurate to the comic depiction. How about that? And say well, that's, that's a fine criticism to have. Well, minute, well I would say ninety. Really? Ninety-five percent of the stuff that's made isn't accurate to the comic. Like the whole Justice League run from Zack Snyder only had scenes from the comics. It was not that story was nothing like the comic books. You're right. They're seeking to be accurate. 
And it's well, I don't I don't think it could be accurate. <laughs> We've discussed this before, and Ethan probably knows this because he gets paid whenever they mention anything that he's created, right? He they probably avoid lot. certain things to go, oh shit, I'm gonna have to pay those guys. Oh shit, I don't want to pay those guys. So they just take the characters and they go, Oh, we put them in a new scenario similar to the old one, so we don't have to pay nobody. That's the whole reason that fucking Disney canceled all that Star Wars shit, go, this ain't canon. And then they just brought those characters in one by one and just kind of changed everything so they could screw the fucking mm. writers out of paying them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think sometimes that happens, sure. You know, uh, part of uh, the reason why uh, DC Comics is doing the the new Justice League with the uh, Brazilian Wonder Woman, uh, you know, the uh, brown-skinned bisexual Aquaman. We call him Aqua Glad, Eric. Uh, and uh, he's Aqua Lad. Uh, and then all, the, uh, all these other characters, I don't know what it is. Uh, they, they got a black Batman. You'll see them. They're on the Hershey bar. Well, you know, the reason why they're doing that is because um, essentially the time is going to come. It, it's coming up in, in, in which they fall into the public domain or uh, they fall victim to the Copyright Act in 1976. And DC's anticipating this and creating a version of Wonder Woman that is not related to sensation number one and Superman, obviously, that isn't related to action number one and Batman that... Because all of those books are going to fall into the public domain and they're going to lose control of them. Uh, the big the big idea is that, look, if we create our own Wonder Woman that isn't Diana Prince, we're not going to have to pay the Marstons anymore. Uh, I mean, Mickey, Mickey Mouse is about to fall in the public domain. Um, that was about never to let that happen. He's, he's not, more. He's not. No, that was about no, to happen. More, no, he's not. He's 100% not. You, you... <sighs> Why? You, you listen to people who don't Steamboat know what the Willie. fuck they're talking about. Steamboat Willie is going to fall in the public domain. Mickey Mouse is not. Okay. Oh, boy. We've talked about this. Watch the damn show that you're sitting on, and you'll know because we've talked about these things. Share my screen, Tony. Uh, which one? This one? Okay. So those are when they're going to fall into the public domain. Yeah, but not not. So what's going to happen is Superman in 2024 Action Comics number one is going to fall into the public domain, which means uh, that if you'd like to reprint Action Comics number one and put it out, go ahead. You can do that. You're, the public is going to be allowed to reprint Action Comics number one. Uh, you can do the characters that appear in Action Comics number one. Um, but you'll have to be very, very, very careful. You cannot call your comic book Superman. Uh, you can say the man from beyond or something like that. And then you can depict Superman exactly the way he is in Action Comics number one without stepping on DC Comics trademarks. And DC Comics has a trademark on Superman, the word Superman. Yeah, you can call him Mighty Isom or like the Amazing Isom. Uh, maybe, yeah. So that's that's what all that is. I mean, you you know, it's Superman. The the look that he appeared, the you know, in in 1937, 1938, I think it was. Uh, that's going to be available um, for people, but you got to do it very, very careful. Uh, careful no, I, actually, Ethan's one hundred. Ethan's just saying exactly the same thing I said about Steamboat Willie. You could take Action Comics number one and launch your own new universe from Action Comics number one, that story, and then take that Superman character into a new direction. And it'll be fine. You, you'll be 100 percent safe. Well, according, well, according to IP law, though, uh, trademarks run out. Hmm. I think uh, if it's under a gnome de plume, 120 years. Uh, what does that have to do author, with what we're talking about? It's, or it's 75 years after the author's death. Okay, but what, no, 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 how's that relevant right. to any of this? Because that's the tr or the copyright, rather. The copyright is 75 years after the author's death. Or right, but the copyright only covers the work. It does not cover anything that follows it. So Action Comics number one would would expire, but then Action Comics number 50 would not because it, it's not the same amount of time. So the things that happened in 50 is still owned by the company that owns Action Comics, which in this case is DC. Certain so, aspects yeah. of the comic yeah. are, are uh, copyrighted or trademarked. You wouldn't be able to call him Clark Kent. The trademarks only last for like 14 years, I think. Yeah, they, like they get updated comics. all the time. You better you better believe no, that DC and Disney are... last 14 years. I have, mine for, I have mine for 30. 
Yeah, DC and Disney are are reinstating and finding loopholes and ways around this to protect uh, their cash cows. So, I mean, I wouldn't even bother with it. It's just kind of like incidental. Like, if, you know, there are certain things that, you know, Buck Rogers uh, in 2024, that might be safe. Popeye might be safe, I guess, if you do it the right way. Because I know with like uh, like Master P and Beyonce, they put their kids on as uh, partners on songs that they wrote so that when they die, those songs will still be in under the trait under the copyright. No, it's not what you did. 75 years it's after not what did. It's not what your did. kids die. You, so don't be retarded. They did Beyonce it because in the die. contract, in the contract, they get percent percentages off the song, off the royalties. So if their kid is part of that contract, their kid's gonna get that royalties all their life. Right. Regardless of the copyright. It's, it's for right, the but the copyright will last that much longer. Because the copyright lasts until the last person yes. is dead. So, like with the Beatles, if Paul, you know, Paul McCartney, but they don't even dies, the then the clock starts ticking. Yeah, him and Ringo, that, that when him and Ringo example. died, then the clock starts. Michael, ticking. Michael Jackson literally bought the Beatles songs because they didn't own them. You, you they own, that, right? I think they still own some of them. I think they got them. Some. No, of them he back. sold them back. He sold them to Sony because he, he sold them to Sony. Yeah. Okay. So. Please, if you're going to speak about something, at least know the thing that you're speaking about. No, I do. I know copyright law and the fact. Yeah, that but the examples you're using are, it's, are it's, all the wrong examples. Right, but still, 75 years after the artist is dead. Yeah. Okay, then it enters the public domain, and but you can put somebody on as a partner. So, like, if I write a song and yes. I want to put my infant son on as a partner of the song, and I die. That son is still going to get proceeds from that song seventy-five years after he died. Not necessarily. Your, your yes. son, no, he'll have the copyright, but the copyright does not necessarily get you royalties, you, uh, especially when it comes to songs, because you have a performance copyright, you have a song uh, writing copyright, uh, you have the, the copyright for the for the music video, the copyright for the live performances. Why do you think all these fucking people? Why do you think screwed? Master P? Why do you think they did that? Him and him and Beyonce, they put their. I just told kids. you why. I told you they're part of the the, the contract, so they get right. But they proceeds. also get Royal proceeds. Have nothing to do with the copyright. They're, but their grandkids are going to get proceeds even after their kids die. They, these songs will still be copyrighted. Right, but if the songs are not being used, they're not going to get any money. So what does it matter, sir? Well, they probably. Do you, think, do you think in a, in a hundred years uh, they're going to be paying all kind of money to fucking buy Beyonce? Well, hundred years from now, they may play a Beyonce song. Who knows? The way our anyway, of course they will. Yeah. You know. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, as long we're as having World War ladies. Three anyway, so who cares? I'm just wondering. We're talking about Beyonce and the Beatles. I'm no, but sure you're telling me I don't know what I'm talking about. I do know what I'm talking about. When no, you know copyright. about copyright, but you don't know why Beyonce and Jay Z specifically did the things they did. You're like you're like trying to read their mind and go, "This is why they did that." When it could very well be a completely different reason. Yeah, but still, it's genius to do it that way. It is smart to do it. Right. Uh, anyway. Yeah, JD JD Kirby is accurate. Federal trademark lasts ten years, and then it gets renewed every ten years. That's exactly what what I've been doing for, since nineteen ninety. Right, but it does expire, and you have to renew it. Whereas copyright, you can't renew, and it 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 goes away seventy five years after your death, or if you're under a gnome de plume, it's one hundred and twenty years when you're alive, when it's published. Or 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 until you declare it public domain. <laughs> Are you going to declare Cyberfrog public domain, Ethan, before you die? No, no, I'm going to hand it to my children. I mean, I'm hoping that you know I do enough good work with Cyberfrog during the rest of my life, so that uh, you know maybe uh, after I die, somebody would want to make a TV show or a movie or a video game. And uh, my kids will reap the benefits of that. So they will they will own everything that I create. Make them partners. Make them like part of your whole thing, and then they will get to. What are you talking about? That's generational wealth. What Ethan just said. Exactly. 
Oh man, I don't know how and the hell trade, we get this far off track. Secrets are not registered, and there is no expiration date. But you got to keep them secret. That's why, like Coca Cola and KFC, they have no actual trademark or no registration on their recipes, but they are fucking secret. No, like, they're not. Everybody this is, knows what the recipes yeah, yeah. are. Come you, on, you, you're a hundred percent wrong. Again, please, if, if you know what you're talking about, then talk. No? If you don't know. Don't talk because it's hundred percent proven that KFC has a trademark on their recipe. Because when people recreate it, they fucking sue them. If they didn't have a trademark, they'd have no grounds to sue people over the recipe. I was under the impression that it was a trade. You were wrong. Secret. You, you were wrong, then, sir. That's it. You're just wrong. They say, I'm "Okay, wrong. well." I'm, I'm getting now. I'm getting heated. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's not what I've been told. But still, with trade, you were wrong on trademarks because they have to be renewed all the time. I didn't even say anything about trademarks. Somebody did. <laughs> yeah, the guy in the chat. <laughs> oh, that <guy. laughs> uh, Anyway, so these are all entering the public domain. So get on it. I'm going to do a Zorro story. I soon. thought Conan entered the public domain in 2019. No. Fucking Doc Savage in 2029? Seriously? Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you know the beauty of this is anything in 1927 and before uh, is in the public domain, 100 percent undisputed. Next year it will be 1928. Next year Robert, it'll be 1929. Next year Robert, uh, 20, uh, 1930, and so forth. Robert E. Howard died what in 32? Uh, either way, uh, there you uh, go. George was wrong about one thing. Peter Pan's never going to enter the public domain. Yes, he can. Yes, no, he can. It, it, the, the, they specifically wrote a law in Europe with Britain because they, they he left it to a hospital, a children's hospital, and the children's hospital makes so much money. Basically, if they lose the Peter Pan license or the, the, the trademark, the copyright on it, they'll fucking go broke. So they're like, we're going to write a special law so you can always own Peter Pan Hospital. It's it's stuck, only, I believe it's stuck only to the United Kingdom borders. Yeah. Okay, so Conan's in the public domain in Europe. Yeah. All right. So we've mended some bridges. Uh, we got Eric <laughs> the Bunks and Ethan on the same stream together. Hopefully one day we'll get Dane and uh, Eric July here and we'll have a big kumbaya session. Well, I don't think Eric July would ever be in a stream with me. I don't think he'd ever be a stream with me. So not here, definitely not yeah, here. Not here. <laughs> uh, oh, just but, extend the olive branch. Yeah, but I, I, I do. We, we've been here four hours and eleven minutes. I think it's time to end it. We're getting a little, getting a little excitable. Uh, people are, are a little too high for having these conversations. Uh, looking at you, I had an edible. I, had an I, edible. I was looking at more really, but. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I took an edible. I'm sorry about that. Um, but anyway, oh, happen again. Uh, hopefully, you know, Eric, you're you're always welcome to be here. Like I say to UBS, you're always welcome to show up and yeah, uh, discuss things. I appreciate now, it. It don't even have to be on a, um, you know, a drama stream or whatever. Uh, we talk indie comics. We have indie comic creators come on. Uh, you could hop on and. I would love to see us. this thing that uh, Eric's uh, like Ripa's strongest professional hater did. What is wrong with this guy? Yeah, I saw that. We we didn't show that on screen. <laughs> They made a he made like an AI Eric July skin. Like what is, what the hell is going on? Oh, I, that it, one we did. I thought you were talking about the one with the gay porn. <laughs> it's very entertaining, Ethan. What? <laughs> <laughs> what what are you talking about? Oh, do you mean the puppet show one? No. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on, man? What uh people are creating art, man. Uh, I can send you the link if you want. <laughs> To the to the gay Gee, whiz. I'll send uh, it, I'll send it to your um oh uh, yeah yeah that's great thanks hater oh hater headquarters is here he says I am an artist that's me these guys are all alike man this guy is just like Riley is that Riley no that isn't Riley no anyway uh the puppet guy he he's fantastic you gotta uh... did you see the full puppet episode no I haven't I didn't I didn't subscribe you want to see the full puppet episode? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> no, you, you, he charges. It's it's behind a paywall. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, that All right. I, I don't wait. I'm subscribed to him. Not subscribed to, to his. Yeah, he did a whole thing. Goes 
the the new episode is going to be is ready. You got to be subscribed to his Patreon to get that episode. Oh, one I, of his I, uh, I one of his. I've seen it. I got it. One of his office managers rapes him. Uh, it is. Uh, <laughs> it is. I mean, it's you guys are nuts. These people are crazy. I you know thinking about Eric July that much. It's crazy. Uh, Finbar uh, says, uh, "Hero, don't fuck off. I'm coming in." So uh, after the show ends, please stick around, extra hero. We're gonna yell at you to be one of those struggle sessions. Uh, but again, uh, you're always welcome, Eric, EBS, George, more maybe sometimes. What? <laughs> I'm a somebody. I, I, I'm a contender. I said, I said, you're always welcome. Uh, either way, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, make I'm sure the one that everybody hates. No one hates you. But make sure you you put. A I, like. I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> Does that hey, I don't. All right. Put, put a like on the video. I stand for more. <laughs> if you if you don't like EBS, then like this because he'll be upset by our likes. And if you hate Eric DeBunks, put a like on this because he'll be upset. Definitely. With all yeah. the likes. Uh, and always, you know, super thanks are available. So if you're watching this on replay, feel free to just throw me just some money. Don't let Tony monetize me, please. That's the worst. <laughs> I, I'm clipping this again. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody. And as always, love, peace. It's good meeting all of you guys. We out this bitch. Ciao.